the Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Tyson Fury, <laughs> the boys, what? BA, what? On Tuesday, March 1st, rabbit, rabbit, let's. Go! Yeah! Can't thank you enough for joining us at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. What an electrifying Tuesday we have for you. And although a couple of days ago, the internet decided to tell me that Aaron Rodgers was coming on this show to make his decision today, I did not know that then. I still don't believe that is the case now. I'm sorry to disappoint, but Tyson Fury will be joining us in about 20 two minutes wow. then the host of bussin with the boys the boys straight out of nashville in indianapolis will compton taylor lewan will be live in studio for the entire second hour okay. aj hawk will obviously be there oh. and bruce arians joins us in the third hour a lot to talk about with bruce oh, yeah. yeah sorry bruce what? What? What do you mean? I'm just He's Super Bowl winning head coach. He's going to be a scumbag this far. He's at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, there's a lot that he has to figure out, though. I mean, there is only like four or five people that aren't <laughs> unrestricted free agents or retired in their entire starting roster. After one year, they win a Super Bowl. They get all 22 starters back and... Sign A-B, sign A-B. Mm-hmm. So they get 23, basically, of their starters back, including punt and kicker as well, so you can add that onto the mm-hmm. list. They go on a run, eh, it doesn't pan out. They lose early, see you later. Tom retires. Ali Marbury retires. What? Then boom, you start what? going through their entire, it's all, they did salary cap gymnastics, get all these players in here to ring chase. They want a ring, now they're on the other side of it, they're gonna have to rebuild. Bruce Arians, older guy, yeah. yeah. Successful guy. Right. Resume is packed to the gills, Hall of Famer, no big deal. BA, you will be remembered forever. He's sticking around to rebuild this thing. I'm excited to see what his brain does, what his thoughts are, and what the future is for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I'll let you know, Tampa Bay had a hell of a run. Sure, they did. did. Sure. Lightning won a couple years in a row for mm-hmm. Stanley Cup. That's hockey talk. Then they have obviously a Super Bowl. Tom Brady's mm-hmm. down there. Yeah. yeah. Everything's going good. St. Jetersburg is sure. down. Yeah, the they went to a World Series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Everything is going well and then now it appears as if they're going to have to rebuild all that I'm not saying the Lightning aren't going to go on a run because John Hamm told us that everybody loves big team those are some big boys still they are, that's right they are good now they were cheating on the salary cap and nobody else talked about sure. that but the Lightning mm-hmm. hey, if you're not cheating you're not trying but now the Buccaneers seem to be at square zero mm-hmm. who's the quarterback Blaine Gabbert Sure. Sounds Kyle like it. He's been getting complimented. Kyle Trask probably need another year of development yeah. is what the early reports were out of the conversation. Not that he's bad, but he could take another year of learning. He's already learned from Tom Brady. Maybe he'll pick up another year of experience with Blaine Gabbard, who everybody loves, who's ever been teammates with him, and the guy can ball. Yeah. Guy can sling it. He was in Jacksonville, which sure. is where he got judged from. It's Jacksonville. That's Give right. Him a break. But also, if you're going from Tom Brady to Blaine Gabbert, that's probably going to be a position where your fans are going to say, what the fuck is going on? We're going to try to find that out for you with BA in the third hour. All the boys here, you've already heard them chime in with some toxicity at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt, wearing the Vegas Golden Knights cap on, Pop. Yeah, I have to do it. You know, the boys, I mean, Stoner's hurt. They got cement in their skates Shit. right now. They've lost several games in a row. They're dead. Yeah, but, 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 yeah. but, but, but Jackie Aces is getting very comfortable in the slot. He scored several goals already. His back looks unbelievable. We're feeling good right now with where the Golden Knights are at. It's way too early in the conversation for us to be on Hockey Talk already. I don't want to dive into it, but it is a nice hat. Good Thank you. Great hat. Now, hockey stinks, except for that's Hockey Talk <laughs> Wednesday nights. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And Pittsburgh Penguin hockey. Sure. Well, and Detroit Red Wings hockey. No, no, no. no, no, no see, no, that's no, what we're talking no, about, Evan no, Foxy. I'm not doing this this early. We're only six minutes into this show. The Red Wings fucking stink. We're the they best do. team in the they NHL They gave up a right touchdown and a field goal on Sunday. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> Ten goals. That's more we than the Lions scored all season. That's amazing. That is more than Goff was able to score in a certain amount of games. How about you guys pulling your goalie in the first period? Is that what happened? How do you give up? 
Jesus. Goals. Jesus. Goals is a lot of goals. We were down 7-2. to two. Those boys fight. The Pittsburgh Penguins, if I'm not mistaken, lost 6-1. to one. No fight in that team. No, no, that's we won. That's the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the game. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Shut up. 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 Shut up.
Oh, oh come no. on. Jesus is how very How good. are you so shallow? You know, with that big of a ball cap on your head, how are you that shallow? All I said oh. was, that's all I heard. Like, the internet told me. It's no, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And what I think... Uh, I remember seeing a documentary. Biggie had a guy that literally was following him, shooting everything he had. These guys know. And somehow, some way, that that the footage was never. This dude never sold the footage yep. for like 30, 20 years, I guess. At this point, thirty mm -hmm. years maybe. At this point, had all the a lot of answers and a lot of uh, behind the scenes stuff. I forget what it was called. I forget what platform. Maybe it was Netflix. It was on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So it, that was unbelievable to me. I'm like, holy shit! This dude was with, like, literally with big, like, at many, many moments. And I guess this is something that happens in the rap world because this guy, Cootie, who started Channel Zero Productions. Hey, shout out Channel shout Zero. Out, shout out, shout out, out Channel Zero, baby. Channel Zero. He By started Channel Zero in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I was right. I know. Face Clan, dude. Get out of here. You put Fair me in sure. almost a fucking gang war. I swear. I swear that I saw something. By the way, you shouldn't be throwing that. That's not it. I don't think we should be throwing that. I don't know, I had a couple people tweet me like, uh, hey, that's like my neighborhood son or whatever, man, probably. Ooh, hey, you out. signed us up for a fucking war. Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, this sorry. guy Cootie uh, started Channel Zero Productions in Chicago when Kanye was up and coming. And when he's like 17, 18, 19 or whatever. So this guy was trying to put him on on local access television, basically, in Chicago with this one channel that they, ba they basically like just bought out the time is what I think Channel Zero Productions was inevitably. Good business. So Kanye, was, I think, was always very thankful for this guy giving him an opportunity. But Kanye was, Kanye, I did not know Kanye loved music as much as he loved music. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know, like, Kanye is like Avicii style. Okay. He's like an Avicii style, like, not Obsessed. that he wasn't a music genius. I'm not saying I didn't think Kanye wasn't a music genius, but, like, his entire life basically revolved around music for a long time. Now, he's gotten into fashion and designing. I think that was the coolest thing that I enjoyed. Him walking around the Rockefeller offices, that behind-the-scenes footage of him playing Jesus Walks and mm -hmm. other songs and them, yeah. not, them basically, like, laughing him out of the building. And that, I think that documentary is why I love that documentary so much is it exposes middle management so much. Yeah. Like, it, 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 middle management, the people that are supposed to find people to take to the people that are actually making decisions, that are actually doing things that are actually driving the ship that are actually doing stuff these people down here middle management everybody has to deal with them they're the ones who have to pick and choose who do, who gets to get to that conversation you know for a long time mm -hmm. nowadays you can kind of you can kind of go right yeah. around them mm -hmm. shout out to the internet shout out yeah shout out to the internet you can kind of go right around them but a lot of these middle management people basically just kind of like almost shoot and connie's got the bangers in his backpack like yeah. right here he's got them and they're like no get out of here or whatever it's like all right all right all right, well, and then he fucking out comes full circle. I can see why him and Jay Z maybe aren't the tightest, by the way. After yeah, that. yeah, uh, yeah, he was under his you know umbrella for a while, and they didn't use him. Enough. I always thought that they were like bestest of friends though, because Watch the Throne, by the way, incredible, uh -huh. yeah. It was, I think, my rookie year training camp when that came out. Uh -huh. So what's that, 2009, I think? 2009, yeah. maybe two. Yeah, that I think. sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, rookie training camp that came out. And it was just, it literally got me through training camp that entire hour. It was unbelievable. But I think from an outside looking in, not as a Yeezy stan or as a Jay-Z stan or anything like that, just outside looking in, thought they were just the bestest of friends and everything like that. You watch that documentary, it's like, oh, I can see how Kanye could potentially have some pent-up, oh, this guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah, absolutely. But interesting. A very interesting documentary. A lot of business was done. I enjoyed it. I think everybody should watch it. And we also think that Kurt Warner should have a documentary. Yeah, maybe yeah. Doc, For Kurt. the dummies like me and Foxy to, you know, not have to feel things. Cool. There you go. Also, people who don't love Hallmark movies, you know, every now and then you just want to hear the goddamn story from... You know, the horse's mouth. That's, That's not a problem. Such a meathead. I, yeah, I know. What? I can't believe I this I can't guy. believe it. Kurt's story is unbelievable. He is the American underdog, but I want to hear from the American underdog, not some, you know, actor. Not some. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. That guy did a great job portraying. He did. Yeah, I, he I did. think. I don't know. At the end, they had a picture of him standing next to each other. They looked damn near yeah, identical. he did. And, and you know, know, the way he was slinging the pigskin, obviously. Oh, my God. Don't even. Top tier. This dude did a pump fake, and this is what he did. And rich Cannon. So he like sold that. it. So yeah. he sold a Rich Cannon pump. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. This is the oh, worst pump fake. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. That guy knows pump fake. Well, you showed me with a good pump fake. You showed me a pretty good pump fake. Okay. Hey, there's, there's a lot of pump fakes, right? There's the hand off the ball pump fake. I bet. A lot of people think that's the case. There's the foot, right? Oh, like yeah. people, the way they move their feet. This guy just so happened to be a method actor oh, of fucking Rich Cannon and Kurt Warner. That's right. And he's going full. It was so bad. Don. In and out. Well, well, seven, it was a touchdown. It? Yeah, it, it, it was still a touchdown, but it was possibly by the way, that corner pick, dude. Catch, catch, by the way. Whew. Yeah. In the yes. AFL? Yes. Yeah, that was sweet. Oh, so you like that, but not the other. Wow. Yeah, because that was the first Who threw football. that ball? Who threw that Kurt? ball? Kurt. 
I don't know if Kurt was on set that night. It was Kurt set on Kurt. Was Kurt on set? Like I just assumed he was the football technical advisor, so I, he probably was on set. I enjoyed the football. There you go. Whatever right. the case, shout out to Kurt Warren. Great story, dude. Thank great you, story. Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. Speaking of great stories, uh, Aaron Rodgers um, is allegedly in the middle of a negotiation with the Green Bay Packers mm. on a short, short-term short deal. Mm. If he decides to go back to Green Bay, that'll be the deal. So it's a short-term deal. So that might make you wonder on what the number will be because we all assume it will be a long-term deal so they can just kick the can down the road. And once again, we have no idea if he's getting paid $50 million. Just the narrative that he's commanding and demanding $50 million a year for the Green Bay Packers, who probably have to do a lot of reorganizing of the team for them to kind of get moving right. to where Aaron would want to go, which we all think is he wants to win Super Bowls. Yes. That's kind of what everybody is thinking. He wants to win Super Bowls. Now, business has to happen. And he is not a doofus, so he understands that he does provide value and worth, not only on the field, but off the field. So money will happen. So maybe he will get $50 million inevitably. Doesn't, I don't think so with a short-term deal with how their contract or their salary cap is currently constructed. But with that being said, salary cap means nothing in the world that we're currently in. Yes. Right. So Ian Rappaport stopped by the office yesterday. Yep. Good guy. And... He is, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he wasn't boozing. So that's yeah. the first time. Yeah, he had like a he had a very very um, lightened coffee. Yeah, yeah. could have been JMO in it actually. No, no probably a little that. bit. Yeah, so he might at been, least Kahlua. Yeah, he might have yeah. been boo. Yeah, probably Kahlua, Kahlua with the coffee. Like, yeah. Good morning Irish coffee, yeah. I think. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah, he said he was getting fucked up. Last Phil's night. dad. Phil's dad. CFO. Mm -hmm. Phil's dad. Uh, we were intoxicated at his house one night, and they were. They didn't, I don't think they were supposed to know that we were there mm -hmm. doing that. They weren't supposed to be home. They came home early. CFO Phil's dad gave me a coffee with some scotch in it. And he was oh, like, hey, good morning. Yeah. He said, have coffee with me or whatever, you know? And I'm like, all right. And I, eh. <laughs> you know, not good. You drank all my, <laughs> somebody drank all my scotch last night, is what he said. He was oh. not. <laughs> it was an amazing, it was an amazing give and take. Anyway, scotch and coffee, not great. I, I mean, <laughs> I did not enjoy it at that particular time. I might have grown into it now that I'm above the age of, what, I don't know, 18 or adult at sure, this sure. point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he might have had a little clue in there. I'm not 100% sure. Seemed to be on his wits, though, because he had just got to town. He was going to have a meeting where he was going to go try to learn some shit. Mm -hmm. And then he was going to be on TV. And then he was doing his whole thing. At night is when he was going to start saying, hey, tequila. Yeah. Right. 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 He was going to start doing it around town here, mm -hmm. which is what the combine is. The thought, though, that Rappaport told us, hey, I have some news. And I'm like, well, Rappaport, yeah. we don't need that fuckery news that you gave us last time. Remember, because he was on our show and then he cut off, he was paying attention to something else, oh, I gotta go break news. And it right. was, oh, the guy from uh, Abysmal State just mm -hmm. signed the Who Gives a Fuck contract for two years. You know, it was like, we don't care. Thanks, Thanks rap rap. Ian, like, don't be, you know what I mean? Right. There's no reason mm -hmm. for that. Let's set expectations properly. So yesterday he said to us, well, I'm working on something. I got something, I think. I think I got some news or whatever. And we literally all, just like it is on the show. Okay. Everybody just in, in real life is like, oh, shut up, yeah. Brett. You don't, you don't know anything. Yeah, you guys have been on vacation because they haven't broken any news in some time. Uh -huh. Eric Burkhart broke that news about Kyler Murray. The insiders haven't broken news in some time. And then he texted me this morning and said, hey, the uh, the Packers and Aaron negotiating is what I was going to tell you guys, but you all told us, you all told me not to tell you, which I would like to let everybody know. As soon as he said, I have some actual news, do you want to know it? I said, no. No, can't do it. Will it be broken before the show tomorrow? He said, uh, let me find out. I was like, if it's not going to be for sure broken before the show starts, do not tell me. Because as soon as I come in here, that son of a bitch is coming right out into this microphone, down this wire, across the room, into Zito's board, mm -hmm. and then that thing's getting sent out everywhere. That's right. Satellites. That's the way it works. The yeah. Satellite's happening. Yeah. Satellite, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me. Starlink. Hey, shout out. Shout out. Shout, shout out. out. Shout out, Elon. Shout out. Hey, just, I don't want to get too far sure. off base here, but I saw the um, the little home the home thing. Yeah. So people would just buy that, I assume. That'll be the business model. You just buy that. It goes to your house, and then that thing just shoots. Is that the right. router or the modem? Uh, yeah, but it's a little bit bigger. Well, it might be the whole country's, I guess, at that point. I don't know what a standard modem would be. But, yeah, you buy, like, this little box. It didn't seem to be that big. No. And I didn't know how much they were sending there. But is that what his is going to be? And it's just going to be, what, five? 5G all the time, I assume? Probably. I assume oh, so. Well, That's dangerous. Probably more than that. Oh, like 10G? Why? Why? 11G? Why? Baker's dozen G? Why? Why? That'd be crazy if you got up to 13G. That'd be wild. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Gs. That'd be a lot of Gs, man. That'd be super duper fast. That's it? No, that wasn't what that I looks like a that, I just Googled that. That's the first that popped TV. up. Look at, Google TV. Ukrainian Starlink home or something like that. It was they just look like... Box. Computer towers. Yeah, it was like a little uh, box uh, almost uh, that I saw. Because uh, I immediately thought as somebody who has... 
issues with the internet all the time. Right. Every sure. day, damn near. Everywhere I, everywhere I sleep, it seems like I have bad internet. If I can just get one of these little things, put it in a backpack, mm -hmm. then I got Elon Starlink thing just shooting me. Everywhere right? you go. Boom. That's right. Might die very young from that whole thing. Probably Whoa. scramble your brains. But at least, hey, I'm going to be able to connect and upload pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. worth able, it. Sweet. Yeah. That's yeah. it? I think so, yeah. I don't know how big that is. There's a ladder to the left. Well, well, that, I think it's the I, box, so. I think right? that's, that's just it. the box of what Zito showed the first time. Because if you look oh. at the box, it looks like it oh have, yeah, it does it have has the that same Oh, out. so that's like one, two, three, four. That's you said <clears> just like those an little like satellite dishes, basically. Yeah. Used, oh, so they are dishes. Oh, so it's just a dish. We also haven't talked think, about it I at think. Super Bowl. They were pumping 5G right next to our stage. It was that thing that looked like a coffee machine. Is that what my head's hurt? It was Radiation City. Over there. I didn't know that. We did a pretty good service. Though. It was amazing yeah, service. We did. Great service. Great service. We had pretty good service. We might have a six-finger coming out. Though. Hey, I hope you're okay. As your employer, I would like you to know that I did not know that was going to happen. Yeah. And, the police uh, officer at one point was like, we should probably check that for radiation. I guess he checked it. He was like, that's pretty off the, the radar. Hey, listen. Big shout out to all the cops out there. Thank you for your service. Thank good you cops. Cop. By the way, there's obviously out there good cops hate the bad cops. That's just the way it goes. There's always going to be bad cops that we have to remember that this is the world in society. And we can't let, you know, that happen. You know, can't let that tear anything apart. That Those L.A. police. Yeah, I think a lot of them listen to the show. We appreciate that. Have a good one. Uh, we appreciate you a lot for that. Um, they are a bunch of cyborgs. Yeah. They are. Hey. Locked I don't know what type in. of water they got cooking over there at the LAPD. There was some fucking monster. The guy we yeah. went in like late at night oh. as a fan oh. of the show. He was yoked. You got, you got literal avatars with badges over there. Yeah. And I don't know what they got helicopters and cars chasing all these LA police chases for. Get these sons of bitches some right. track shoes. These dudes are monsters that were patrolling that radio row. Very impressed. I'm going to be honest. Because you run into, you know... Like hindsight, looking back, my arresting officer, okay. mm -hmm. three thousand percent chance I could have beat him in a foot race. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Not that I would have, especially at that time. I was very cold. Like I wouldn't even. True. But you know, you would assume that there's some young kids that are maybe out and about, a little boozed up. I mean, this has obviously happened. And somebody's like, "Hey," and then you look, and it's like, you know, Blart, Paul Blart. Mm -hmm. You're going to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going you're to potentially think about it at some point. I I think all those. Police officers, they've never had a potential fleer, I don't think. No. Wow. I, I don't I don't if they've shown up, I think any drunk stooge has not thought to themselves, oh, I could beat this. There's ah, right, you got it, dude. They we're talking. Yeah. All yoked and tatted, cool ass tats, like a guy who you see walking, it's like, okay, just fucking don't even look this guy in the eyes. No. Cause if he thinks I might be doing something wrong, he might knock my head off. Yeah, you don't want that at all. No. no. The dogs they had too. Oh. I don't know if they're smelling COVID, maybe. But they were oh, ready they were to sniffing. Yeah. They were sniffing pretty good. Pretty good sniffers on that thing. Oh, yeah. Well, Big it's boys. tough to sniff something that doesn't, is not around anymore. Tony. 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 It's not around anymore. I think we're going to live with it forever, dude. That's what I've been told. Yeah, yeah. it's here forever. I'm just, uh, you know, numbers. Boy, <laughs> and this was the hey, hey, hey conversation. Well, no, I mean, yeah. Hey, we did beat it, though. It sounds like we beat it. Yeah, Sean yeah. said it. Lowest number since the start. Uh, yeah. Well, I feel like... Much more pressing issues. A lot of... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't even get into that. Well, don't even that get into that. Don't even that. get into Ooh. that. Please don't even get into that. We don't need to, but a lot of mandates going down. Yeah. A lot of mandates going down. Congratulations. We don't need to be, you no, know, obvious. No, yeah, that's why. What, that's we why, don't know. That's why I said it with the voice. We don't know. 10, 20 years from now when it's never talked about again and we don't know any answers, we'll probably, you know, wonder what exactly all happened through all of it. But what we do know, lost a lot of great people. Yeah. We we'll miss them all. But, hey, if we're sitting here, feels like we fucking survived. Hey, right? here we go. Let's go. Thank you, Haji. <laughs> all right, let's get to a break. Um, we're going to try to pass time there until... You know, the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, was going to join us. Ooh. We have to connect to UK, though. Oh, ah, that's a haul. Chris. We've never done that. So Zito's excited, I think. I think Zito's excited. They have this. four extra digits. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's because you got to hit the international code. That's oh, right. And oh, yeah. then you got to get to the local code over there in London. They had a press conference today. His opponent did not show up. Mm. So I don't know how good of a mood he is in. Perfect. Uh, I didn't know if this was working. I probably frozen because I'd never restarted. Asked me to restart for the last year and a half. I said tomorrow. That's right. Oh. Yeah, this thing, I've been like a diet with this thing. Mm -hmm. Start tomorrow, restart tomorrow, restart tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it has 
and it's treated me as such too. This thing will freeze up at the wrong times. So. Oh yeah. With that being said, let's get to a break. Four minutes, we'll be back. Tyson Fury will be joining us. He's fighting Dillian White. Okay. Who's the interim WBC heavyweight champion. Bingo. They're fighting on April 24th for that title. Right. Here we go. Tyson won two. Tyson, much bigger global star, much bigger star. Yeah. Went to the press conference today. Dillian White did not go. Smart. We get to talk Tyson now. Excited. Hell let's yeah. go. See you in four minutes. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Cheers. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant which I'm in right now, and uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dauphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey man, did you do this? Like, oh no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, hey, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, you know, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your Ain't former no teammates. <laughs> yeah, hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His name was Willie. Willie. Willie owned up to. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs> it's about go bonds for oh. this, this thing here. You know what Wait, I mean? Wait, what's it for? Is it like a sandwich? Uh just yeah, anything close to the green. It's like yeah. a 60. Yeah. I think it's like 60. A little rescue club. Yeah. I used it one time on a course. I uh I duffed it four times and uh I said, that one's going to stay. That one's never seen a course again. Is that the one you got to just uh, use the same stroke as a putter? No, that's the uh, the chipper. The, oh, the little chipper. oh, the little thing that you use in the fringe area? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. If I ever get into pro golf, which is probably going to happen after this whole thing, that one's going to be one of the spots in my bag. Yeah. They say use the nine. They're illegal, though. What? I think those little chipper deals are illegal. Uh, oh, bullshit. Yeah. You it's all right. You won't ever get close enough. I will. Dude, wait until you hear what we're up to. And then, you know... I mean, I don't care. You could put nine golf simulators in the Coliseum. It's not going to make you a pro golf. You know you sure? It's not a Coliseum, by the way. It's a fucking igloo. It's right? Get it right. You ass wipe. We've already talked about it. <laughs> Wake up. You guys all at the same time. Yeah, well, it's a brandy thing, you know? How many times do you have to <laughs> tell, tell you what, It is thing? mesmerizing just watching you do this. It's crazy. <laughs> it really, it really is. How about you get some air under that thing? That's nothing. You have like three inches of pipe. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's well, bad. Come on! You AJ. piece of shit. How dare you? I, I how about you have some awareness? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. Uh, this conversation was supposed to start about five minutes ago. We couldn't make the connection. We caught him late. This dude's been sitting around through the entire commercial break. You never make this man sit around for anything. 
Defending the WBC and the Ring Heavyweight Championships of the World on April 24th against Dillian White, who didn't show up to the press conference today. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest heavyweight walking, the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Yeah! Yeah! What's up, big man? I was thinking, what well, I was thinking, what the fuck is going on here with these boys? One yeah. man's playing golf in his underpants, and the other man's having a smoke in a cigar. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, welcome to the show, man. We, I'm sorry we had to keep you waiting there. We're in the middle of a commercial break on the radio portion of the show. We are honored to have you, man. What happened today? Why'd this dude not show up at the press conference? You're, you're the global sensation you are the global star people are paying attention because the gypsy king's a part of this then this dude doesn't show up at the press conference what's this all about and should i know more about this than i do right now one word pussy <laughs> <laughs> uh you think that's what it is a little bitch he's gonna get knocked out and he knows it and he doesn't want to see me face to face because he's a bit afraid of me getting in his mind all his mind games bullshit that they like to play these days um i'm an old school throwdown fighter i like to get close and personal we saw you with uh deontay wilder i think that's when you were really introduced to the american audience at a broader scale i honestly believe yeah. that just outside of the boxing world because i was maybe one of them the first time i saw you box. hey the first time I i'm not a big boxing guy i don't know first time i saw you box against our guy the american hey the ham the alabama hammer whatever mm -hmm. i'm like all right we got two heavyweights two great fighters how this was being built i'm like i'm going with the american because i'm a dumb american i turned on that fight I saw you, and you're moving and then picking him up. I was like, I fucking love this guy. And then you cut the <laughs> promo, you sang, I think. Yeah. You're like the most interesting human on earth. I, I hope you know that you have a lot of fans and you only continue to do so. And now that I've learned a little bit more about you, I think it was on the Gary Neville show, you talked about time and everything about how it's such an interesting thing about you can't think about yesterday, you have to be in the current moment. At what point do you think you got into that? And are you in your prime right now, you think? And how long do you think that continues to happen? I'm definitely in my prime right now. Um, I'm a big believer in living in the moment. And time is of the essence. Time is the only thing we really do have. Moments in it. So it's how we spend our moments in time. And in my spare time, I'm going to start playing golf in the underpants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good time. It's a good time. You don't have to be that good either. It's a distraction. But whenever you talk about your fighting abilities, and obviously we've heard your dad, your dad's electrifying on the microphone. And, you know, the, the gypsy lineage is like a tough lineage, I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken. But you're like the greatest of them all. At what point do you think you know you're going to be an incredible fighter? And, like, when do you know you're in your zone? Like, when do you know, like, all right, this is the best I can be and this is the best I'm going to be. I think I knew I was going to be a, an awesome fighter, heavyweight champion of the world. When I was coming out the womb, I was born for this. Um, and growing up, I was uh, just doing more and more boxing, more and more fighting. And then I turned professional and I, I definitely knew I was going to be heavyweight champion of the world. There was never a disbelief, ever. It was always the ultimate confidence. It was going to be heavyweight champion of the world or nothing. And I had a lot of hard fights along the way, and I'm still having hard fights today. How long can it continue for? Who knows, but I'm having a hell of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're lucky to be a part of it and to witness it and to be alive at the same time as it's happening. And if you, you're focusing on boxing when you're a kid, that's hard, right? I mean, I was a... I was a punter in the NFL, easiest job in the NFL, okay? But I got to watch a lot of people. The amount of work you got to put in to be a football player for the physicality and your body and the beating, I couldn't even imagine what it is in an actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. Through your entire life, your training and how the hours had to be fucking just miserable, huh? I mean, how do you keep like such yeah. an upbeat personality through it all? Oh, it's horrible. I, I train twice a day, five days a week, once on a Saturday. Um, I've been doing that for the last 20 years or more. Um, it's been a crazy roller coaster of hard work. I don't even know I'm still in one piece. I've had a million operations. I've had a million broken bones and damage done to me. Cuts, bruised, battered to fuck. But I'm still here. I'm still fighting away. And I'm still knocking motherfuckers out. And that's how we roll. Hey, still love it? Yeah? Love every day? Love the process? Love yeah, everything uh, about it? I'm coming towards the end of my career now. I've not got a lot left in me. But the, the old dog has still got a couple of tough fights left in him. And um, what do we do? We fucking drink alcohol, get fucked up, and punch people's faces. <laughs> <laughs>
I love everything about that. People say to me, what are you going to do when you retire this year? I'm like, that's easy. Fucking get fucked up <laughs> every single day. <laughs> uh, I think of all the hard work that I don't have to do. Okay, so let's talk about that. People are talking about you retiring very soon. Is that a very common conversation? Yeah, yeah so it's, I'm, I'm 34 this year. I've been uh, been in boxing 14 years as a professional. I've been I've been boxing over 20 years. Um, I've got a lot lot of um, wear and tear on me. I'm the undefeated two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Special elite members only club. There's only ever been one person before me retire unbeaten, and he goes by the name of Rocky Marciano. Um, and I'll be the second one. Okay. It's, it's like a connoisseur of elite level club, elite boxers only. Hell yeah. Two in the history of mankind. Golly. Hey, that's a hell of a fucking goal that you're going to be able to achieve. That's a yeah. legacy. And I, when you were talking to Neville, you're talking about time. You said you don't watch any fights back. You have to have conversations while you're getting shit faced about your legacy and about everything. <laughs> you have to amongst your friends and family. You have to. Do you think about oh, that yeah. or you can't? You, you, are you at the point now where you can think about that? You know. The legacy to me, I'm not too concerned about the legacy. When I'm getting fucked up, I'm getting fucked up. I'm not thinking about work. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about is my work. Well, what I'm do you do? Fun. Hey, what do you do, Tyson, whenever you're getting after it? What are you drinking? Oh, Where are you at? What music oh, are you? I'm drinking, I'm drinking everything and anything, and I do not know when to go home. There is no home time, <laughs> especially if I'm in Las Vegas. Oh, oh. Hey, I'd put a self-ban on myself on that city for similar reasons, I think, is what you are uh, speaking of. You still get after it to this day? even in the middle of fight camps and everything or is that whenever you're done no fighting? no while I'm in while I'm in fight camps I'm, I'm alcohol free um, but I have been known to go out on nights and get absolutely smashed in um, fight weeks so yeah so what not do you not so clever but I've always won so it doesn't really matter <laughs> Hey, Tyson, there's not a lot of people that are going to tell you what the fuck to do, dude. Like, I, I don't know at what age you found that out, but there's not a lot of people on earth that can tell you what to do, which has to feel pretty good. What is your fight camp regimen? You say you're going two a days for five days, and then you got one on Saturday, and you've been doing that for however. What is your, do you eat something? Because you're a massive, hey, you yeah. are a fucking massive human being. I mean, yeah. I assume you have to eat, everything's calculated. Do you have the nutritionist and everything like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I got, um, I got one of the world's best nutritionists, George Lockhart. He, um... He does all my nutritional stuff. He does everything for me, like that sort of stuff. But I put most of my success down to masturbation seven times a day. <laughs> <laughs> you got this guy. You can Honestly, pop. You can really pop. Got to keep that blood pumping, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What is, that? is that why you think you throw such bombs? Because what you've been accused, yeah. you've been accused of having what shit in your gloves and stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's a lot. What's that all about? That's because you're. And the only thing, the only thing I've been loading is testosterone from all the wanking over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in uh, what was that show? What was that? There was that show, uh, Myth. Mythbusters. Uh, Mythbusters did it with a boxer actually, because the old myth was uh, if you women you, weak in legs. Yeah, yeah. Beforehand, then they did on Mythbusters like, no, actually, you get more testosterone immediately afterwards, it makes you stronger. You've been you've been doping testosterone with your right hand, huh? Wow. Going to town yep. on yourself. Right be hands and left hands, depending on uh, what I feel like. <laughs> uh, at this point, is there anything you can get better at in the ring, or do you think you know your fighting style? You know what you're, you know what you're perfect at. You know, I like to just go in there and have a brawl, have a good fight with uh, with the opponent, whoever it is, whatever it is. Go in there and do your best. You know, that's all we can do in life. A lot of people put pressure on themselves, thinking, "I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that." But me. I'm happy with being a big fat bald headed guy who knocks people out. <laughs> and like people say to me, Oh, you're out of shape, you're fat, you're this, you're that, but I'm the only one who's still undefeated after thirteen years. <laughs> Thirty two fights in a row unbeaten. From a big fat guy, two hundred and seventy seven pounds, bald headed. Come on. Yeah, but I think that's why you're loved in America so much. Mm -hmm. I think when we were introduced to you, you know, whenever we were introduced to you through the Deontay Wilder fight, we're like Oh my God, this is the greatest boxer of all time. Yeah. He's a heavyweight, he throws bombs, he talks shit, he sings, <laughs> and if we were six foot, how, how tall are you? Six foot nine. If we were six foot nine, 
we would hope that we'd be built like that yep. and we would beat the fuck out of people. Yeah. Like I think you were one of the most relatable people, even though you're yep. an anomaly, honestly. And I think your entire story about how you got into the game and then, you know, you went through some stuff mentally and then now you've come back and we've all kind of got introduced yep. to you. I think it's really fucking awesome. I, I honestly believe you should think about that sometimes when you're blacked out drinking whatever, singing whatever every once in a while. Yeah, sounds good. You know, it's uh, never ever hid anything from people. I, I had alcohol problems, drug problems, uh, mental health problems, weight issues. I've had, it. I've had all the problems in my life. And you know what? I'm still here batting, telling the story. Um, I'm still fighting. You look good, man. You're still, and by the way, this interim champ not showing up at the press conference. Mm. What are we doing? Yeah, that's bad. Not a good idea. Hey, that's bad content, too. Like he's, I think if I'm him and I'm his, uh, his agent or manager, I would want him to be around Tyson Fury at all times. Yes. Right? Like, if there's an opportunity to be on the same stage, hey, let's go ahead and get you there. But I guess you think you're saying that he doesn't want you getting in the, the head space. Is that something that is real in the combat sport, you think? Like, when those stare downs happen, is something yeah. actually happening there? Or is that just. I, I, you think I think it's a lot of bullshit, um, all that stuff, the mind games and whatever else. But a lot of these fighters read into it a lot. I'm not one of them who really care about it all. Like, I single-handedly held this press conference on my own today here in London. A room full of press. Um, it really makes no difference if they turn up or not because they don't really get a lot of time to speak because I do all the talking. If you haven't talked, if you haven't, can tell already, I'm an excellent talker. Yeah, you are. You should do mic, more. Line me up and let me go. Yeah, you should do more talking, by the way. But do you think when those stare downs happen, because they've been happening since the history of com combat sports. Yeah, yeah. And there's some people like Conor McGregor takes it very serious whenever he's, you know, he does it. He has his entire routine. I don't know if it's for show or not. Do you think there is a physical advantage to those types of interactions and stuff like that for you? I think so, yeah. I think when you, if you can get in a fighter's mind, um, he thinks about it when he goes home and it, it affects his training. And all he can think about at night is you. All he can think about when he wakes up in the morning is you. And then, then you're living in his mind rent-free. Did you ever have anybody that did that to you when you were coming up? Never. <laughs> never. I, I never believe in all that stuff. I eat hamburgers and drink beers before fights. <laughs> You're the absolute best, Ty. Go ahead. Tyson, you've beaten every you know world-class heavyweight that they've put in front of you. You're clearly the best heavyweight in the world. At is there? Are you at the point in your career now where it's like, ah, fuck it, I don't have anything else to prove? Or do you still have that same chip on your shoulder because all these people, you know, they, they say all this shit about you, whether it's, you know, you're out of shape or whatever the case may be. Like, do you still yeah, have that yeah. chip on your shoulder when you're going into fights or not really? Yeah, you... I feel I feel like I've got a lot to prove in this next fight. Um, this could be my last fight. Uh, we don't know. Whoa, is that but... public? Is that public? No, that's 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 a, um, exclusive for you guys. Oh, hell yeah. Whoa. Well, first of all, thank you for everything you've done for sports. And thank you for that little drop there. But go ahead. Back to what you were saying. I'm sorry. Now I've totally fucking forgot what I was going to say. No, you're saying this, you have a lot to prove in this, you think, because it could be yeah, your last... I still feel like I've got a lot to prove in this fight. Um, I want to go out as the undefeated world heavyweight champion. Um, and I'll be happy, you know. I'm, I'm focused on making a Hollywood movie after the fight um, on my life of Tyson Fury. Um, I've got a lot of stuff I want to do. Um, so boxing is a small part of it, but I've got to finish. I've got to finish what I started all those years ago. Um and enjoying that elite level club that I was talking about earlier. So whenever you, whenever you start thinking about retirement, I retired early. Uh, you wouldn't know that my position was irrelevant, but I retired early after making a pro bowl. It was like my best year I had, I retired early, but mentally I was ready to move on. Whenever you think about retirement, especially after all that you've accomplished in boxing and also in the WWE, you're a big time star. You're great in the WWE. Yeah. I was very lucky to be a fan to watch you over there. You're making a movie. How long have you been thinking about the next thing? Has this always been something or at what point? No, say, I was you know always what? concentrating on boxing for a long period of time. But now, like I say, I'm getting towards the end. Of, you know when you get towards the end of your career. You know when you're getting too long in the two for the game. Um, I've achieved everything. I've made a hell of a lot of money. I'm financially secure. I don't need to do this um but now it's about having enjoyment in my life looking after my kids and my wife spending time with the guys traveling around the world um just doing the normal stuff that i've missed out on for the last 20 years it sounds like this is your last fight man i and i listen <laughs> there's probably going to be a, a lot of money available to you to come back and box somebody at some point i mean that's the way the world 
Yep, yep, it, it works like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. So although, you know, you're thinking about going and taking time, I'm assuming the fight game will always be something that'll be tempting you to get back. But man, what a fucking run for a 34-year-old. Hell yeah. yeah. Huh? What a run. 34. Thank you, guys. One of, the, one of the most exciting, great shows I've been on all day, and I must have done... 250 interviews and this was the best well hey we appreciate that man tickets go on sale tomorrow morning 7 a.m yep. on Ticketmaster for the april 23rd blockbuster potentially the last time we see the greatest heavyweight going tyson the gypsy king fury against that bum <laughs> doing what hell yeah right, thank you ladies and gentlemen yeah. 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 hey buddy have a All cool one best. hey you too man i'll see you at some event somewhere later See you soon, buddy. Bye-bye. Yep. All right, so I want to drink. I don't want to get into a. I don't want to get into a drinking thing with him. No, Six, no way. nine. Jeez. Are you kidding me? Listen, younger me, okay, what? would have uh. signed up for one of those nights. Like, hey, I've heard legendary stories about mm -hmm. old Cuzzy here. We're going to meet him. I'm going with him. Yeah. All right, I'm going with him. Let's just see, because I feel like I have to represent for you know my group of friends, both at Plum. I have to represent for Morgantown. Sure, I have to right. represent for everybody. Like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead. And by the way, I've kept up with some. Like, there has been some, mm -hmm. you know, for the McAfee family as well. I mean, there has been, some, and for that 0.01% too. That's I right. mean, mm -hmm. let's not forget about it. There has been some that I feel like I've performed very well, and they've said, hey, yeah, McAfee can go, people will say. There's been a couple of evenings where I, uh, I should not have gone. Yeah. Yeah. And I could, not, I could not have gone. And Valiant try. It was a bad decision. Yeah. That, that's one of those. And I think that's what 34-year-old me, shout out to me and Tyson for the image, 34-year-old me thinks about that maybe like, you know, 29, 30, 28, 21, 20-year-old. 20 there was a period there where I wasn't allowed to by the NFL. But there's, that's the, the maturity of that. That guy has to drink everything in the fucking oh, building. My oh, my God. Yeah. Can't think even of, imagine. He's sending, they are sending people to the liquor store while the club is open. When mm -hmm. he's yeah. That is an amazing time. You see people running out the back doors, running in with more. That is the type of stuff I bet he does. His retirement party is going to oh, be. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Sounds like this is his last fight, though, huh? Yeah. 100%. And you don't he did wanna... 200 interviews. He definitely said that somewhere else. That would be <laughs> probably like maybe. Two, it's our first time talking to him. But he, if he was to bless us with that quote, that would be one of the coolest <laughs> things of all time. I'm just maybe he and he seemed sitting. like an awesome guy. Yeah, he could have been sitting on and waiting for the interview he enjoyed, and he was like, "Okay, here we go. This is probably my last fight." How about that? Pretty sweet. He said because he alluded to it earlier, and I, I'd seen. The, I did my research. You know, I did my. Re I didn't know he's six nine, so that's on me. <sighs> Should have went to the Wikipedia. Earlier. Uh, I mean, that's massive. Ballpark. My research is I, I go on Twitter and I just start like searching for what people are, are stories, what's being talked about, what's being buzzed about. If it's somebody I don't know, mm -hmm. like I don't know the boxing world at all. Sure. So that's kind of my go to just a little um, inside baseball. Yeah. yeah. That is the only preparation I do. Do you have questions prepared for these people? No, no, I have no idea. I just try to get things loaded in there so that whenever the time arises, it pops out and maybe leads to something. That's how I do what I do. It's not always great. I think other people have great conversations with people. You hear me talk a lot because I'm trying to get past the first potential answer to see what their next answer mm -hmm. is because I think that is really where, hey, let's get past the... Uh, Can bullshit. Yeah, and let's get to the next one. So my style is definitely a fascinating one and I would not recommend it for anybody. It's stupid and it's bad, <laughs> but I appreciate the fact that people give me great conversations. I'm very thankful for it. But that's what I do. I start... Uh, like retirement was being that was something that was being talked about like end of the road almost uh. like was being chatted about I think by some people there him he alluded to it earlier in the conversation too as well when he said like uh, you know <laughs> I'm not doing his accent because I don't want <laughs> I don't want disrespect him. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to disrespect That's him at all uh, do you have a mm, not, not good enough to yeah I can't do it. Not yet, not yet, not yet. But April 23rd, when the April fight is. April 23rd, yeah. yeah. And when we get closer to that, you will definitely have one. We're ready to go. And we're on Team Gypsy King. Oh, obviously. obviously. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Obviously. Until he retires, you yeah. know? Yeah. Even through retirement. Sure, that's mm -hmm. right. Because he's he's going to get paid $50 million for a one-night boxing oh, show. Sure, yeah. I mean, he's With somebody's kid. Yes. Him if he wants to. Yeah, oh, if easily. he wants to. But I'm thinking about what the... Floyd Mayweather was getting paid $20 million or $30 million to go to Japan to wrestle or to fight yeah. some billionaire's kid in New Year's Eve and knock this kid out yeah. Yeah. and just not even dance. Think about what they'll do with the fucking Gypsy King. I mean, he got some, he's going to make so much money in return. So much money. Oh, yeah. And he can do whatever the fuck he wants yeah. at that point. Too. Well, and like you said, too, with Floyd, I feel like they were talking about his retirement for such a long time. And then it's like, okay, but we'll give you $55 million if you box this guy. Like, eh, I, I, could probably, I could probably uh, dust the gloves I mean, off. I mean, I guess I still got it. <laughs> Yeah. 
He's just so much fat. Like, he's been training since he was a kid, straight out of the womb or mm -hmm. whatever. Floyd, same exact fucking yep. thing. Right. Yep. Like, they are going to shit out more information about boxing than somebody who's going to pick it up. Yeah. With that being said, I do think there's some great athletes that become great boxers. Yes. Like, Jake Paul is a... Yeah. I think he knocks people out. I don't know what's going to happen when he, and he wanted to fight a boxer. Mm-hmm. Whoa! We missed that. Mm. Oh, my God. I just thought about it after the show or after the interview. That's on me. His brother. That's 100% on me. He is fighting, though. His brother is fighting in the, uh, in the, the undercard. He's in the this undercard, one. yeah. yeah this, this one's one. on me. This one's 100% on me for not doing that. But anyways, like, I, I want to see against the people that, like, do it their entire life. Right. You know, because, like, soccer, for instance. If I was to just go do some soccer stuff with somebody... Like, I would look okay. Like, I would look average. Even though I haven't done anything in the soccer world for a long, long time, there's just things that you naturally get from being a kid and doing two-a-days, five days a week, yeah. once on Saturday. Yeah. Like there's just natural things you pick up. Him boxing these random amateurs. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Who's going to sign up for that? you got to have big old guts. Yeah. Johnny Knoxville is going to fight. Knoxville. Tyson <laughs> Fury yeah. or something at some point. Some rich billionaire is going to give Knoxville like $10 million. And Tyson, I'll give you like 50 million. You two fight New Year's Eve or yeah. whatever. And Knox was like, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I'll actually jump. At, I think we can make this good. I'll jump and then you just go ahead. And He's a maniac. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so he, he was on SmackDown mm -hmm. on Friday. Him and uh, Sami Zayn. Right. First one, glancing blow. The kick. First kick he ate on Friday. That second kick he was right in, I was, mm -hmm. I think I was like eight, nine feet away there from where my table is to where he was standing. Sammy's boot. Yeah, right mm. down Broadway. <laughs> yeah. Way into his face. And Johnny Knoxville just like, yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> that guy is just a walking, talking, punching dummy somehow. And he's still incredibly handsome, makes great business decisions, and is still doing it all. Yeah, he's an absolute maniac. Maniac. Is Couple it? screws loose. So he's what? He's dare, He's our modern daredevil. I think sure. so, yeah. Johnny Knoxville. Maybe yeah. like Pastrana. Pastrana's oh, yeah. on an America's Got Talent extreme thing. Well, he, I've seen a guy. Is he out of the hospital yet? Walk. Yeah, well, that's pre recorded. Yeah, yeah. That, hap that happened. The skydive where he crashed uh, recently. What did he do? He went skydiving without he, a parachute? Was it a base no, jumping? It was, he jumped off of like a, like a, like a skyscraper. skyscraper and the chute didn't open early enough. Yeah. Jeez. He left. He's, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Travis Pastrana. But yeah. I think he like broke his back and his hips, maybe. So yeah, but everything. Travis Pastrana's, he's broke that back sure. 10 times. Yeah. times. Yeah. It's not even his back that he was born with. Yeah, it's somebody mm -hmm. else's back. That's Travis true. Pastrana and John, there it is. Travis Pastrana and Johnny Knoxville, those are our two. Uh, those are the two. Yeah. yeah. He, and uh, Zeta just told me he hurt his L5. Actually. And, of oh, course, shit. Super Hummin. Super Hummin. Hummin. Right, true. Shout out. Kevin Owens. K sure, obviously. Jeff Hardy. What? what? All whites. Tell Kevin yeah. Owens. Yeah. What's that all about? <laughs> what is that? That's an interesting, That's an interesting thing. Do Steve me a favor and tell Kevin Owens to respect the hat, okay? Hey, you can tell him right now, all right? Because he's fucking standing right there, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so if you got anything to say, just say it. Listen, it's one thing to use every other wrestler's moves, but to disrespect. Whoa. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. That's unbelievable. He's burying Texas, too, as of late. He's been saying a lot, a lot of bad stuff. A lot of people said me and Gumpy were at uh, Raw last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get to uh, a couple things here before our one wraps up. We got the boys joining us in hour two. Yeah. I cannot wait for that. Hell yeah. They're going to be right here. AJ Hawks will be on the screen right there and then down here as well so the boys can see him. Double Hawks. So he can be a part of the conversation. Yeah, we got two Hawks. Oh, that's oh, dangerous. Oh. Yeah, two Hawks. A lot of Hawks. Any Hawk is a good Hawk, especially when it's AJ Hawk. Oh. Hall of Fame game. Yeah, here we go. We'll be on August 4th. Raiders versus Jaguars. Wow. Okay. okay, put it on your calendars. We got football. August 4th yeah. is the day where insurance, future insurance salesmen and car salesmen represent NFL teams in a football game as an NFL <laughs> telecast. August 4th, Hall of Fame game. Hell yeah. We'll get it, boys. It's also my birthday. Shut up. Don't make us bite. Happy you. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. All right. We'll remember that. Fox. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Christ. Are you kidding me with this that's guy? So every countdown we have, because that's where the countdowns go to, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Foxy's like, oh, 100 days to my birthday. <laughs> you were screaming August 4th, and I had to, I just had to say it. Uh, well, hey. Happy birthday, man. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Congrats Foxy. Congrats to your parents, too, uh, yeah. all those years yeah. ago. Football, baby. Turning 85. Football is birth this year on Foxy's birthday, which is great. And everyone loves the Hall of Fame game. 
that yeah, game that's not stinks so bad. Yeah. Well, we all get so excited for what the Please kickoff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then as soon as we get in, we're like, God, right, here's the XFL, USFL, and the fucking <laughs> AFL's yeah. teams right. for next year. But football is back. Oh, we don't have games for another three days. Uh, ah, no. Hour oh. two on the other side with the boys and AJ Hawk. We'll see you then. Flying down to Nashville, doing a podcast with the boy. Hey, let's go! Then obviously get smacked down tonight. I'll probably talk some shit to the crowd. Then we'll fly back home, watch division round weekend. Let's have a day. Thank you, Bloomberg, <laughs> for the article. It was really nice spending 50 minutes with that guy. At all. I mean, I expected a little bit more of that article, but <laughs> these, these macaques are fucking incredibly intelligent and they are ruthless individuals. She should be your mama. Yakai yeah. had a crew for her coup to get to the top. Ain't nobody gonna come topple her after what they saw her just do. She just took out her fucking mom, dude. Someone from the nature reserve saying, hey, look, we're gonna have to go fucking put a bullet in you, Kai's head. We can't have these monkeys going ages. Yeah, Kai. Yeah, Kai. Can you imagine if the other macaques get wind of this? There might be 2,000 macaques heading to this nature reserve. Hey, we go! Sports show shall begin right now. Yeah. Yakai said, fuck you, mom. Then takes out four, three, two, inevitably one. Get the fuck out of here. Have the greatest weekend of your life. Be a friend, tell a friend that Monday shit's gonna be bananas. That felt pretty good. See you all. Bye. All right, this is a Betty Ooh. White challenge. Every one of these particular hot dogs that is sold today, the proceeds will be donated to further brand. Betty White loved animals. Bunch of hot dogs for the dogs. Make sure you tell the boy that we said if someone doesn't sign the boy in the next two weeks, the boy is always welcoming in New England, okay? And Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. I'm in my element, flow is like water I'm forced through the fire, I'm feeling like gold Gotta stay grounded, stay down to earth Following God and you grinding, you do as you told I don't work to make you like me But I'm front and center, word to Spike Lee And God came in a nick of time They think I'm crazy, but I might be Let's run it, or run it, or run it Welcome! What the fuck? Good to fucking meet you in person. Hey, teeth are whiter in person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm fired up. Let's go, man. Let's go! <laughs> Look at you, dude! Did you see that Pat McAfee is on Bussin' with the Boys. You're kind of like a bucket list guest. When we started this thing, we're sitting on this bus. Like, Bussin' with the Boys, podcasting isn't in my mind unless I'm listening to your shit. You have a small part in that influence of all of this happening. It's cool as fuck that you're sitting here. AJ Hawk, AJ Hawk, AJ Hawk. I mean, I'm gonna be late. I think. Do your SmackDown, bro. When just like the macaque monkeys, the top of the pyramid can be shifted. Is there any singular honor? It's better than that to the world. And you say stupendous. You better give it the proper accolades. I've been Googling. I've been searching. What is the proper definition of stupendous? Is that a dictionary? You're damn right. They still exist. Amazing. Astounding. Marvelous. Astonishing. Phenomenal. Breathtaking. Smashing. Superb. Fabulous. Fantastic. Tremendous. Wondrous. Monumental. Mind-blowing. Terrific. Radical. Colossal. Dynamite. Staggering. All of those words are the definition for one word, and that is stew. And social media, you and read also it. Monday night. The breath taken, record breaking, head of the table that runs the number one show in sports entertainment. for this jackass showing up!
That's just like that fucking boomer size of our world. Someday. Someday. Yeah. We'll get there. Joseph Montana, Italian American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. It, was a, it was a it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yeah. He's like, put the baby down. And they said no. And he said, ah. And they said, no, I'm taking your granddaughter. He said, ah. And they said, I'm taking it. And he goes, you asked for it. Sketchers up, sketchers down. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs yep. and the baby yeah. caught the baby, <laughs> caught the granddaughter after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm -hmm. passed out. It was like one of those, boom, and they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs. At yeah. first. You know how like that, how people surf almost down the stairs? He did that and caught his granddaughter like this. And then he picked up the ball and he actually put foot on kidnapping uh, suspect, mm -hmm. called the police with his Bluetooth and waited there. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fucking Joe Montana, dude. That's right. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show. It is Tyson Fury, Bruce Arians, and The Boys Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. Hour 2 begins now. Yeah! Can't thank you enough for joining us here at youtube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. The Toxic Table is here looking better than ever. At Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys. Tone Diggs is here in a beautiful cowboy hat looking the freshest and live and in studio we have been blessed by the boys the host of the busting with the boys podcast uh absolute legends and icons ladies and gentlemen taylor luan and will content yeah! yes. thank you electrostatic to be here thank you for having us hey we did it we done it People said we wouldn't get here. They said it would never happen. Oh. But look at us. Oh. Look at us. Look at us. Oh. We got Pat on the bus. Pat's on the bus. Now we're on the Pats. Got oh. handshakes. It's a beautiful deal. You got handshakes. We got cowboy hats. We got mugs. What? 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 It's kind of a bit of a deal. Hey, one word at a time. What? 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 We got handshakes. What? We got cowboy hats. What? Monarchs. What? what? More monarchs. What? what? Khaki colored pants. What? Oh, it's a nice deal. I yeah. gotta catch up. I gotta catch the vibe here. I no, know you know, that. you're busy, dude. Your your full time gig is uh, playing the football, but I hope <laughs> busting with the boys becomes that at some point because you two are electrifying. Joining us from an attic in Ohio, a Super Bowl champion, a college football national champion, a Ryder Cup champion, and COVID survivor. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk! 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 I, hey, listen, I gotta keep up quick. You know what yes, AJ! I'm in the back. I'm like, hey, so what's the deal? Like, oh, you'll be fine. Just go to the thing. And now I'm here <laughs> looking like a damn fool, right? Everyone's going, AJ Hawk! What? AJ, what? And I'm like, ah! You're a smart you know, guy. I'm screaming. Yeah, but you're I'm catching up. Nervous. You're catching up. You're catching up. You're a smart guy. I know. I'll, I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up. Uh, I'll pick it up. AJ, great to see you, man. Obviously, uh, is he? Is he still? Yeah, there he is. Hey, AJ. Yeah, great to see you, AJ. Hey, AJ. AJ. Oh. Will you Taylor, what's up, man? What are you guys doing in Indy? Uh, you know what? We were gonna we were gonna fly, but uh, Will hates masks, so we decided to take a little drive up here Fair. and I'll jump talk up. To Diggs. Diggs is with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the number. <sighs> yeah, we gotta stay out of it. Right? We gotta say, stay out of that Listen, deal. for a twenty-five minute flight is what it would have had to have been from Nashville to Indianapolis. Yeah, There's not yeah. a nonstop. Bro. There's not a nonstop. So we're looking at a six-hour deal. <laughs> six <hour Jesus>. flight. <laughs> You're going to Dallas. You're going to Atlanta. You're all the way back to Detroit, and then you hit Indianapolis. Yeah, people wonder why I fly private so much. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, it's because you're bougie. It's like, well also because this particular airport 
has zero direct flights anywhere. Right. You're going to have to go to hub cities. Thank you for driving up. Uh, obviously, oh. I hope you both didn't bring COVID into this fucking yeah, office. Yeah, we're, we we we're, we we're, we're all good, boys. We're all good. We got it all set up here, huh? Uh, yeah, I've been already hit with it, so I'm good. I got the... Uh, you know the stuff that makes you antibodies. Yeah. 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 yeah, and, and we do. All. Yeah, we me as well. And the animantium. I got animantium in there my body. Is. Whoa, that's a big word. I'll have to Google that later. That's it, nice. Is that like unobtainium? It's in Wolverine's body. Okay, adrenochrome. All right, AJ. All right, AJ. Uh, let's get <laughs> let's get to a conversation here. I'll uh, start with you, Taylor. And I, I and I preface this outside. People. Hey, you guys are, uh, your mics are on back there. The, um, the, by the way, I love that they're doing math right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, they're figuring out how to make sure we get the incredibly handsome gentleman from Bussin' with the Boys on the shot. AJ's become Steve Jobs with the uh, the black turtle. Yeah, yep. no, this it looks is nice. He's wearing. He does look fantastic, and the light is radiating. Yeah, yeah. you slap a ten on that thing. It's a ten. Oh, right? what is it now? What is it? I give it an eight and a half. No, I don't know. Still that's good. still okay. solid. Hey, right? that's an Ohio eleven. Strong jawline. <laughs> nice. They got the big girthy neck. Yeah, he's, he's got probably a... got something going on downstairs. <laughs> you know he's AJ Hawk. Something yeah. to call him about. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's got six so. kids. Got it. Boys, you got boys. Uh, three girl or one girl and three boys. Actually, oh, wow. holy shit! Those Axel, yeah, the you know, to get the boys, kids. you got to have a, a bit of a deal going on down below. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I got two girls. So that's how it works for us. You know All right, let's saying? talk about your deal downstairs. Yes, <laughs> you want to talk about it? Yeah, like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. My my it was deal. voted most huggable in high school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, mouth hugs only. It was right, right, great. Right, right, that's right, awesome. Right, Happy right, that happened. Congrats to you. Thank you. Everybody's all about a good award, you know, and a good recognition. Um, let's talk about your your season here. And obviously, Busting with the Boys is so fucking good. And the reason why I'm such a big fan of it is because I was doing podcasts when I was playing. Average. You guys doing podcasts while you're still playing Playoff Willie. Shout out fucking getting the team to the playoffs. Hell yeah. People forget. But you guys are doing it while you're still playing and making a good podcast still. Whenever you're, you know, you're a pretty prominent name and you're doing shit off the field, if you have any slip, you are going to get attacked for it. No, for it's game over. Yes. So, for instance. Week can, one. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, my God. No, but you do. You come back from an ACL tear, right. which is not fun at all. In a very, you know, you have to be in a position where you have to do hand-to-hand -hand combat with one of the best in the game, Chandler Jones, week one. I assume it got real loud for you there. Like, I assume people were very loud for you. Like, oh. Oh, oh you! Tough. This guy's focusing on a fucking podcast. Yeah, right. Talking. He, oh, he's so funny. He ain't fucking can't block the <laughs> right. goddamn quarterback. Podcast and he is blocking. He yeah, the whole the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. After the first quarter, I'd say not even after the first quarter. About halfway through the first quarter, I was just thinking, "Get me out of here. <laughs> I gotta fake a cramp or something. I gotta get the hell home <laughs> yes. and quick." Uh, first quarter. I hit a little uh, play action pass on him. Saw it coming from a mile away. Bank around the edge. Done. <laughs> Next, <laughs> literally two series later. I, I take a pass at it. I'm like, oh, I got a good angle. And then he does this. He's got these long, erratic arms where he's kind of coming at you in all sorts of ways. And I'm like, oh, I'm in a great position. And then all of a sudden he's here and I'm like, oh, we're done. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he definitely took out the boy Tannehill a little bit. And it's tough when you're helping out your boy and say, hey, it won't happen again. But then it happened twice in a game. <laughs> and so he, yeah, he, listen. He got five sacks. And, and, there, right? Well, yeah, yeah, there it is. I was, I was hoping you'd say No, I didn't give up five sacks. I gave up two sacks. <laughs> said I was hoping you'd say I, I gave up two sacks. <laughs> he had five sacks in the game, but that I actually played worse than five sacks. I had a multiple hits, <laughs> multiple <laughs> pressures. I was getting walked back. It's like when you see the uh, the five-star athlete in high school going against the 165-pound yeah, yeah. white offensive line. A lot of highlights. It was tough, dude. Yeah. It was a tough deal. I actually came out of the game. Uh, to get an IV, I actually was cramping. And when they came back in, the announcer, who's a great guy, but made a fatal mistake by saying, Taylor Lewan's back in the game, which is not the time to do that. <laughs> the fans decided we're not okay with him. Oh, the MC. Oh, no. And you're talking they about the, the PA. Going. And I'm sitting there, I look over at my, my left guard, and I go, well, we're just here now, aren't we? Like, <laughs> eight years in this place, and we're just getting dummy by the boys. So, hey, it was, it was a bit of a deal. It got better as it went. Obviously, not my best year. But, uh, man, Chandler. Stud. Very good at good football. Player. Very yeah. good football good player. Uh, you're yeah. talking about the PA. You're talking about the PA in in house, not the announcer on the television. You're yes. talking about in house. You in -house got booed PA. by the entire place. Announced it, and the whole place started booing. Pro Bowler. No. Superstar. He let that out. Pillar of the Titans. <laughs> yeah. A man who is very recognizable with this program. Taylor Lewan back in at left tackle. Oh fuck this! <laughs> Oh, the microphone! He's so fucking funny! 
No, but it was probably pretty loud, I assume, right? And, and that, it, yeah, it was a tough gig. And, and the worst part was that the Arizona Cardinals actually took to the social media and decided to uh, put a picture of Chandler Jones up there and said, uh, busting with the boys. The farther you get away from it, the funnier it is. That was an excellent chirp by the Arizona Cardinals. That's good. That's my home phenomenal. state team. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. hurt. True, Can't you know do what I'm it. saying? Like your Pats this year, that's gotta be a tough little deal, right? Yeah, that's good, good sweater. That's good sweater. You, you gotta bury the the Pats any chance you get. Yeah. Definitely let that shoot. Or and the before AJ has a question, Will, I want to ask you: You're doing this podcast, Bust with the Boys. Great podcast, great YouTube. Thanks for having me on. By the way, thank you for having oh, me on. Thanks for coming, bro. No, it was an honor. Foxy and mm -hmm. I absolutely loved it. Normally, when I fly to those uh, SmackDown shows, I go in. I do the show and then I leave. I don't see anything. Flew in a little bit earlier to fucking stop by. It was awesome. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Thank you for having me. Great show. Good program you got, too. The people mm -hmm. around Thank you me. guys. Got are good great. squad. Subscribe. Yeah. Rate five stars. Ring the bell. Mm -hmm. What? This one right here, I think. No, no. This one right here right now. Yeah. No, this one right here. Oh, right yeah, right, right there. there. Subscribe. <laughs> you should subscribe to the Bustle with the Boys podcast, but it is, you guys are unbelievable. And the YouTube, you guys are great. It's growing. The business is growing. You are getting picked up by teams, then you're off teams, and you're back on teams, and you're off teams. And I think you and I chatted about this, how no coaches that don't know you are going to roll the dice on getting this podcaster in the building, especially at the position that you're at, teamer guy, linebacker guy. Mm -hmm. Getting a chance to go back in with the podcast, did it change anything with your teammates or coaches or anything like that with the success of your podcast while still playing? I would say this year, no. Like, all the boys were hype about it. You know what I mean? Like, Basachi is in there saying, like, hey, Will, like, he coached me on, a, like, a punt set or something. He's like, put that on your fucking radio show. With you. <laughs> and he's like, you're Johnny Carson bullshit. You say my name again on your podcast, you're going to have to start paying me money. And we're all, everyone's laughing. Like, people enjoyed the podcast. Like, I was telling you about the, uh, man, I'm forgetting his name, the coach that you knew in India. Burbs. Yeah, Burbs. He was all about it. But... I, you walk into the building and you kind of feel a little weird walking in because you know you have busting with the boys and you don't want to seem like you're trying to like clown around when everybody takes, you know. Or get inside information or bury anybody. Correct, yes. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that you have to balance, by the way. Yes, and Basachi's like, hey, are you going to do any episodes? I was like, I mean, we have a few in the library, but once we get to the back end, like if I'm still around, we'll have to do some to, you know, appease sponsors and stuff like that, but... Yeah, it's weird, but all the boys welcome with open arms. And like I said, like I knew the team, I know a lot of the roster, and uh, knowing the coaching staff and Coach Pisaccia ahead of time is very helpful. That's an interesting thing going forward for you too, Taylor. I mean, I know you're a big. I mean, this guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Left half. Big time. Yeah. Hey, he's got the house on the big side of town. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Uh huh. The further in that town you <laughs> get, the not. bigger the house gets. Really? He's fucking at the end of the road. End of the block. Cold yeah. Yeah. Next yeah, to he's All the way at the end of the cold set. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Him and uh, Timberlake. Him and Vrabes are, are next yeah. to our neighbor. Right next to each other. Yeah, go ahead, AJ. It's beautiful. You and hey, this, Shelton, uh, too. Will, Will, uh, Bisaccia getting hired in Green Bay to be the special teams guy is like the most celebrated special teams hire of all time, I feel like, when it, when it comes to coaching. And second question, real quick, oh, your wow. shoes, the Monarchs, <laughs> what's the deal? Are you are we ironic? Are we serious? Do they start ironic <laughs> and now you're serious? That's a great question. And I think the, the last thing you said there is kind of how it happened. It was a little more like uh, ironic at first, and I think I just bought him and was just – I bought him for a fit last year to go to the Titans game. We were about to, it was like the last game of the year, or maybe we were going into the uh, play the Ravens. And I had this starter jacket on, and I wanted shoes to go with it. I had these, I had these uh, pit vipers on. I had a starter Ooh, jacket. Yeah. And so I wanted to roll with the, the Monarchs. And then from there, the way everybody had fun on social media, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to wear these things. There's like, hey, you, you kind of look dumb and shit, which kind of makes me think <laughs> it like. Wasn't, it wasn't phrased like that, but it was just a bit. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor, right? Taylor chirped me, so I felt like I had to dig my heels in the ground. Like, you know, I'm going to embrace this a little and bit. And now more, that's the rest of your life. Yeah, then now it's the rest. And, hey, by the way, AJ, it's baby month. We're, we're expecting this month, so I'm in full. Congrats. Congratulations. That is Thank awesome. You. And uh, AJ knows about, uh, you know, you, you've done numerous AJ Hawk chants on this thing. Mm -hmm. When we were chatting on bus, and I don't know if he listened or watched. You know, AJ's busy. 100 kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. AJ, this guy's a big fan of yours, so maybe not fucking bury him in your first yeah. question. Yeah. 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 How did you, I said, you, you, said, what, you said, what do I love doing? Uh, what's that? What do I love doing with AJ? AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk, AJ Hawk, I get it. AJ Hawk, I got it. AJ Hawk, we got it. AJ Hawk, doing it. AJ Hawk. Now, now, do what you were just doing there. Like the yeah, we were doing it again.
Say it. Say what, everything you were saying in between those. I got it. What? what? We're doing it. What? what? Here we are. What? what? It's happening. What? We've done it. Yeah. What? Yes. All right. Look at that. That's it's so easy to catch on. What a fun show. That is choreography. What a fun show. <laughs> this is really nice. You having a good time? I have, I'm have. i having a great time. I actually have a question. You you obviously have the nice big desk, yeah. but I want to know what the thing is here with the totem pole. Why is your desk so much higher wow. versus over here? And I'm not trying to cause anything that might no. be going so on it's here. Cameras. It's all for the cameras. Yeah. Every mm-hmm. camera angle, basically. Is that I, what they also told you guys? I also have an inferiority complex. Inferiority. Yeah. <laughs> Tough words. Three syllables. That's a hard yeah. deal. Yeah. I get it all the time. Oh, Three man. weeks after the season, these, this mouth doesn't work very good. A lot so more than three six. Yeah. I think it's a lot more syllables than three. Really? That's a lot. It's about, <laughs> right? it's about but also, five. But also a general studies major, right? So, <laughs> hey, so here we are. Hey, 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 go blue. blue. Um, Tom Brady. Let's talk about a little. He retired. You know him? You friends with him? You guys uh, I've met him. I've shook his hand. We were. I was suspended when we were practicing against them, and uh, we had a nice little one-on-one conversation. Ooh. And I was in the dumps. I didn't know what to think about it. And I was like, Hey, Tom. You know, when you had the whole deflate gate thing, I didn't say that to him at the time, but I was like, hey, when you got suspended, what did you do? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, man, I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know what to think of it. So me and my wife and the kids just went to Spain for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. What a legend. Different worlds we're living in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm terrified of coming back not in shape and this dude's hitting Spain for a little bit. Yeah, right, a little well, salsa dancing, whatever they do over there, right? I have a good time. It was beautiful. He but probably yeah. wanted to escape, probably, that, but he's able to do that because he doesn't have to do hand-to-hand combat with people. Mm-hmm. You have to yeah. do that. When you think about, like, next year, next season, Titans are in a good spot. Now a good spot. Depending upon who, we get a quarterback, too. I mean, that's true. Who's we? Well, Indianapolis Colts, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that's You know what? Great team. Actually, your boy on there, the little bobblehead, uh, Robert Mathis, I was having a hell of a year in 2016. No sacks, giving up a week eight. I hit in there. Woo. Robert Mathis is sitting across from me, smaller individual, hell of a spin move on him. And I get a chip. They're saying, hey, we're going to throw you one in the beginning of the game. Give it to you. First third down of the game. He gets chipped. I'm like, oh, we're money in the bank. <laughs> Put my hands out there. Never touched him. Oh. <laughs> Big spin move. Sorry, Marcus. So that was a bit of a deal. But uh, yeah, the Colts hey, do way, he, Best offensive lineman in the league, too. Quentin Hold Wilson. on. By the way, he knew that you gave up zero sacks going into that game. He well. had to. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. Robert Robert had all the check. Well, he never gave uh-huh. it up. Huh? Here we go. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do this. The Colts are good. The AFC South, though, big question mark, right? I mean, Houston just got a new coach in Lovey Smith. Jacksonville's Jacksonville, but they got Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson's been able to win. Will they be able to pull it off? Who the fuck knows? The Colts and the Titans, though, seem to be every single year going at it, right? Yeah, and it seems like the Colts have really been the team that's for the last forever has been the team. That's why we were talking so much shit. Because it was Houston. It was Houston, the Colts. And now like the Houston's kind of taking a dip, which they'll come back up eventually. Right. We agree. Got to play both sides of the fences. I'm not trying to get in trouble. No bulletin board material. Smart. And then you put up the Titans. Now you got Titans and the Colts going, but the Colts, the Colts seem like a great franchise. They got great coaches, (laughs) a dominant offense line, a great defense, an absolute psychopath at linebacker. I think overall, you guys are looking at a solid 4.5. You guys are going to be a good team. Thank you. Out of five, you're assuming, I'm assuming you're saying, and yeah. that is uh, the maniac. He's, that's his actual name. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's his government name, but I believe that's what they call him. He should think about changing if he wants to commit to the bit because he yeah. is an absolute monster on the field. But whenever you think about the position you guys are in with Derrick Henry, and mm. Tannehill and everything you guys got cooking what? down there. You were able to win with like 90 guys on that roster. Yeah. yeah. What is the culture in there and why do you think you guys win whenever there's just, you guys had no reason being the number one seed this year. I think everybody outside the building would say that. Inside the building, you're not going to say that. But with all the adversity and shit that was going on with that team, why do you think that building has become what it has become? Oh, I, I agree with everything you said, except for the fact that when we were playing, we did have 91 guys and we were the number one AFC and the AFC. We literally said we have no business. <laughs> one seed in the AFC. See, this is wild, boys. I can't believe we made it through that. When Derek went down against your beloved team, everyone was kind of looking at each other like, how are we going to like define ourselves now? What are we going to turn into? And then a slew of guys start coming in. Uh, AJ gets hurt a couple times. Julio's hurt a couple times. And I'm looking at the Pats game. We're playing the Pats. And the starting lineup, there's four drafted guys in the whole starting lineup. Ooh. And it's like, Jeez. hey, boys, let's just keep grinding through it and see what happens. But I think, uh, I think the coaching, the leadership of the coaching, and here I am, on the knees right now for Raves. I, I hate doing it, you know, because we all know who Raves is. He's a great guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, a you fantastic know, guy. I hate calling him a guy. We all know who he is. But he loves, he loves it. Uh, but Raves, Raves is definitely the dude that put us in that position. Every single week during his team meetings, he definitely stuffs it stuffs it down us to make sure that we know the ins and outs of the team we're going against. And a team he's always very complimentary of is the Indianapolis Colts. So hold on, though. He seems like big meathead. We, well, I've heard stories from some Ohio people, and Ohio people are Ohio people. Yeah, we all know different. that. We all know that. Right. An Ohio dude 
He's an Ohio dude. We own it. AJ's a perfect depiction of one, as is Vrabel. Everybody thinks he's a meathead. Rocks for brinks. That's what everybody thinks about all right. Ohio people, right? He is a cerebral football IQ through the roof, it feels like. He's able to, it seems like he's a part of everything. He'll talk to the specialists. He'll be over there with the defense. He'll be over there with the offense. Yes. Do you think he doesn't get anywhere near the amount of credit for football IQ and strategy and shit? I think it'll come. I, I mean, the way Coach of the Year right now says a lot about him, but I think as it goes, people are really going to realize. They always the say he's tough. He he's a tough guy. He's a tough mm -hmm. guy. He really is, and he's got the best sidekick in the world. His name is Stretch. He's like his his uh, secretary slash watches all the film, and he puts this tape together called Friday Tape. And we all sit there, and Vrabel just does this little comedy bit, his 15 minutes at Zanis. Uh, <laughs> he does a hot 15. <laughs> oh, dude. Hot 15, just crushing the boys. This fucking guy, oh, we're going to play against this guy? All right, here's what you got to do against him. And he just lays it down for you and how it works when you play Josh Allen. he When we played Josh Allen, he was talking, I'm not going to say, because if yeah. I start saying what he said about advantage. him, no, if I start saying what he said, I said, then I'm going to have this on the OTA's meeting, mm. and he's going to pause uh, this, well, and, he's gonna, I'm, and I'm going to get absolutely abused. Will knows exactly what I'm talking about there. Well, this is what me and Will were just talking about, actually, him going in the building and not giving away too much while yeah. he's playing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so, but I think Vrabel is definitely a meathead, definitely gets after it, definitely a psychopath, but he's got the IQ to go with it. The brains are still there. Go ahead, AJ. I mean, that's pretty, it's a hell of a combo. I think a lot of people would love to have, I think because Me he's too. such a meathead, because he is so tough. People overlook how smart he is sometimes. But speaking of that, Taylor, we were watching all throughout the year, and as your season was going, you guys had some awesome celebrations in the locker room where you and Braves are giving it to each other, forearms, yeah. Punches just meeting out all over the place. Did that oh escalate out, the out all over the place? Out. Yeah, meeting out. Dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, those things, those are never planned. Obviously, Vrabel comes in, he wants to be calm, cool, collect guy was in there, win with grace, lose with grace type of attitude. But when you win a big one or two, you got to give him a little shove, and that's all it takes. The wick on that guy's like this. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a dangerous fire. Right yeah. You give him a little shove, then he comes in with. I've been punching the face by Vrabel by accident, I'm assuming, about a dozen times <laughs> since he's been my coach. And every single one is welcome. I do I have a tendency to sleep sometimes so i'm happy he was uh, light on my jaw uh <laughs> hey um will <laughs> we're at combine week here in indianapolis i don't want to pivot away from it but it's a real thing mm -hmm. you i don't remember undrafted drafted late undrafted week? baby now non-combine grinder i didn't go to combine right. either by the way i wasn't invited either they invited like 30 punters there and they all stunk by the way shot no they didn't but you got drafted yeah pretty cool uh, yeah, it is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Doesn't, hey, doesn't hey, normally the king of the subtle flex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like king of the subtle man. flex. Yeah, maybe the best two twenty two of all time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was late. It was late. It was late in the game. But Bill Polian and I wasn't even really a punter when he drafted me. He thought I could figure it out. Whatever the case, my draft story is very fascinating and dumb. But for you, whenever you think about like this combine week, what is something that they can't find out this combine that makes somebody a great player? Like, why do we give a fuck? If somebody has great film about how fast, because you'll see somebody from this combine that has terrible film, terrible tape, move way up. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this guy's a bust. It's like, well, maybe he's not a bust. Maybe he, this guy wasn't as good at football as we all thought he was. And then he did some good shit at this whole thing. What do you think it takes to like make a good player in the NFL and a good team? Because you feel, I feel like you're a team guy, glue guy. How come that is never really taken into account, you think, when building a team? And, and the great teams do, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great question. I feel like coaches and scouts and everybody gets caught up in the fantasy football world of combine numbers, highlights. Like everybody gets to make all these different things now for these guys. Um, but bro, as, as far as like what makes a good player and a good teammate and stuff like that, I mean, I don't know, I guess. Isn't energy like a hundred percent of it almost? Like if you bring good energy every day, I feel like people are going to gravitate to you and like you. It's yeah, you can be, you can bring good energy though and not be good at football. Well, we're assuming you're A lot of those guys, there's probably more of those guys than not. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a lot of those hey, energy's tough. out there. Energy's tough, energy's tough. It's football, a tough deal to have. Maybe make it in the NFL is a little bit more difficult. But what I'm saying is like, why do you think some players like make it and some people don't even if all the goddamn all of the accolades are shifted in the wrong direction like you're probably not supposed to be in the nfl for as long as you're supposed yeah. to be there's zero chance they were saying that about you when you're coming out that's why you want undrafted why do you think some guys make it and some guys don't what do you think is the x factor i think there is a little bit of luck involved but outside of that like the like the intangible stuff that everybody talks about like you i feel like for me personally you have to have like an obsession with being in the film room like for me i was on the fourth on the on every depth chart every day. So I got maybe two or three reps of practice in OTAs. Can't fuck those up. In training camp, I started that way. And um, you can't, you're right, like you can't fuck those up. 
And I would game plan. I would go in after practicing and game plan our offense because I knew in my head they were only going to install so much each and every day. So if they're running a stretch one day, they might have a boot off it the next day. So I need to – like trying to get those tendencies and taken from what Coach Pelini and those guys taught me in Nebraska, I would just kind of be game planning our offense every day on film. And then like once you're out there – and they see like a kid calling out, hey, alert play action because X is nasty. This motion's happening. Alert the stretch here. And you're being loud and understand the checks going on. They could be like, hey, this kid kind of knows what he's talking about. And in training camp, Keenan Robinson was a draft pick the year before. And uh, so he had, uh, you know, some hype coming with him. Like, you know, he's going to bounce back from this pec injury. Day one of training camp, uh, I was, again, I was a four. He was the one. He tears his pec again. So I move up to the threes. And then an undrafted cat who was ahead of me on the depth chart, my same year rookie with me, he ends up tearing his hamstring. Uh-huh. So I got to work with the twos. So I'm getting a, a lot, lot of reps. reps. And lot of when film. those moments come, like th- that's when you got to like, you know, be prepared for your moment, be prepared for your opportunity. So I feel like that's kind of how it happened. Isn't it crazy, though, that people think you're probably just some dumbass who brings a lot of energy, who just plays football. But there's like like the Edron James story at Hall of Fame night where he was like, I'd go out with all the guys. I would drink cranberry juice. I would drive them all home. Then I'd go work out. Like people don't think about like, hey, there's a reason why people are in the NFL, even though like Taylor's an absolute, you know, beauty here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he's probably a pretty cerebral (laughs) individual when it comes to the football. I, I think the IQ of the football IQ of the NFL is not appreciated or talked about enough. I don't think personally in the entire grand scheme. No, of yeah, I mean I'd agree with you, and and you got to know what you're good at too. Like I knew like what this what people thought of me, like coaches, like limited ceiling, athletically, like, all all the bullshit that they talk. Hard about, worker right? though, hey, right. yeah, yeah. first one in, last Brian, one out, right. yeah. yeah. Launch pail guy, what? coach's son, what? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, like playing from the neck up AJ I'm sure is familiar with this obviously he was a high draft pick but he yeah. seems like a very bro he ran a 4-4 four, four four this fucking guy yeah. Yeah. Jesus right but did you, you ever know. play against him Taylor I don't believe I did AJ when did you retire uh, I was done I believe in I don't know 15, 16 I okay so I we, did a pre- we did a preseason game against them Oh, how'd you do? Uh, I didn't wasn't starting, so it was perfect. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to deal with him. But Clay Matthews gave me the business on a field goal unit, though, and that was tough. Oh, he almost blocked. Hey, Clay friend. Matthews almost blocked a punt on me in the Pro Bowl. Son of a bitch. Yes, in the Pro Bowl. Well, Nobody's was, trying. Yeah, this fucking guy. He's maximum effort. He's hey, yeah. No, hey, those guys. Don't don't the the maximum game. effort guys in the Pro Bowls can suck it though. Like I'm not trying to bring bad energy, but don't do that. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm not trying to be that guy. Like I'm trying to have fun with the boys, but Pro Bowl and you're going to be a Gordy Gohard. Get out of here. Hey, they want that MVP. They want that MVP. Yeah, they want that MVP. What's the MVP get you? It's a like Genesis? okay, every, everyone. No, knows. it's like a, it's like a little Genesis. I don't even know what makes that. Hey, Genesis, is Chrysler, his great great ordeal. Oh, yeah, halftime show. Great vehicle. Yeah, wow. Hey, I appreciate that answer out of you though. Well, I yeah, here's fucking Clay. He touched my shin, missed I'm the mad ball. You. Pissed. Say a word. Yeah, I ate breakfast with him before the game. Yeah, uh, that's first time meeting him. I thought we had a great <laughs> couple of those. <laughs> yeah, you know, and he's a pretty quiet guy. I thought we had a pretty good interaction. Sure. And as soon as the game, that's first punt. First punt, I was like, oh, I'm in the Pro Bowl. Ain't nobody trying. I can just sit back Bomb. here and fucking just bombs away. And then all of a sudden I get the ball and I see him like in my periphery. And I'm like, what the fuck? Seems like he's getting real close. And then like, I had to quick that thing out and he yeah. touches my shin. Yeah, I do a full immediate, what the fuck? And then ha-ha, he's like laughing and jogging away. <laughs> AJ's told me that he probably was just so excited to tell the story that he blocked a punt. AJ probably told him in that it would be funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that's a funny thing to think about. But yeah. you're, you're, me and you are on the same page. Like, no hey, doubt. Chill the fuck Don't out. Don't go hard. Another thing you talked about was uh, getting that punt off fast. Kind of like the, how the uh, football IQ isn't brought up enough in football. I think punters, no, it's more of an art, arts game. Enough. Being around Brett Kern, very more, good, the best punter in the NFL. Yes, I think being around Brett Kern and watching the way he does it, and uh, how he, don't do that. Well, Jake, well if I say it, it's a much bigger deal than you. So, like, yeah. if I, well, I think, why is that? Because I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I, know, yeah, I, know. I, know. I was trying, I was trying to bug you there. But, I was trying to get you going. No, but Brett, I think Brett is like if I, I don't think you can do best because situational. Like you guys are in a. That's a bad stadium to punt in, actually. It's pretty windy. Is it really? There. Yeah, that open end. Every time I played against you guys, it was terrible weather. We yeah. were talking about that beforehand. When we, there was a storm that went in there. So he, him able to do that, I think is big deal. He's a robot, and he is so fucking good. So I think like he is in the top like two, mm-hmm. but I don't want to like make a... Who's the other ones in the top two? I don't know. That's why I was literally just you got to give a, So make him a top three, so that way you have a little no, more... No, no, no. I'm not the top hey, two. Hey, what makes, what makes him the best, way? though, Pat? Like, there's different things. Can you, can yeah, you pin him out of bounds? Can you bomb it? What yeah, is, so there's so many different styles. Like, Tressway's a bomber. He just sits back there and he hits 
big balls. And it is awesome. He's incredibly athletic. Brett Kern's like, he will snipe the sideline. He'll snipe it. Him He's the best Morris, player on our team. Him and Mort. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> well, Vrabel has referred Vrabel to Brett Kern as the best too. player yeah. on our team. Yeah. Well, I was to just, Derek's face. His Madden rating's <laughs> yeah. probably highest in the entire. He's a robot. That guy's a fucking yeah, robot. He's Jake very Bailey. Good. Yeah. He's unbelievable He's as well. Unbelievable. He actually is. That's on New England Bias. He's actually unbelievable. Jack Fox cleats. actually is the best player on the line. Jack Fox is very. Yeah, there's so many. But then there's a bunch of shit. You know, yeah. and you don't find out you have the shit, I think, until like Brett Kern is done Can't or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean, like Rigoberto Sanchez, who came in after me here, he's fucking really, really good. I'll, you know, selfish reasons open. Hey, hope this guy stinks. But the guy they traded for and signed <laughs> to come in after me kind of said a little something at his press conference. He never mm. saw me do anything or whatever. I was like, oh, I'm definitely better than you. So I actually, uh, <laughs> yeah. I worked uh, uh, with Rigo a little bit, yeah. you know, but he didn't need it. He was a fucking grinder worker. He's incredible. But there's some guys that shouldn't be in the NFL that are just in the NFL, you know, lucky situations like you're saying. Lack of numbers? Yeah, like, hey, we just need a guy. Not enough soccer players retired yet? Something like that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Easy, it's not that easy, <laughs> asshole. Go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm curious, joking. what's both of you guys' relationship with Tannehill like? Because it seems like, like he's had a, a career resurgence there, but... And he got paid. He's taking you guys to the playoffs, but every single time there's like a new quarterback available, it's they're they're always saying like, "Hey, if the Titans can upgrade a quarterback, you know that could really get him over the hump." Like, it's, he doesn't really seem like a rah rah guy or anything like that. Like, what's he like in the locker room? Yeah, he's quiet. He's a leader. He's a guy that gets to the point and uh, works his ass off too. I think when it comes to the media saying if the Titans can upgrade at this, it's like at the end of the day, what are we trying to do in the media? We're trying to get clicks. Hey, come do this. Come watch this. Hey, this guy said this about Tannehill not being good enough, so let's get Aaron Rodgers. That whole type of thing. Huh? Yeah. 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 People have have mentioned that. Not going to happen. He bought land. Uh Uh-huh. He bought land. Raw Raw land. Raw Raw land. Raw 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 land. We learned from this guy, the home plate face over there. He Mm -hmm. told us it was raw land in Nashville. True. Yeah. That's so, it. It's a, know, it's a fun, know. beautiful place to live. It's outstanding. But I think when it comes to Tannehill, guys are guys love, respect, and uh, definitely have Tannehill's back all the way through. How about when he almost blew his shit out doing that finger then roll? The, oh, uh, the Buffalo game, right? He's freak athlete, though. Tannehill, freak mm-hmm. athlete. Well, he played wide receiver. receiver in college. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Forget about that because he went to Miami to be quarterback. They actually paid him. Oh, he yeah. wasn't probably anywhere near his peak. He's a first round pick, like top 15 pick, right? Or yeah. number 16 or yeah, something yeah, like so, that? Mm-hmm. Great athlete. Stud. Off the field, ping pong. Great, like anything like that. Do you guys have any of that corner? I don't hole? know. He strikes they don't me. Have that there. He strikes me as a guy that is probably good at everything, but well, they don't have a ping pong table there. No, you, I think, you, we don't. You, we don't. Yeah, you're, me. Yeah, you guys said, have one. Where? I don't know. Colts? What are we doing here? Yes, I'm talking about the Titans facility. There's no ping pong table. There's no ping pong table. You said they don't have that there. Well, I've been in a wow. place that had cornhole boards huh. and ping pong table. What Same. Do you, why do you think Vrabel doesn't have it? Well, I haven't won a Super Bowl. He doesn't yet. like to have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> 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 Vrabel's definition of fun is listening to his jokes. Got some solid jokes. That's true. Awesome. And you banter in between meetings. Yeah. You're not going to have a ping pong. You guys were eating cake the other day. That's yeah. 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 Fingers, Bloody. my boy. Three knuckles deep in there. How <laughs> different is it with me as a non player Vrabel yeah. versus being a player? I will say, when, when Will made a second stint with the Titans, there was a bit of a deal where he'd come in and every meeting he would greet Will with, What did our media market guy do today? <laughs> <laughs> what he did Taylor on Twitter. Would come in from, like, he would just be rehabbing, and everybody's like, Taylor, you got to come in and listen to Vrabel, like, get on Will for yeah. doing social media. Murder shit. him. And then they, they leave the area, and, and Vrabel's sending Will texts about how we have to go to Aspen next year to go skiing or something like that. <laughs> I was like, It's a. It's a it's a mind fuck. It's a I mind think we've, fuck, dropped a, we've dropped a lot of f bombs on this show, and I don't know how many we're allowed to have, but definitely a this, mind fuck. Then he gave me an air fryer for my wedding, and I'm like, does this guy mess with me? Yeah, are we trying to get? He's a, never bought me. <laughs> He's feeling you out, dude. I was in a uh, group chat with him and Vrabes one oh, night. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. He started burying Will. In the middle <laughs> <of the night. laughs> hey, Will's his safety net of just destroying because he knows Will come back. He said uh, he's like an abused dog. He's just kind of waddled back. He doesn't know. He doesn't know anything else. He said, "Oh, Will, call Taylor." That's what he said in the middle of the group chat. He goes, "Oh, time to cry for Taylor." It was one text. I was like, Vrabes. The other day when he was, uh, remember we were in the group chat after the uh, cake eating night? Yeah, after the And he was like, hey, Vrabel goes, uh, Will, give me the give me the four team keys in 30 seconds and I'll sign you for year 10. And he, he sent takes him. a screenshot. I'm eating breakfast, so I'm not, I wasn't getting in time, so he already sent screenshot number one and then screenshot number two saying time's up. I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm not eating. And he's like, what are you eating, Taylor's ass? Like, <laughs> 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 we just had a great night. That was, yeah. Yeah. that was a tough text to come, yeah. come look at <laughs> after putting my child have, down. Bro, this guy would have had a fucking contract, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you missed imagine, it. Imagine, imagine that was the one that he said, ah, never mind. How long before <laughs> in practice you guys are like, whoa, coach of the year? 
here fucking jagging off about that. Oh, we were killing him at the Preds game on Saturday. <laughs> that that at Nissan Stadium. Yeah, because he had that cake. He said, "Coach, yeah, he I'm bought like, it oh, himself." You're a big dog now. He loves it. No, oh, they God. bought the cake for him. He's not buying that cake. No, I don't know about that. Vrabel's definitely the guy. He's gonna have a picture of himself up there, and it's gonna say C O T Y twenty twenty one. Hey, he's saying, earned it. Hey, Vrabel's oh, yeah, earned it. Oh, yeah, he's earned it. Oh, yeah, he's earned it. Oh, yeah, right. Number one seed, ninety one players. You said it. Ninety one players. God, Let's playoffs. talk about the environment of the place where you fingered his mouth. Sure. Preds game, you become like a pseudo mascot for them. Isn't that weird? Yeah, the Penguins are much better than Preds, but yeah. I love what you mm -hmm. have brought to that. Whoa, that, that place whoa, has been whoa. awesome. Let, him, let the man speak, Will. Yeah, <laughs> say, hey, welcome to hockey, Nashville. We're the fucking shot. daddies. Okay, yeah. I hate to break it to you. I know that'll come. No, I love what Nashville has become. When <laughs> it has you a, need to change that tone quick. <laughs> no, it's real, though, because whenever they had that run, and some, there was country musicians singing drunk, off-key, mm -hmm. national anthems. Outstanding. There was entire parties on Broadway. I mean, the whole city showed up for the Preds, especially yeah. when they went on the run. And that whole thing has become incredible. It's become a great hockey town. Have you always been a hockey fan? And how did that whole relationship start, you think? Yeah, I grew up as a hockey fan a little bit. My brother played and actually uh, was drafted for juniors. Ooh, for, oh. So big hockey family. And then when I was Scott at Michigan. Scott Clapham out there, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? So we go out there. I, when I was at Michigan, too, the, I hang out with the hockey boys all the time, play poop dollar, uh, drink with the boys. Nice. I do a whole bunch of fun okay, stuff. That's a drinking house. That is a, a hockey fun, house. fun game. Yeah. But uh, so I get to the Preds. Basically, the way the whole beer chugging thing started, me kind of like putting myself in their culture, they wanted Marcus Mariota to be kind of the guy that went there, waved the towel one day. And you know, anybody who knows Marcus knows, guy does not care at all about being the center hey, of he's attention. coming to the Colts, maybe. Go ahead. Yeah. Steelers. <laughs> it sounds like everybody's coming to the Colts. Well, maybe. Oh, I think it's awesome. It's the off season, man. <laughs> so <laughs> so Mar Jackson. Marcus didn't want to do it, so they're like, all right, we'll get the O-line. You know, your boy is all about being the center of attention, so I'm stoked. And I tell the boys, hey, we're going we're gonna to get catfish, or we're going to chug it, uh, and we're going to chug beers, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, ah, I don't know if we should do it or not. A bunch of guys didn't want to you know, make a big deal of the whole thing. I was like, boys, this is our opportunity. This is our chance. I'll make the most of this. This is a big deal for us. <laughs> so I get one catfish. They don't want to do it. They're a little nervous. And I feel like I'm selling out the boys right now, but I'm really not. And they put a luge and we do the beer chug off the luge. And that was kind of kind of the rest of it. After that, everybody's I, I, all in. By the way, immediately upon yeah. the, any doubt from the boys was probably, hey, we're offensive linemen. Right. Let's not do too much. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Well, I respect him because <laughs> yeah. I was a punter. So See? So I stand out and it kind of rubs people the wrong way. You see people that maybe are punters from uh, from the past or offensive linemen from the past, and they're like, hey, buddy, you know, you should be kind of just stand in line. Not a stand in line guy. Can't do it. Can't yeah. do it. Won't be a part of it. So Shane, Why? Let, Why do you have to stand in line? I think it's uh, the old thing with offensive linemen. It's one of those deals it's where you have to be like, tradition. okay, yeah, I 100% agree. <laughs> hey, I That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's kind of like fit into your own box, be seen, not heard type of mentality. And then um, I just didn't want to do that. Tried to do it at Michigan, miserable. <laughs> Tried to do it my first year at the Titans, miserable. So I thought I'll just be myself, and things have worked out pretty okay. Yeah, pretty good. You yeah. show up as the uh, Dukes of Hazard uh, right. boss. Did you, you hear from the boss, boss Hog? Did you hear from uh, Peter? That's right. Peter about the catfish, drinking out of it. Did Peter call? No, you? I didn't hear about Who Peter. Who catches this those time? catfish? Uh, I don't not. I'm not sure. You because, ever gone fist in a fish before? No, I've never fisted a fish. I've I've thought about it. I've wanted to, but I don't know really the the process. <laughs> I've done. And then it. have you heard of snapping turtles? Obviously, you've heard of them. But yeah, they're in the same of, holes. Yeah, they're in the same hole, Ooh. or maybe like a neighbor hole. And well, you, you don't know which out. hole is which hole. It's like one's an oval. That's the snapper boy, and then the actual circle. But listen, I'm not. You great can't see shapes. it in lake water either. Yeah, I'm not a shapes guy. I don't know how that <laughs> stuff works, geometry or whatever it was. I start fisting a hole, yeah. and I get a finger bit off. It's just not a fun game to me. I've gone in there. you got to make sure there's no snapping turtles in the lake you're going. I did it in... Uh, How do you make sure? Do you just rake out the lake, or what do you do? Well, the kid that was like 17 I was with that was chewing, I don't know, he had half a tin in his oh, mouth. Nice. Vrabel. Top and bottom. Yeah, he did have a Vrabel in. Yeah. He yeah. had a Vrabel, Vrabel in. Chaw. Top and bottom in. He assured me that there was no snapping turtles. <laughs> so I knew it. I went in there. <laughs> he have all his fingers? Yeah. I didn't even check, to be honest. No. It was a quick thing. It was a quick thing. We got on the lake, and he knew where the big hole was. So there's catfish. I guess there's holes in every lake or wherever it is. And you, the reason why they attack your hand is because they think you're another catfish trying to get the hole. So you're trying to move up and move into their house. So like got the you. big hole is always going to have a big catfish in it because if a little catfish comes in there, he's going to get bullied out of there inevitably yeah. anyways. So they knew exactly where the big hole was. Hey, this is where you're going to go. We went down there. I couldn't see shit because it was a lake. So I was bent over like this for probably 45 minutes in this fucking lake. Going down, 
punching the side of a lake. I underwater. Could, mouth, yeah. mouth. The breathing areas were underwater. Yeah, yeah, under there. And then I go in there finally, and I had Fuck, a glove man. on. Did not matter because that some bitch was all the way up to here. And they just have like sandpaper in their mouths. God. You drag down. You go through the fit. You fist the fish. Then you find the gill. You lock it up. And then you, you're fighting that thing out no of its hole. No shit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Big motherfucker. But that's what you're drinking off. You're disrespecting like a dinosaur. Yeah. yeah, those things are pretty ridiculous. But yeah, if PETA comes knocking, I'll probably just ignore their call. So it's all good. Pred stink this year or are you guys good? No, I think at one point we were doing pretty awesome. Nah. Yeah, they blow it out. I don't know. It's nah. terrible. Nah. Yeah. We, just played, we just played the best team in the entire league, yeah, the, the, the Lightning. Golden Knights? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You and Pecker are boozing, yeah. It's the Bruins. You and Pecker are boozing. Yeah, that's what Pekka's outstanding. Guy's an absolute legend. Nashville legend. Very good. Roman Yossi out there. Ryan uh, Ryan Johansson. You got Philip Forsberg. The boys are primed. And here's the deal. It doesn't matter in hockey. Yeah, you guys are trading him, though. Yeah, he's out of town. He's, 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 yeah, well, hey, he's worth a lot of money. He's worth a lot of money. Yeah, you guys trying to win or not? A lot of Guess money. Come not. to the Pens, dude. Come to the Pens. No, I do that. I don't, I've never had anything against the Pens, but now I do, so don't. I don't care. I don't want <laughs> you guys I know you don't care? We're around forever. We have the greatest two players of all time. Yeah, was it Malik and uh, Crosby? Uh -huh. Let's get to a break. Exactly. Let's, Let's get to a break. We'll Let's be back. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, we got to get to a break. What? Malik? Yeah, nailed it. Mario Lemieux and Sidney Crosby? Suck it sideways. And then you're right. Number four. Number five. Four of all time? Bobby Orr? Kenny Malkin. Well, yeah, okay. Bobby Orr, I think I, I would well, agree with that. Now we're that's Boston, Wayne though. That's Boston. <clears throat> Mike he? Oh, yeah. yeah we're I'm back on sure. the other side with more with the Boston with the Boys podcast. Taylor and Will. I'm sure Vrabes is going to love this show. I don't oh, know. He's we'll going to love it, dude. We'll definitely see. <laughs> we got to give him some clips. Yeah, yeah. You got to send yeah, it to him. Yeah, don't worry. I, I, I got him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Vrabes, yeah. Vrabes talked you up on the show, man. Yeah, talked him up. Talked about him for sure. He'll love it. All right, on the other side, we'll answer some phone calls. We'll chit-chat more with the boys. We'll see if any news was broke. We'll see you in four. Cheers. It really comes down to, and, and uh, pardon my French, but uh, giving less fucks. Mm. I think that it, it's, a, it's a maturity that comes from aging, from making mistakes, from failing from being too sensitive at times, from taking things too personal at times. And it's about growth and learning uh, not to be indifferent because I think indifferent people are uh, terrified of, of, of making choices and it's a, it's a cold place to live. It, it's about choosing what to care about and the things that you do care about, it's less things. It's not trying to be a part of every conversation or, or or get involved in, in, in everything or, or uh, setting yourself up to be offended about certain things. It's, it's caring more about specific things and less things. And, and with those things, it's, it's finding ways to solve the problems because true happiness doesn't come from eliminating all problems in your life, I believe. It comes from solving the problems that you have and dealing with the pain and the suffering that, that is natural in life and is a part of life. It's not fleeing from pain and suffering and running from those things and not dealing with the emotional situations. It's looking at those head on and saying, how can I solve these problems and make my life a little bit better? And that's what I've tried to do the last couple of years. And I've talked about in the show as well. It's about perspective. And when you, I truly believe this, when you focus on the things that you have more than the things that you don't have, you allow yourself to let gratitude sink in. And when the gratitude sinks in, it, it is always accompanied by joy because you're focusing on the blessings that you have, not on the things that you don't have, the things you wish you had, the way your life, you wish your life was that much better, you wish you had this, you wish you had that. You'll always be unsatisfied. But when you take solace in the fact that you're where you're supposed to be, and that life is gonna come at you with pain and suffering and failure and frustrations and mistakes, and just trying to solve those problems and do a little bit better next time, it allows you to, I think, be a little gentler with yourself and admit that you're a human, you're gonna make mistakes, you're not going to please everybody. There's always going to be a 500-pound elephant of, of uh, you know, possibly hatred and, and malice waiting for you. Whatever decision you make, and that's just part of life. You got to deal with it and and, uh, and and just try and be better the next time. So you feel freer. It feels like, huh? You kind of feel free. Yeah, there's there's a liberation that comes from uh, caring less about the things that don't really matter in this life. I think. And, and I will say, you know, if anything, and I know the two of you. It, it, you know, the best on this show, and I, so I won't speak for the other boys, but I'm sure they're very similar. There's a lot of joy in being unapologetically yourself. And I think in life, we respect people the most often who are that way. 
who don't try and change or be different or uh, you know grow meek in situations that that require courage that go quiet in situations that, that require communication and that's what I appreciate in both your friendships is that you guys have always been yourselves and Pat I haven't known you as long as I've known AJ I said next AJ for nine years and I have so much love for him and appreciation for the friend that he is but I always admired and and was inspired by the fact that AJ was always himself and he believed uh, that who he was uh, was exactly who he was supposed to be and he didn't have to be different or put on a face for anybody he was unabashedly himself and I think there's a lot to be uh, you know a lot to be gained from from doing it that way and, and what I love about you and the boys is that's who you are you guys show up every single day not with an agenda but with an open mind and in great conversations around important topics and then you just be yourself. Welcome back <laughs> <laughs> to the Pat McAfee Show here on Tyson Fury, Bruce Arians, what? and the Boys Tuesday. Hell yeah! March 1st, 2022, Rabbit Rabbit. Today's show is brought to you by Arby's. Okay. Nice. All off season, we're running on high quality meats from Arby's. Right now, on the two for $6 menu. Okay, you hear that, you think to yourself, oh, there's gonna be shitty quality things. For sure. sure. Two for six in 2022. $6 is basically, what, 55 cents now at this sure, point. Much. This would have to be a terrible <clears throat> quality option if it's two for $6 in this world that we're currently living in. Uh-uh, not from the people at Arby's. Right now, two for six dollars, you can get the classic beef and cheddar. What? The classic fish sandwich. What? The new spicy fish sandwich. What? Four piece mott sticks. What? And more. I mean, there's a lot. They're giving wow, away wow. a lot of shit there. Two full size RB meals for six dollars daily. The best deal in the game. Go get yours today. We are back. The boys are in the studio. It's great to see you, boys. Hey, hey. here we go, boys. Here we go. Here we go, boys. AJ Hawk just cracked open a cigar. I saw an entire cloud yes. float in front of his face. AJ, your thoughts on the boys here on this show? How do you think it was going to go, and how do you think it's going thus far? Oh, it's awesome. I, I love having him there. I wish I was uh, actually in studio oh, with, with those sure, guys. So yeah, a big been. fan, obviously, yeah. of you guys. But also, the bus. Are we going to get one that's going to run eventually that you could actually drive? Yeah, talk to our sponsors about that. We need to probably bump the numbers up a little bit before we start buying buses. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the broken down so ones is the best around? we got going. Bro, we'll there has to be yeah, some uh, yeah. or oh, something. They, oh, yeah. There's a website that'll sell buses because like, there's a certain year, like from 89 to 2001, the, all those buses are like no longer in commission. So those buses you can buy for like two thousand bucks. So you, 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 I mean, you so live in the big of, side of town. Yeah. I mean, about the buses yeah. that well, they I spent like it race. on the big side of town. Oh yeah, you're you right. Know what I'm saying. Oh. Then you spend five hundred grand to revamp it, though. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, probably. Well, the big house or the grand. bus or both. The bus. I had some house too. That the old money in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you probably had to redo that. It was oh, a couple built? mil. At least. Uh, did you build that place? We built. Did you even see my place? I just expected it because you came with that big fucking hat and that uh -huh. big hat. Yeah. I yeah. just assumed, oh, this guy likes to spend the money that he has. No, well, no. I no, in proper the house, ways. The uh, house, the house, uh, probably more of an investment guy. But I, I'm, I'm a big. They're going to print more tomorrow, type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. In the stock market, Bitcoin. Stock market. I like to dive into a little commercial real estate. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Excuse hey. me. Hey, a lot of those. Uh, what are those things called? Um, the claw thing that comes cranes. down. You press a lot button. of cranes in Nashville uh, have okay. been for the last like seven, eight years. Just Wild. cranes everywhere in Nashville. Good time to be in commercial real estate in Nashville. Yeah, no, I'm not in commercial real estate in Nashville, so that's a tough deal. But yeah, it's. Uh, it's oh, no. I'm sure. If also you're good in, it, in Omaha. Yeah, you bet. Uh, yeah, any great. other Omaha? <laughs> That'd be a hey, tough Omaha. little deal. We did open up a bar in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Yeah. Called Rebel Ranch, so uh, it's a it's a nice little deal. It's definitely in Cave Creek, Arizona, small town, only place in the world you can find a a horse, a truck, and a Ferrari parked in the same spot. Wow, wow. interesting that's, spot. That sounds like quite that's a range. It's right up uh, your alley over there with that, that yeah. nice little Stetson you got in your head there. You're talking about the hammer. Dime. Cowboy, you missed that. We've yeah. done that a few times. You caught on to the what's. You caught on to the A.J. Hawk. 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 He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. It's outstanding. He's always so calm. Stop. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do it. Um, absolutely. <laughs> obviously, this is what everybody assumes you're both going to do when you retire. I'll start with you. Uh, well, you already have a bar and you're doing commercial real estate. Any other business ventures? What do you see yourself? doing when you're tired of this hanging out having a good time businessman what do you think i love busting with the boys right now 
<laughs> Are you trying to get oh, yeah. back into the game, by the way? Hey, hey. Yeah, so but what'd you say? Wait, oh, he's, <laughs> oh, he's high. Oh. Hey, that'd be a hell of a business to get into, though. That's the that's yes. CBD business. Oh, yeah. We're that's trying. That's a solid deal. Solid. I, I know a guy. Do you? I, I DM'd yeah, yeah. you about it. And you said, oh, you got the hookup? I said, yeah, I got the hookup. And I guess what I got? Nothing. Oh, I didn't answer you back. It's all right. So it <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're trying. Here you go. Oh, wait. I never, that was you. I never really look in the DMs. Legitimately. I know a lot of people say that. I legitimately don't because I don't want any, like, I just, if I don't answer anybody, it's not like I have to. <laughs> but when the whole thing went down with the deal and a lot of people were messaging me, I literally tried to message everybody back. And uh, I, I consider you an incredibly hilarious person and a person I would like to interact Gracias. with. So I think I saw maybe that I answered you, but I never go into that department so I apologize for potentially hitting some CBD and forgetting that you even made that offer <laughs> until, <laughs> until this exact moment right here but when you think about retirement well, it, you're nowhere near retirement right we still got another five no, six years you never man. know man I feel like I'm in the problem of my life I'm in the best shape of my that life baby. here we go so any GMs and coaches that watch this show because I know they do playoff Willie will be available yeah okay. absolutely so, but 10. as far as retirement like you know bust with the boys invest oh you a stock, you're a Bitcoin guy aren't you I'm not a Bitcoin guy. Matter of fact, though. NFTs? No, not yet. Oh. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. But I did hear from a very okay. close friend of mine that I trust that he's Gary playing v? long game and going heavy into the Bitcoin world. Who, Gary yeah. V? Saquon Barkley? No. Tom Brady. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Sed Roethlisberger? It might be the boy. The boy Are you Derek, saying big names? The boy. <laughs> Derek the boy uh, I'm guessing. Do they, does he have any tie to any of these people in your no, mind? No. Hey, <laughs> no. <laughs> I just thought maybe I'd hit the eventually. Boy, uh, the boy under center for Minnesota. Ryan Reynolds? Oh. oh. Ryan Reynolds. Minnesota. The Ryan actor? Reynolds is into it. Yeah. Canadian. Kirk no, Cousins. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, Bradbury? Yeah. You know Kirk Cousins name? well? He's very smart, right? Isn't he? Oh. I mean, he's like his. Yes. He's extremely smart. Michigan State have, guy. Yeah. If I die, I die. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, so and he took some heat now. But yeah. It, but yeah, he was in, we were in Washington together. So, Oh, we really what type of teammate is he? He's big on he's crypto, awesome. you're saying? He, so Kirk and I, we wanted to get, we were thinking about getting into Bitcoin back in like 2017. Oh, oh no, you missed and, it. Uh, you missed it. Same know. thing happened to me. And we, we, watched, missed it. we were watching the documentaries. We were like traveling games and kind of talking about what we just learned throughout the week and shit like that. Yes. But we never got into it. And he hit me back. We were uh, messaging yesterday, and he was like, you know, I think I'm, I just listened to a very credible person that say you need to get into Bitcoin, and you need to ho hold it for the long run. Hey, by the way, Kirk, good businessman. Great businessman. Yeah. Hey, great businessman. So much so, a lot of Vikings fans are pissed off about it right now, how yeah. good of a businessman he actually he is. He is phenomenal. He, he would sit there when they were trying to franchise, when they were franchise tagging him all those years, the... Uh, the Washington Commanders, the commies. We are commanders. Bum, 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 bum. You'll get it, dude. I didn't God, know there's we so many things. Didn't we didn't create that. We did not create that. We did not create that. All right, fair enough. But uh, Kirk was talking about how he, uh, he wanted to help change uh, the way contracts were done in the NFL for specifically, obviously, the quarterback position, but for players to kind of follow along his blueprint of getting to the market, which is a big risk in itself. But doing the fully guaranteed contracts. And uh, by the way, I thought he was going to because I'm like, oh, this is intelligent. This is what we need. It might not be the big number that we had seen in the past or right. expected in the NFLPA once or whatever. But guaranteed money in pocket is better than any incentive-based contract whenever you're talking about from an athlete's perspective. With that being said now, Taylor, I'd like to ask you about this. Okay. This Salary cap gymnastics that's going on in the NFL right now. Yeah. It's bananas. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing, hey, we'll sign a 10-year a deal with six voidable years and a big signing bonus. And next year, your salary cap hit will be $2 million. But in the whole thing, we'll give you $100 million somehow or $200 million. The way they're starting to do that. Do you recognize that in the locker room? Do you see like, oh, if we, because you guys went and got Julio. Yeah, you paid Derrick Henry, kept Tannehill. Your mm -hmm. team is making moves, trying to like, hey, let's go ahead and do this thing. Do you guys know that? Do you recognize that? And in as a person that's been around the NFL for a long time, do you think this is good for players? I think it is. I think, I think more good. money in the pockets is always good for players. I think the so. The more too. money, the better. I but think so. I think the, the salary cap is like a way for the NFL to save face maybe because if it came with salary cap, if you're getting paid $15 million and you're getting paid $20 million and they say, hey, we're uh, $5 million over the cap, hey, we'll give you $19 million signing bonus right now, lower your cap down quite a bit and then you make minimum this year, then it's no longer an issue. 
does nothing to the cap other than lower it so you make the marks you're supposed to make. Well, it kicks it. It spreads it over the entirety of the contract. Of That's the why contract. people do 10 years with like six voidable years, but right. the signing bonus is over the entire 10 years. It's yeah. a fucking... It's now, the 10-year chess- thing I don't understand because there's a lot of things. Like I know pa- Patrick Mahomes yeah. signed half a billion dollar deal and that thing's like a 10-piece, 10, 10 right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The only yeah. person I know that other, other than him that did that was the left tackle for the Cowboys. And that would seem like a bit of a tight predicament because he's such a good player for such a long time. For instance, Taysom Hill, Taysom Hill signed for four years, 160 million. Two years of that is voidable. It has a low of 16 million per year, a high of 40 million per year. Wild. So the salary cap hit is somehow one million dollars. Yeah, that's through, outstanding. Through all that, yeah, it's unbelievable yeah. how they're able to do it. But, but that changes gonna, the NFL, I think. Yeah, is he going to see that money? Is my question because I know in hockey. Mm-hmm. They kind of do the, uh, a similar thing, even though there's no real salary cap, but they have like these long, uh, ten year, hundred this million dollar contracts. Got it. So what's what? I, I what's don't know. real? What is it? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Because you can. I think that's the issue with football players that they need to be educated in is when you're going to sign a contract. It's not about the big number. It's five years, this much million dollars. It's like, hey, what are your first three years? What is the guarantee in it? And then how is how much is guaranteed at signing? That's all you really need to know. And so, I think what Kirk Cousins is trying to do is amazing, but we need more quarterbacks to do that for it to funnel down. Yeah. There's quarterbacks, then your mm. office line. Hey, they should have their own. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go ahead. The top players need to do no, that. No, I think it has, it has <laughs> to be The top players at positions. It's got to be quarterbacks Like, if, if, if I'm the best linebacker in the league. Which, who's, who's saying you're not? Well, exactly. True. Yeah. Well, A lot of people did, but you, but, they didn't deserve it. Anyway. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. But uh, if I'm, like, the highest paid linebacker in the league, like, I would, I would feel like a responsibility to set an example if that's what I'm wanting to do. Yeah. Yeah, like for you, for instance, your next deal. Fucking let's make it guaranteed yeah, yeah. Now, for the good of everybody. Yeah, I guess so. For well, sure. G. I mean, I'll, I'll die on the sword. Call, hey, call we're me, wrapping up team. this hour with the boys, man. This has been amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's been outstanding. I, you know, should have done the whole show together. Should have. It's weird. So many texts. Hey, you about that yesterday. hey, how fun <laughs> was that? <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, we're, we're meeting after the uh, pod we just we did with Mike Allstott, which was awesome. Oh, yeah. oh, but, oh, uh, yes. but he's like, hey, why are we doing the whole show? I was like, I don't know. I go, you're on the same group chat. Ask him. He goes, all right. Pulls it out, then you're like, yeah, scenes tomorrow at one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 scenes at one or whatever. It's yeah. because, you know, when you texted me, um, like, hey, is there any chance? Because I asked you, I'm like, hey, I need to get you guys to Indianapolis, right? Yeah. And then we kept in touch. And then you threw out a date, like, hey, this is a date that could work for us. I'm like, awesome, let's do it. And then I completely forgot about, like, fucking Combine Week and everything that's going on, the amount of people that we probably already had booked. And Tyson Fury's coming on it. So I apologize. But I would like to let you guys know, anytime you want to come back, we'll shut down the fucking entire show for you guys. You guys oh, deserve hey, it. Yeah. This has been awesome. Hey, the boys have been known to step on toes, so we will absolutely take you up on that. Probably a few more times. Times than you'd like. Hey, don't worry about it. You got to be that way, right? Don't no question. Life. That's I what always... we're trying to get. We're all just trying to go this way. That's well, it. That's right a weird here. way to do that. All trying to go this way. Mm-hmm. There it is. Well, I don't think you had good <laughs> self way. Hey, that was that erratic long arm that came that from Chandler me. Jones. Yeah. Got him. No, I don't. <laughs> Sorry, Tannehill. Hey, who is just the biggest, fastest, most agile guys are the guys that are hardest to block? I don't know. That's actually a good question because there's guys that are super fast and quick, but they're not very powerful. The guys that have a little bit of both are the, the most you have to worry about because you can be a little more nimble on the quick guys and the big guys, you can be a little more heavy footed. Chandler right. Jones is a good example of having both of those things. Were you, you were going to ask or something? Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys going to meet with a bunch of GMs and head coaches like Schrager was? No, no, we drive back straight. tonight, man. Hey, we're, AJ, we're dipping back to Nashville. Here, man. <laughs> hey, by the Wait, where did you, you talked to All Stop back in Nashville, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, when does that come out? I want to see that. That'll be uh, tomorrow. Not- tomorrow's Ryan Whitney. Yeah, Spin I'll go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Favorite player of all time. All style will be next week. The following yes. week. Awesome. All right. What day is that? Wednesday. Wednesdays at six a.m. Audio drop, and now twelve o'clock on the YouTube. Smart. Here we Smart. go. Big deal. Nice plug. Nice plug. Well, boys. thank you. Smart. I think you could even go earlier on that YouTube video drop. What do you think? I don't know. People get to their desk at like nine. Maybe That's ten. Well, I'm saying we go live and no, I can't watch it, you know. But you put that thing up, like that is literally selfish reasons only. Like whenever uh, you put stuff <laughs> up, like I would like to be able to watch it before we go live, you yeah. know, just because oh, I think you guys gotcha. do pluck shit for people. Yeah. We got this the is audio. very selfish of me to say, like, hey, maybe before noon, maybe <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> this, is, this is just me doing that. I'd like to let you know that. But I expect that. Nonetheless, love what you guys do. You guys crush it. I'm a big fan, as we all are. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you stopping by, and you're the best, ladies and gentlemen. You, the Bussing with the Boys podcast, Taylor Luan and Will Comte. Hey! Hey, Jay Hawk! Hey, Jay Hawk! Hey, Jay Hawk!
AJ Hawk! AJ, AJ Hawk! Hawk. Uh, that man, myself, and all the boys will be back on the other side with Bruce Arians. We can't thank you guys enough. We'll see you in about three minutes. Cheers. Elvin Machine. 310J, dude? Oh, top of the line. That's the one they were singing about being sexy. That's right, yeah. The 310J, when somebody saw it, they like, that's sexy, and then he was like, the country yeah, music, you're right, right, it is. She thinks my character's <laughs> sexy. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell Holy yeah, shit. dude. Hey, that's got a good cockpit in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of looks like the Pope Mobile with all the glass around the top there, but it ain't no Pope Mobile because this one's fucking breaking. Grind. Hell yeah. Party in the front, business in the back, am I right? Well, I do believe we got business, business all on both sides. ends. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the plot down there in the front is, although a good time. It uh-huh. is a good time to get that oh, thing yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Fun. Business is being handled. Dude. Oh, oh yeah. Getting plod. And then on the back, on the back <laughs> side, on the back side, you know, whenever you start cracking earth. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh my you god. You need the excavator back there, the big dog. And you know the thing about the seat on this 310J, it turns. Yeah. yeah. It so it's always in the front. You know, whatever you're working on, business can be on the front, both sides. That's right. Mm-hmm. Controls all around. We worried about those front tires? No, no not at that's all. How they roll. No, that's no, they, they survive anything. Those are standard deer backhoe tires. Look at the back so tires, like you, Foxy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Foxy. I'm just asking questions. Foxy, it ain't about the front wheels. It's always about the back. That's right. right. All right, because these rear wheel powered vehicles that you mm-hmm. would never understand. Yeah, you don't know really? anything about that, Foxy. You have no idea. I would not know. We got I got friends that know. I don't know. Listen, when you're drifting gears, okay, on a rear wheel, oh. especially for 600 some ponies, what? Yeah. you got to watch for like any, you know, plot holes or debris. Of course. Because you can and then hit a tree because mm-hmm. <laughs> the back end kicks out. <laughs> and then you won't drive that car ever again because how are you not supposed to drift it? And I guess, how are you not supposed to hit a tree? Another tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's my life. Doesn't have to be yours, though. Thank you, Andrew, for calling from the 310J. That's a beautiful piece of machinery. It is. Gorgeous. Take that thing another round. Oh, wow. look at that oh, thing yeah. prop itself up. Lift yeah. Kit. That's why the wheels don't matter in the front, pal. Yeah. <laughs> <Go lift. laughs> McAfee show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show on this gorgeous Tyson Fury, The Boys, and in a few moments, Bruce Arians, Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, Hour 3 starts now. Yeah! I uh, can't thank you enough for joining us here at YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. I'm Megan in the attic in Ohio, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, AJ Hawk is here. Yeah. Baby AJ. Oh, baby AJ. The boys here at Toxic Table and Hammer. I want to have the Hammer Down Cowboys. Tony Diggs is here. A lot of things have been happening at the combine while we were chatting with the boys. A lot of quotes coming out. A lot of coaches and GMs speaking. Coach General Manager Chris Ballard on Carson Wentz's future with Indy. I don't have the direct answer for you. We're working through it. Ultimately, we'll do what's best for the Colts, says Field Yates in a tweet. With that being said, there was three dots in between the ultimately we'll do what's best for the Colts. I don't know what he said in there. Right, We didn't mm-hmm. get a chance to hear the entire quote, but we're going to do what's best for the Colts is obviously nothing bad. Maybe Carson comes back. He's playing catch with Pittman and... Um, 
Patton. Pittman and Patton out on a field in some warm weather climate, obviously. Palm tree in the back. Uh, love that. The future, though, sounds like the Colts are moving on, but Chris Ballard didn't say that directly today at the press conference. Yeah, he also said that he met with Wentz this morning, which was interesting. Then he cut him. What if, I mean, if they just restructure his contract, maybe? Well, I don't. I have no, maybe. Probably just telling them where they're at, like what they're thinking, what they're planning on doing. Yeah, I, how would he say it? Because he's got that draw. I, <laughs> yeah. I chatted with Carson this morning about where we stand, and he knows exactly. I've been straight up. Hey, I've been straight up with him since day <laughs> one in this entire thing. And Car- this ain't Carson. Carson, like Ballard is one of those guys who will tell you exactly how he feels. Yeah. He did a two-hour press conference, I think, after the season mm-hmm. this year, where it was almost like a therapy session for him, where he was like, thank you for fucking asking that. With that being said, we did mess that up. He, he, will, <laughs> yeah. he will even, like, admit – he is a very open whenever he interviews. It's awesome. Yeah. I think it's great when someone admits fault. Like, that – we wish other people in high places would admit when they make mistakes. And just be open, too, about everything. Because then if you're open about everything, especially in the world that we're in, there's no blindsiding that can potentially take place. You're kind of setting the expectation of how you feel at all times. That's a lot harder to do than it is to say, though. I mean, yeah. those uncomfortable conversations are not fun. Nobody's life is great after you had to go, hey, like you stunk, right? Like, we're going to have to move on. Like, that's an interesting conversation you're going to have to have. But to have transparency in, in Carson didn't stink, by the way. Well, well didn't time. make the playoffs. There was moments. There was obviously moments. But there was moments of great football as well, which mm-hmm. I assume Ballard said. Like, hey, there were some great moments. There were some other moments. We, don't, we have a team that we think we built around you, especially Ballard. Probably takes a lot of pride in the team that he has built. Uh, if Andrew Luck doesn't retire nine days before the season starts, I'm sure Chris Ballard is still wondering about that every once in a while. Like, yeah. God damn, we got an entire offensive line. We got an MVP running back. Mm-hmm. We got a whole defense out here. Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton were a tag team that was basically unstoppable. We can add a couple more weapons. I, I, Chris Ballard can't do that while he's still working. But I would assume when this is all said and done, he will look back on that and go, God damn, we had it. Hey, we had it. I thought we had it. We had Andrew Luck and then... Mm-hmm. Nine days before season, he said he can't play anymore. Right? Like, <laughs> we had Trey Jacoby for seven, and we got caught in this situation. Tom Brady was available, allegedly. Then we signed Phillip Rivers because our coach was with him for so many years. And it, was, it was just an interesting situation because he built a roster. Seven Pro Bowlers. This roster yeah. is ready to go. So the fact that Chris Ballard is almost uncomfortable at this press conference is interesting. You know, Not uncomfortable, but it's not like all flowers and roses, oh. mm-hmm. you know, because the team, in his eyes, is probably that we're pretty good. There's a lot still to figure out, and Carson Wentz is the big part of it. Right. I mean, I would assume they, they would talk about how they've underachieved this past season. And that has to be hard because he's built a great roster. He's drafted very, very well. And then they bring in Carson. And now what do you do, though? If you do move on from Carson, what's the answer? Who do you bring in? Who's your guy? Well, you bring in Aaron Rodgers yeah. or Marcus Mariota. Why? 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 Jimmy G. Mr. Bisky. Mitch Trubisky. Mitch. Maserati Mitch. I heard Mitch is getting a lot of, a lot of looks. Oh, like people really want Mitch. Hey, look, bring up that tweet that has their stats. No, bring up the tweet that has their stats. I think it's um, it's Kyler, Baker, Mitchell Trubisky. Never give a pick And six. Derek Carr. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, I don't know about that stat, if that's on there. Through th- this is on NFL's Reddit, by the way. Shout out to NFL Reddit. Um, through the first three seasons, Derek Carr is 22 and 25. He threw, I think this is their first three seasons. Kyler Murray, 22, 23, and 21. Baker Mayfield, 23 and 22. Mitchell Trubisky, 23 and 18. Damn. Wow. Miss you, Mitch. Now, granted, they Lovely had a kids. great defense, right? That defense was yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they made that playoff run, and then it all kind of went to shit. And allegedly, he did not get along with Nagy, or Nagy didn't get along with yeah. him, or something happened like that, which is possible. But Mitchell Trubisky is very high on a lot of people's wish list right now that are quarterback needed, uh, mostly because uh, this draft class is allegedly not – loaded with quarterbacks joining us now is a coach a super bowl winning head coach of the nfl super bowl winning assistant coach in the nfl a man who's been around the game forever has changed the game influenced the game and now the current head coach for the tampa bay buccaneers ladies and gentlemen the quarterback whisperer bruce Arians. Yeah! Yeah! what's up dude What's up, brother? 
How are you, man? I just I didn't get a chance to hear your press conference, but I got to read through it. You're making a lot of waves right now. You're the quarterback whisperer. Let's dive right into it. Allegedly, this draft class doesn't have as many quarterbacks, and the veteran free agents now are, are potential trade targets. Are you in any of that? What is your mindset? Obviously, everybody wants to ask you about Tom. We'll get to that. But with your team right now, what are you looking for, and do you view this draft class as a down year for quarterbacks whenever you potentially need one? Yeah, I think for, for what we like to do, it's, it's a very slim class. A lot of good athletes. Uh, there's there's one pro-style guy that, that could fit. Uh, but we drafted a kid last year in the second round who I loved. And uh, he's a big, strong guy that kind of plays quarterback the way we like to play it. And uh, so, yeah, this, this draft class isn't like it was a few years ago. Um, but other than that, you know, you got to do your due diligence, brother. You got to get a vet this year. You got to trade, so you got to have a partner. You can't just say, "Give me a damn guy," you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, they they got to want something, and right now they want a lot. Hey, coach, the people like to make a lot of uh, a lot of noise about hand size when it comes to quarterbacks. I know they're saying today we get to see Kenny Pickett's hand size. Is it something that you care about as much as they make it a big deal? No, not especially where he played. I mean, he played in Pittsburgh. It's cold, as snow, it's raining, and. Uh, he he wears two gloves for a reason, and uh, you know, Kurt Warner did it. I mean, it's that's that's nothing for me, man. That's uh, that guy can sling it. Hey, you've been around so many quarterbacks. Obviously, now at this point, you've hit them all basically that are on the Mount Rushmore of the modern football era. Uh, but when you think about Peyton, and now you got a chance to work with Tom, what do you think makes those guys? Like, what made Tom obviously the goat, and now six to seven times Super Bowl champion. What do you think made Tom after getting a chance to see him in person versus maybe perspective from outside with your depth, deep knowledge of quarterbacking? Yeah, preparation and just flat competitive spirit. The, you know, refuse to lose. Uh, you were with Peyton. You saw how he prepared, man. And you saw him in the huddle. You saw him on the sideline. We're not losing this fucking game. All right? Tom's the same way. All right? We're winning. I don't give a shit what you got to do. We're winning. And, uh, and I'm going to take you there. And guys follow. I mean, they follow because he is super prepared and he's super highly competitive. How important is that, that quarterback position? I feel like that doesn't get talked about enough. Like, you got to be an alpha, I think. Don't you, B.A.? There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, I, don't, I haven't met one yet. You say, oh, I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> but, uh, no, dude, you gotta, you got to be an alpha and, and you got to run the show. you got to run the locker room. Um, because if you don't, somebody's running over you. Yeah. Did, his, uh, did Tom's retirement take you by surprise? A little, you know. I I had it in my back of my mind that he that he could, but every every week I'd say, "How you feeling?" Physically, he was great, you know. He's playing lights out, so I I thought for sure he'd play again. But in a in the back of my mind, I knew there was a chance. And then, you know, when I talked to him long term uh, on the decision, you understand why. Now, there's quotes, obviously, coming out that you would welcome Tom Brady back whenever, right? And I think a lot of coaches would. And then they said, would you agree to let him go somewhere else? In that question, I didn't get to hear the entire thing. But were they saying in the short term, long term, or in your eyes, the same exact thing doesn't matter? Like, if in five years when he's 50, if he wants to come back and play, like, do you think that's, you know, because you'll probably still be fucking coaching by then. But is that what did you mean by that quote? And uh, do you think there is a chance he comes back? If he comes back, I, I don't think so because of the reasons he retired. Uh, but uh, if he does, he's going to be playing for us. Hey, you got a lot. Hey, that roster now, Bruce, last year I follow along on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Instagram. And they took a screenshot because Mike Greenberg down there and the GM and you guys were able to cook and bring everybody back. All 22 starters are back. Now this season, looking ahead, you guys got like four starters, I think. There's a long road. Are you, like, what is your mindset for that? Because everybody just assumed that if that was going to be the case, that B.A. would not want to stick around. Like, are you enjoying this entire mindset that your roster is basically going to be, it's going to be very new next year, right? Is that kind of the, the thought here? You know, I love this part of it. I love building a team, putting a new challenge together. Uh, that's that's the big fun of it. Obviously, it's a hell of a lot more fun when you got Peyton or Tom. But, uh, you know, I, but I like the guys we have, and... Uh, Hopefully we'll get back the core guys. We're not going to get them all back this year, but we're going to get the core back because they all love it. And, uh, and and we know how to take care of veteran guys. You know, they, they we'll get them ready to play on Sunday. So those guys know it. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, that's big for recruiting. I mean, there's allegedly a place 
you know, that wouldn't pay their coaches, the bonus checks for the playoffs, and there's other places that, you know, there's some desirable places that vets know, like, hey, if we go there, they'll take care of us, they understand what the role is. When you're putting together that stable, that farm of goats, basically, I mean, you had Indomic and Sue down there, mm -hmm. you had Tom down there, you brought in, obviously, all the weapons, and you had your crew there still. How, does that change your mentality at all? Were you excited for that? Did you have to handle it any differently than you had in the past? Like, wh what was that transition like? Yeah, I was I was disappointed, Tom. I mean, that, that Todd and Byron didn't get head coaching jobs. I really was. I thought they both deserved it. Uh, the selfish part of me is they're back, so I don't have to I don't have to coach as hard. Uh, but the players, man, the players know in the league. The players in the league know we're going to take care of them. If you're a veteran player. You're going to get to the game on Sunday healthy and ready to roll. And uh, so that part's been easy. Sunshine and, and no taxes, brother. It's easy to recruit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the five-star players, role players, you are one of the best speakers I've ever heard. There was a erroneous report that came out, and I think it has been proven false. And by the way, AQ, you know, is my guy. If he's leaking information to other people and not me, I'm going to fucking cut him out of my goddamn circle <laughs> as well there. But uh, his name was linked to it, which is bullshit, I think, just in general. Uh, but that entire report about, you know, there may be being some friction between you and Tom. And then what you said today about if he comes back, he's playing for you guys. Is there anything that people from outside looking in should think of that? Or is it all bullshit, basically? Just sta standard bullshit. Standard bullshit. I mean, I'm still I'm still pissed that AQ got stuck in that because he had nothing to do with that. Me too. Know? And uh, I know where Richie's coming from. I mean, he he just made up some shit. <laughs> it clicks, brother. Yeah. Well, it's a wild world, and we're in it, and we try not to be like that. But everything that people say on this show does cause some ripple effects. So we appreciate you stopping by, especially on this day. And we know the, you know, there's there's pending litigation, I believe, between you and Antonio Brown, or Antonio Brown and the Buccaneers and that whole situation. As a player, were you surprised with how fucking good he was whenever he came back after that thing on the field? Let's not talk about everything off the field. On the field, though, as a football player, were you surprised that Antonio Brown was still playing at the level that he was playing when he came to the Buccaneers after a year away and everything like that? Not at all. Not at all. No one, no one, Antonio. Nobody works any harder than him. He's always in great shape. Skill set's unbelievable. Uh, he's one of those guys that doesn't age. He's whenever you you at the beginning said I don't want to bring Antonio Brown into this team. Been there, done that. He comes. You guys have great success, and he becomes a focal point of your team. Is that something you have to consciously think about as you continue to roll through that whole thing, or are you just so invested in the moment? Whatever makes our team win this weekend, let's win this weekend. Yeah, it's, it's all about winning, brother, and, uh, you know, what, what's best for our team. Uh, he was a great fit because Mike was hurt, Chris was hurt, AB came in, they got healthy, and we were lights out. Um, this year, everybody got hurt again, he got hurt, so it was one, It was just one of those things. It was, I was sad the way it happened, uh, but it happened. You think there's a chance later in uh, life everybody comes back full circle? I hope so. I hope so, too, by the way. Just looking outside in, you guys created magic together. Go ahead, Tom. Bruce, is there a chance in five years that you're inducting Ben and Tom into the Hall of Fame same year? Man, I hope so. That would be one hell of a party. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about Ben and his legacy and him retiring, and obviously you and him were tight, but that lap at Pittsburgh, I think everybody has seen it after that Monday night football game, or I think it was Monday night whenever he just mm -hmm. did a lap afterwards. What was it like coaching Ben? And when you saw him retire, was that a surprise to you? Because we all didn't know. We just assumed Ben's going to come back, sling the rock another year. He's going to do his whole thing. Was that a surprise to you, like the Tom one was potentially? No, it, it really wasn't. I had a tear in my eye watching that lap, man. Because uh, we had some great times. He's like a, a son to me. You know, we still have houses down to the lake. We still play golf. And uh, our families are really tight. I hate I missed his 40th birthday party the other night, but my grandson's third trumped it. <laughs> <laughs> How's the Achilles? It's struggling, brother. It's walking around Indy right now. It, uh, I got about 15% of it left. And uh, I can hit a golf ball. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Is it left or right? Right. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you can't, the left would have been a problem, I think, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, you still drowning clubs if they deserve it? Yeah, they get a taste of the water every now and then, brother. You gotta live. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? 
<laughs> this club, I, the first time I saw him play, he was on another fairway. It was right next to it. And uh, beautiful swing, obviously. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful swing. And then something, I think he got on green, but not close enough. And he literally just turned right to the nearest lake and just drowned it and then just walked away like it was nothing. And I saw, I think we caught up to you like a couple holes later. I was with AQ and I was like, hey, I just got to ask, like, I saw you just like casually just fucking <laughs> see you later. That club didn't deserve to hit a ball again. <laughs> like, that's what you said. Something like that. It was fucking unbelievable. Gotta be the arrow. It can't be the Indian. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Blame somebody else. Go ahead, Ty. Coach, you talk about doing due diligence, and obviously you're here at the Combine. Is there, like, how losing Brady, how much of a percentage, I mean, I don't even know if you could put it on it, but, like, how much does that affect your preparation going into this season? Is it kind of, it, it's trickled down and it's everything that you have to kind of readjust compared to last year when you knew he was coming back? Oh, yeah, totally, totally. And, uh, you know, with Ali Marpet retiring this week, um, both those guys were huge all-pro players. And you can't replace the player, but uh, you can do your best to get the best, next best option. And that's what we're trying to do now. Hey, I know you're a shit talker, like known shit talker. Whenever you have these meetings with these guys uh, down at the Combine, uh, is there anything – do you take more from those meetings and how do you conduct them with guys to find out if they're going to be a good fit in your culture or not? Yeah, you know, the shock questions, they kind of limit what you can ask anymore. And uh, I kind of sit back in the corner and let everybody else do their thing. And then if, if, I, if I know a guy's bullshitting me, I'll try to, get, I'll try to hit him with a brick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, good luck with that. We appreciate you stopping by. Good luck to your Achilles. Good luck to all the clubs in your bag. And good luck rebuilding that team down there in Tampa Bay, boss. Thanks, brother. Always you. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl champion head coach of the NFL, Bruce Arians. Yay! I mean, he, he's – if Tom comes back, he's going to be playing with us. Yeah. <laughs> Better be. And I was reading a couple more while I think Ty was asking him a question. I was going through my phone reading some more. He said it was bad business. I wish I could have followed up on that. But I'm sure he's just saying, yeah, we signed a deal. He comes back. Yeah. He's playing here. I ain't mm -hmm. doing the – the Gronkowski in New England thing. Oh, where yeah. Where he's retired, and then we get him for a fourth rounder, and all of a sudden this guy's scoring two touchdowns in the Super Bowl. And actually, I, we ain't doing that. No, that's interesting. There's also a report from a uh, local Tampa or Bucks um, account that said Godwin's going to be signing back there, but I didn't I didn't know if that was putting on him spot there, if asking him, like, hey, is, is Godwin signing back? No, fuck. Godwin needs to come to Indy. No, he's coming to New England. <laughs> Remember? No. We talked about this. Green Bay, I yeah, heard from Dano Watson in Green Bay. No, remember, we're getting it. Orlovsky tweeted that Mitchell Trubisky should be a starter in the NFL. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm I don't up. need to hear any more. I'm warming up on that idea. All right, Steelers, you guys are getting Carson Wentz, dude. You're, yeah. You're, Chris no, Ballard no, no. said none of the draft capital that we spent on Carson Wentz will be any type of indication on what we do in the future. That's awesome. I mean, Chris Brown, I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Mercy, you see Jim Mercy cutting? Yep. Jim Mercy's cutting promos in front of 767. Yeah. Brother, we got to get back on top. <laughs> he's saying in front of a plane yeah. with his dog Drake. Mm -hmm. He's doing performances in Austin, Texas, in Washington, D.C. You think that guy is happy that that team <laughs> no. lost to Clonton in Jacksonville and is not in the playoff? No way. Brother, we got to, hey. Yeah. Uh, every time I do one of these performances, there's a QA and a afterward. <laughs> they don't ask me about, you know, like, the song the that I just yeah. fucking crushed. They ask me, like, what is going on with the Colts? We lost in Clown Town parts. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he is getting antsy. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And that's like every Chris Ballard answer that Chris Ballard uh -huh. has given kind of more and more leads you to think like, oh, okay, Ursay is thinking. Okay, because Ballard probably wants it as well. But if we learn anything from Chuck Pagano coming on the show, Ursay is a part of. Sure. All right. What the fuck happened? Mm -hmm. I've heard that watching games in his suite is electrifying. Oh. Every play, it's live or die. Really? Every single. Ah! Imagine how annoyed he gets when people try to talk to him throughout like the game when he's trying to watch. I know at least myself, if I'm trying to watch my kids or somebody else you know and someone's just right in your face the whole time, it's tough. So I don't, I don't want to say this publicly because I think it's, uh, you know, I don't want to bury anybody. I hate watching games with people. I'm mm -hmm. with you. I hate it. I, I just can't. What I'm trying to find out, and I, I don't mind hearing what the people are saying because I think they're giving us information from conversations that they're allowed to have that we aren't allowed to have, and you got to kind of pick through their bullshit. That's why old buddy that does a full podcast on every show, 
Archuleta. Yeah, yeah. right. He's actually, you got to kind of pick through his homegrown stories and like find out what he was told and what he wasn't told. You can learn through that. So I enjoy watching alone. There's people that love like being in a, you know, a big room, big group. Like, ah. Yeah, I got a bar. If Can't I was younger, I, I guess it. now I'm too old, huh? I'm too old. Bro. No, I don't know because I hate it now too. I'm, what, 26? Yeah, you're kind of old too, dude. Yeah, kind of old. Look but at even, you, man. That mullet is healthy. Even when, oh, there thank you, thank yeah. you. Even there when is. I was, you know, when the Pats were playing against Atlanta, it was like I just need to sit in a room and watch this. I don't want to watch it with other fans. How about being at a game? Those are good times. Seat Geek, shout sure. out. Shout, shout out. out. Thank you, Seat Geek. When was the last time we went to a game? Thursday Night Football. That's yeah. right. Jets. 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 We'll see if it's a work. Fucking Pitt. Nash, national Champions. We weren't really at a game. Oh, yeah. Fuck, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two very ridiculous situations. AJ only cared about the bands, but. That was cool, though, too. This band would get fucking. No. A lot of team speed out there for that national championship game we were watching. What you say? The Bedottle would kill this. To Biddle. To Biddle. To Biddle. I thought it was the best damn. Yeah. What's, yeah. yeah. The, the, on the, the planet? In the The land. best damn band in the land. Not on the land. Biddle. I mean, they are on the land. Yeah. yeah. Technically. They should think about being to Bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, who am I? Because they're not in the land. Well, Let's run it by him. It's, it's, Ohio. it's Ohio. It's Ohio. Yeah. It's Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Ohio. Well, I assume they were on the cruise, so. Were they? Not on land there. A lot of the alumni band was on the cruise, actually. A lot of the, some of the people that came to the house. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys talk about that? Bobby did on stage. Oh, nice. Because right. they were the best damn band in the driveway. Mm -hmm. to, 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 yes, they were. They yeah. definitely were that day, especially when it was, what, eight degrees and windy and snowy and sleeting. Yeah, they were very good. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It wasn't snowing. And they were just getting back from the Fiesta Bowl or the Rose Bowl. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were tired. They were tired and cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's quite a shock. I think I went into uh, shock after uh, I got back to Indiana from um, oh. L.A., I think, that morning. Yeah. I had shorts on oh. and I had a tank. Oh, oh dude, my it was God. so cold when we got off. So yeah. I, my body started shaking. I'm like, oh, I got soft one week being around all the people pooping in L.A. with the good weather. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable. Let's happen. get to a break. 25 minutes, an hour, three At least the poop years. freezes if you're back in cold weather. True. It doesn't so smush much. on your shoes. True. You're right. You can kick it mm -hmm. instead of having to uh, deal with the plastic thing pick it up and throw it if you are just quick question i haven't lived in a neighborhood a long time my dog poops on road yeah i gotta pick up i think so. i think so i think so too you know, i did by the or way. at least kick it down the sewer or something i seen other dogs poop on road i'll see yeah nobody you don't want, the, you don't want that on up. your tire speaking of dog valerie um is much more alert this morning uh she's been on medicine she did spend another night in the hospital she got another test done Today, to kind of figure out exactly what it was, we were told no cancer. Hey, yeah, man. good news. So Ooh. it feels like she just had an infection she's going through. Um, and that's very, I mean, it was, uh, I swallowed like three different cries yesterday during the mm -hmm. show. That was one of the hardest. I love that dog. And I think it, uh, life has been put into perspective for everybody on earth with what's going on in the world. And then that was another piece on top of it. Like, hey, let's try to enjoy every moment that we have. Uh, we're back in four minutes with some five-hour energy phone line phone calls. AJ. Ooh. All right. Yeah, they have all their original flavors and some new ones, don't they? Yeah, they do. Go to 5 .com, Use promo code McAfee. You'll get 10% off your order. That's the number five, full hour energy Dot com. That's a great deal. Mm. Promo code McAfee, 10% off all your orders. They have all the great flavors that, you know, span from watermelon and tropical burst to cherry, peach, mango, and more. Wow. Whoa. That's right. And they're always delicious. And they'll get you right to B when you're at A. Mm -hmm. yeah. B being hope. I feel a little bit alive. I feel a little bit more alert with no psycho drops. Nope. Right. Which is great because that I've learned that's why I don't drink some coffees and other things. Yeah. Like, sure. Uh, some energy drinks give me a massive fall. I, I ain't about that. My body ain't about no. that. I, feel, I get super tired and I stink. So I got to stay away from that. Five Hour Energy helps me. Thank you, Five Hour. Thank, Thank you, Five Hour. We're five back in four minutes with calls on that phone line and probably some more breaking news out of the Combine press conferences. We'll see you then. Do now that football's over. This guy doesn't get us. What are you talking about? What? Are you kidding me? We got fucking Morgan State and Norfolk State on right now. Who cares about that? Let me tell you something. Tell okay? me. So we found out a long time ago, okay? Okay. You win $50 on football? Yeah. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, it's right on the bottom, it's over. Guess what? That same $50. You can win on Morgan State versus Norfolk State. 
It all pays the same. What? Connor, they're right. $50 one in college basketball is the same as $50 one in pro football. We're back! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Steven in Nashville enough. What's going on, Steven? Hey, hello. Pat, you guys can hear me? This is the worst call we've ever had, Stephen. Oh my God. <laughs> so mean. Stephen. Hello? Stephen. Yeah. The worst call we've ever had. So much dead air there. <laughs> Yo, Pat, can you hear me? Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> Hello? Know what you say? I was going to hit him again. What? Yo, Pat. No, Pat? Pat? Hey, Pat, can you hear me? Stephen does not deserve this. <laughs> Steven, what's going on, dude? How's it going on, Steven? Sorry, your phone would shut. Yo. Pat McAfee, can you hear me? Steven! Steven, you there? Pat, can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> Is there a cup of string? Steven! Yo, Pat! Pat, can you hear me? Steve? Hello? Steve! Pat! Hey, there you are. Hey, Hello? what's going on, Steve? Hey, Steven, sorry about that. I think we're having connection issues. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry, man. I didn't know if that was me or if you were trying to talk to another guy. And then, and then I didn't hear you guys. Steve! Yeah. Hello? Oh, we lost him again, I think. Shit. Pat! Can you? No, I don't. Pat, can Steve. you hear me? Steve, 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 hey, Steve, there you are, Steve. Pat! Steve! Pat. Hey! Pat! McMahon in studio Thursday. Oh, hell yeah. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Oh yeah. Live in studio. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, the WWE chairman. Can't wait to chat with him, dude. Excited. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Austin yeah. Theory talks some shit last night all night. Yeah, what was yeah. that about? I guess I hate that guy now. What's that all about? Uh, Mike What'd he say? Ah, uh, you said something about like, what if we jump Vince McMahon or do something? And I think that's potentially because the internet was going bananas mm -hmm. about what my life is doing. So I think they kind of made it. But anyways, Austin said, you know, I could come protect you. Austin's a little protege. I don't know if you know. He's a little, he's a little oh. protege. Hey. Yo, up, yeah, yeah. Big Jacked. son of a bitch. You know, young, very handsome. Is he part of the program you're running with Vince McMahon? Oh, <laughs> Ask the internet. I guess the internet would be the right... The right place to ask that question. And by the way, Aaron Rodgers is supposed to come on this show today. That's the internet told me that as well. How come he's not on the goddamn show, AJ? That's a great question. I don't know. Where is he? Have you have you spoken with him? No, have you? I have not. No. Bullshit. Yeah. Have you spoken to Vincent Kennedy McMahon? Is he going to come in here and fight me on? Wow. That would be. I hope he does. I hope he Could pulls an Adam Cole. Could you imagine Vince walks in here and just punches me in the face? That'd be wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that clip, like. Flips Dude, your desk over, so punches a hole bitch. in like the TV screens. That'd be awesome. Oh my god, that's what the internet's saying basically. I'm like, oh, awesome. My life has now become 
a bunch of that. Well, why isn't Aaron on the show today? What's Good the deal? Question. You didn't text him? I mean, it's the offseason. He's normally not here on Tuesdays. Well, the news is coming out that Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers are currently negotiating a short-term contract <laughs> if he is to decide to come back to Green Bay. Mm. That's good news. That's big-time news because that probably means, you know, that if they're negotiating, they're at least taking the initial steps, right? Right, right. That's the first step of getting a contract done. Now, you would assume that they would have already had something prepared for that conversation from Green Bay side. Is it a little bit different than what Aaron's thinking? Because, you know, I was also told by the internet, I think, that Aaron is commanding, demanding uh, at least whatever before any of the other conversation about having say or respect or appreciation or right, his right. voice heard or anything right, like right. that. No, it's about the money is what he's. That's what the internet told me. Which, by the way, he might get paid. He deserves to get paid. He's worth whatever he gets paid. But I don't think that's what he's looking for. This is good news, right? I think for Packers fans, AJ, don't you think? Yeah, how, I feel like all of this stuff is stuff that we've heard trickle out is adding up to it. It's getting better and better and giving you a better chance of him going back there. But also, like, are we just, are we, you know, our, our hopes are going to be just shattered if we're oh. all of a sudden thinking, okay, this is looking like Green Bay now. Oh. All of a sudden, if he doesn't go, oh. if he does demand a trade, first off, that would take a while, I would imagine, oh. to try to facilitate a trade if that is the case. But so I this hope is, people don't get their hopes up and get them cru you know, crushed. So that would be the opposite of a Hallmark movie, right? Because mm -hmm. normally your hopes are just getting crushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, I've watched Hallmark movie. Of course. Okay, I've watched Hallmark movie. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of get it. Like, hopes. Crushed. Yeah. That's right. For that long, too. Yep. And then, bang! How you doing? Keep moving. We did, we did it. it. Awesome triumph. Yeah. Yeah. Good I mean, I, I seen Hallmark movie. I felt so good. This would be the opposite, is what AJ said. Yeah. Well, I mean, said? it's a little late for that. I think everyone who's at Packers fans' hopes are sky high that he's going to come back. So oh, if really? he does, oh yeah, What's for that sure. All about? For sure. Well, I, it is also interesting because we were talking about their cap situation, a short term deal. I think everyone kind of assumed that. Hey, if they are going to re-sign him, it's going to be you know one of these kick the can down the road contracts so that they can basically, you know, they, they got. I mean, that's the one thing they're waiting to do to kind of can reduce pull, that cap number. Can we again. pull the salary cap? They're already over, so everybody's saying they're doing all these things to make room for Aaron Rodgers, sure, and also any other player. Like they were mm -hmm. forty-eight million over, now they're twenty-eight million mm -hmm. over. Bakhtiari took a signing bonus. Aaron Jones took a signing bonus. Kenny Clark took a signing bonus instead of their salary cap. I assume they're reconfiguring a lot of people's contracts over there with the salary cap gymnastics that happen in this world. But yeah, if it's a short-term deal, you would just naturally assume, oh, it's not going to be what, what the internet said. Which that would be mind blowing. Yeah, what? That would be crazy. If that was the case, if it wasn't what the internet was saying, AJ. What do you mean? What are they saying? Well, there, you would think with 20, I don't know if it's 28 or 29 million. I mean, my LASIK was good, but it's not as good as Bill's. 28, <laughs> 251, 758 over the cap, right? 28 million, 250,000 over the cap. Long term deal would give them the ability to kick the can down the road with the signing bonus. Mm -hmm. Can't do avoidable years, though? Well, then it would be a short-term deal being announced. Is that right? It would be announced as a long-term deal, and then they would say with four voidable years. It's never the well. Then they would look into it. You know, once the details of the contract comes out, there's like Spo Track and people like that go through it and they say, okay, this is a five, it says a five-year deal. It's really a two-year deal with an option after two, and they'll, they'll like explain it for you. Yeah. Well, that's I don't know what that has anything to do with what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if they're saying it's a short-term deal, that you would assume that it's not going to be announced as a five-year deal then. Like a five-year deal, if it is a two-year deal, gives you three extra years to kick the signing bonus money spread out through that entire thing, which is the game right now, what everybody's doing, which is how, you know, the signing bonus money for Bakhtiari, that comes off of it, but then it gets spread out through the rest of his contract, no matter if the years are voidable or not, because it, they could be real. Mm. Hey, they could be yeah. real at the exact time. So that's how the whole thing works. So if they're doing a short-term deal, you would think they're not employing that tactic unless it is just... The NFL saying, yeah, it's a seven-year deal, and it's really only a two-year deal. And we've gotten to that point already about how big a bullshit salary caps are. Yeah, exactly. And especially when you factor, like, they, Devontae Adams is still out there, too. Like, they need to figure out what they're going to do with him. And I don't know if a long-term kick-the-can-down-the-road kind of deal is what's imminent right now. It seems like it's more like a, they're going to franchise him. Listen, I'm not saying that this is what's going to happen, but... If Aaron Rodgers, because of that report and how much everybody was killing him about how selfish he is and doing that thing, what if he came back on vet men? Ooh. Oh. Could you imagine? What was that, Greg? Gregory. What was that?
We got shot the fuck up. <laughs> that would be that would be awesome. Is it worth is it worth giving up millions and millions of dollars just to be able to say that? No, I don't. No, it depends on who you're asking. Hey, hey jokes like, on jokes on you guys. I just turned down forty eight million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people don't view it that way, right? Like uh, obviously, I don't think that's that would be hysterical if he was to do that. Not going to happen. Yeah. But that would be hysterical. Whatever number he gets paid here for the short term deal is going to be. All eyes on it, obviously, especially if they're not kicking. That's an interesting thing if it's a short-term deal. I think that is good news for the Green Bay Packers as a whole, personally. Could they do like a two-year, $80 million deal and then have like $78 million be signing bonus? And so then, then it would be 30 it? what? 36 or, yeah, 36 Four or something. 37. 37. You think about Devontae. If they franchise him, what is he, 18 against the cap? Yes, mm -hmm. 18. Yeah, but then Aaron will only be one. So then it'll be 39. Yeah. If it's two, it spreads out. So like a seventy or eighty would be uh, how much is the signing bonus? Uh, if it was like seventy eight million dollars signing bonus. So you, you do the math then what's that? That's thirty nine million then would be spread apart two years then. So that'll be thirty nine million a hit each year, right? Oh, I thought the bonus would have No, the bonus just takes the money and spreads it through the entire contract. Uh, so whatever the salary is, they take the salary. Boom, here it is. Let's say it's twenty million dollars. Hey, we're gonna turn that into let's say it's twenty one million dollars. We're going to turn $20 million of it into a signing bonus. You're on a four-year deal. That'll be a $5 million hit each year. Okay. So that is the move. Because that, that's why the, void, the six years, four voidable years, five voidable years, whatever it is, is on the back end. Because that is being equated into the, the spreading out of the salary. Uh, I believe. Is that not what it, have, Yeah, you would still have to add the voidable years to do something like that. Yes, you would have to add like yeah. three, four right, voidable okay. years on the back end to spread out that $78 million. And then that leaves them with a dead cap. Yeah, for, afterwards if they mm -hmm. release it. But the Packers have said, right, haven't they? their front office come out and said, like, we have a plan to keep the majority of our team intact and have Aaron and Devontae and everyone there? Yes, yeah. they absolutely have said that. Gunther Kuntz uh, was speaking at the Combine and – he said, let me get to it here. Yeah, no new updates. There we go. Thank you, Zito. Field Yates, Packers GM Brian Guntekunz on Aaron Rodgers. No new updates. He does hope to have a decision from Rodgers by the start of the new league year, but Aaron has said it will be earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Aaron has said because there's a lot of other decisions. He also adds that Rodgers' situation is separate from Devontae Adams' situation. Uh, no bearing on one another. Fascinating, because we just assumed those were going to be you know, tied at the hip, and if one went, that would help out the other decision there, right? AJ, we assume that is naturally going to happen, though. Yeah, of course. And they, I mean, that's the Packers saying, like, hey, if either way, Devontae is going to be there, right? He, he, he could not sign his tender, but they're not going to let him go. What's the franchise tag there? 18, 18, 18, 18, and a half, like yeah. 18 million. And I believe there was a report, I think it was Chuck Robinson said that Rick, Devontae Adams is not going to be playing for a different team next year. Like, the pack, he is going to be a Packer, whether that's on the franchise tag or they get an extension done. He's so good at football. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. Ridiculous. Um, Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy has announced that quarterback Dak Prescott underwent a cleanup surgery on his left non throwing shoulder. The expectation is that it won't affect his offseason. Oh, this was the one that they were thinking about. He might miss some games, oh, and he God. did miss. Did he? No. 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 With, Camp, the, right? with the foot, he missed after the uh, bye week. Yeah, but then the before the bye week, he said something about something else, maybe calf being hurt. I think camp it was a shoulder. Corey hard knocks was a shoulder because remember they shut him down from throwing during camp. Yeah. Oh yes, mm -hmm. and it was his non-throwing arm. He wanted to throw his or, whole yeah, thing. Whatever it was, then he had right. a boot on during his. Remember, it was like this. It was this area. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was the lat. lat. It was lat. Mm -hmm. That's not the shoulder, and he had a boot on. Is yeah. Dak, all right, dude. What the <laughs> fuck? I don't know. Banged what, up. What was he throwing through? A lat, a foot, and a shoulder. Mm -hmm. Hope he's okay, dude. He's a guy, huh? Oh, that hard knocks him mic'd up. I loved him. I love Dak. I think he's – yeah. He, oh, also, on the cruise thing, they did this – people could get videos sent in from different people that they know they have contact with, and Zeke had Dak do a video, like, to the Buckeye Cruisers. They played it in the theater, trying to help him raise more money for his team in this thing we were doing. And Dak, I mean, the dude is – he's squared away. That dude, is, he was so, like – just like gracious and thankful and awesome in this little video he did for Zeke. You can tell he and Zeke are very, very close, but Dak just seems like a really good guy. Uh, did he OH that thing? No. 
I don't know if he did or not. I think he said oh. he might have said go Bucks at the end. Oh, Whoa. Not I don't want to put words in his mouth. Like hey, well, very, very nice of him. That came on our show. Very good. I think if, listening to him mic'd up. Very awesome. His story, obviously drafted later, beats out Tony Romo. Go to the booth, get drunk on Coronas, pal. Oh, sure. I'm going to do this thing. And then the entire contract situation, he's a dude. I wonder. And now Amari Cooper's Correct. future is potentially in... You know, limbo, because Stephen Jones says he's uncertain about the future of Amari Cooper, who has three years left with $22 million, I believe, per year mm -hmm. uh, set up to make for three more years. But if they trade him after June 1st or before June 1st, it saves them $20 million a year or Jeez. something like that. Trade, trade or release. Um, if it's pre-June 1, they take $6 million on this year. If it's post-June 1, it's $2 million this year and then 4 next year. So they're saving what? A lot. 16, mm -hmm. 18 million dollars. Yeah, a lot of money. They're saving a lot they of could... money if they were to do it. And everybody assumes he's going to be on the move. Hey, Amari, <laughs> come on to the Colts. Yeah. Come that on. is a good, honestly, that would be a good spot. Yeah. I agree. Concur. Absolutely. He doesn't know who's going to be throwing him the ball, but. Well, Still, maybe Carson. Hey, hey, Chris Ballard will do whatever's base for the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, they sound got, a little bit like Jerry Jones with your Chris Ballard. Yeah, they kind of blend together. Yeah. I only have one Southern accent, but they're both Texans. Well, actually, <laughs> I think Jerry's from Arkansas. He is. Really? Yeah. He went to Arkansas. I know that for sure. Is he funny roommates with Burt uh, Kreischer? Burt Reynolds. <laughs> the machine. Kreischer. Florida State. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know if Burt Kreischer potentially stopped That's over. That's Lee Corso. Lee Corso played with Burt Reynolds. Really? What? Yeah, Jerry they were like college roommates. Jerry yeah, Jones is from something like that. LA. Where's Jerry Jones from Oh, yeah, because that was a big deal because he's going right. back home. But he went to high school in Arkansas. And then he's been in Dallas for 70 years. What? He's a Los Angeles kid. Yeah, that's wow. insane. I didn't expect that at all. Well, how long was he there if he went to high school in Arkansas? Oh, so he's just a little... He was born, born there? Born in 42, moved to Little Rock, Arkansas in 1945. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, okay, so since he's been speaking... He's an Arkansas he's boy. He's been in Arkansas. <laughs> He's awesome. He just go. Is he having? A, I assume he's having five press conferences this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go. The more Jerry, the merrier, and the more Mike McCarthy, the merrier as well. What if they stink again? Mm. Uh, I sure hope that's not the case for Mike McCarthy and the rest of that team. Old Dan Quinn stuck around. Old Florida Dan went down to Dallas, put his hat on backwards. Uh, Trayvon Diggs became an absolute. St Died yeah. <laughs> on defense side of the ball while giving up some yards. But the defense goes from 32nd in the NFL mm -hmm. by a wide margin, it felt like. I might not be right on my pro football focus analyst, but my analysis of that defense is they were the worst by far by anybody. Then they go up to 18. Head coach Dan Quinn gets a lot of offers, offers, offers. He turns it down. He goes back there. A little continuity for the first time in some time in Dallas. Dak Prescott's back, and he's going to be healthy even though he got his shoulder cleaned up. Dallas Cowboys, this could – hey. Every year, but this one could be could be the year. It's a real year. one, and it's kind of a win-win if they stink, right? For Jerry, at least, because if they stink, then he'll fire Big Mike and bring in Sean Payton, who he's always wanted to be the head coach of the Cowboys. Yeah, and Sean Payton is just gonna, you know, potentially. Is he gonna get... want that though? If Sean gets offered fifteen mil a year from Fox, fifty. I think the new number is now twenty, dude. Yeah. You heard for Sean? Sean McVay. You think even Sean though never doing it? Is he still getting that? That price? Sean McVay never done it before either, right? You just yeah. did flying yeah, coach. And Peyton's been in movies, so. Yeah, yeah he that's has awesome. A, with Adam Sandler and bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good pretty elite him. crew. He was a good mopper. Very good. He wore a wig like no a No spoilers, champion. no spoilers. No, not yet. Oh, the, the documentary? Yes. Yeah, that one was not a hallmark. No. Sean Peyton's was that. different than Kurt Warner's. Yeah. AJ, Probably you played better. golf with him. Did he say he wants to go in the booth? I should have asked him. No, at that time, it didn't good really talker, seem like though. that was on the horizon. Hey, good talker, though, right? Oh, the man. I mean, you talk like, you know how some, you know, a lot of coaches we know can't speak about anything other than football. You know, hey, coach, how's your family? Well, you tell you what, I had this three technique that just wasn't getting in his stance <laughs> in, the, in time when we were doing OTAs last year. Like, All right, bud, I'll talk to you never. But Sean Payton is not that guy. You can talk to him about anything. He is so cool, so fun, interacting with fans. Yeah, he was, he was the man. Now, you'd seem that would. You would think that that would make for a great broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Should you know his resume is good too. Yeah, and he did like what a two-hour press conference there at mm -hmm. the end to retire that thing just off the straight off the hip. Yeah, his name getting floated out there. I don't know who's trying to make the leverage play. Whether it's somebody else trying to make a leverage, like a network is trying to tell somebody that we're also potentially looking at Sean Payton. Maybe who knows if it's real? So somebody else has to sign a deal to get things done, or if Sean Payton's people are floating it out there because he wants to do it, like. 
You know, I, I always get so intrigued by all those news dumps, but hopefully Sean Payton is – I think he'd be great at it. Now, if he stinks, I hope he recognizes it. I think he would, but I don't think he would. I think he'd be very good in the booth. Well, and, like, it kind of depends on the network too, right? Because B.A., un- unbelievable talker, but they wouldn't let him just be Bruce. Like, wide-ass open. <laughs> yeah. You say, you get this guy to clear out here, you get this guy to clear out here, and then this guy, you see, wide-ass open. That's why they hit him there. Uh, please don't say wide-ass anymore. I don't think he's going to fucking work. Anymore. <laughs> hey, don't you think now though Bruce would work better in the booth? I feel like now it's more there's it, it's opened up to more personality. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I was going to ask Bruce that, like, hey, Bro, see, was, these coaches getting paid, yeah, offered twenty mm. mil a year. You ever think about stepping aside? Hey, think and also not only the money, but those booths though. He's got to be in a two man. Yes. Those booths yeah. where they stuffed him in, he was sitting like this in a suit, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. He was sitting like this in an yeah. abs, in a suit with his entire thing. And then you hear him talk, and then you hear him get gun shy a little bit. Like, I don't think they set Bruce Arians up for success. Three person booth is not, I don't, I don't like three person booth. I had to do it, um, I do it every time I've called, basically. I know, I think it's harder. I, I've talked to different broadcasters that say that as well so they think they're helping people out because hey you don't have to carry the whole load you guys can do it together but then sometimes it's hard to figure out when you're stepping in all that stuff me and robert smith didn't have a good chemistry i don't think <laughs> what i think he, I, I liked him as a person i don't know if you liked me as a person but i mean we they threw us in green bay there for that week 17 game he's sitting right next to me and then old buddy's over there two doors down and that game was a blowout quick so this is just an open mic over an nfl game right now and i don't know if that's I think Robert Smith liked me. I mean, I that, so. that game wasn't – you and me did one. That was awesome. I enjoyed the hell out of it. You, you're saying you hated it. That's what I just heard. No, I loved it. I, that's I what, thought – Yeah, that's, that's what, what you just said. Just say, say never we have, again. Me and you have a – you know, we have worked together in the past, so I think, like, we understand how to, to work off each other. That That's oh. – whatever, that's fine. I'll, I'll do that. But And I think our play-by-play guy, he understood the game, too, and he, he got it. He knew what was going on. That guy was awesome, man. Remember you were talking to him? You said, like, what did you say to him when you said hello to him? You said, hey. Oh, what's up? Yeah, his son was really cool. We had to hang out with this kid as well. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean mm-hmm. Kelly. Yeah, that's right. Shawnee. Hey, Sean Kelly. You're the hey, absolute. See, shout out, Z. No, no, no. No, no. no. Nope, it wasn't me. Is that his Look name? at you. I think that was his name. He was a good fucking guy. I'm a good name rememberer, too. I'm mm-hmm. very upset about it, but that whole situation was fantastic. You know, I got the re- review of it afterwards. It was bad. The review was bad from the, uh, from the report from the card. Third, <laughs> from the, and then I got another one for the Packers-Lions game from an independent, you know, advisor, consultant for Fox Sports. It was bad. It was a bad thing. I'm like, all right, it's great. It seems like I'm doing really well. And then we did the uh, Thursday night football thing. Adam Amin, Matt Hasselbeck, myself, and Molly McGrath. Think about that booth. That yeah. Think about that. Like, Molly is unbelievably talented. Adam Amin, unbelievably talented. Matthew Hasselbeck, like one of the voices of the NFL. That we were traveling around to these small, small, small towns for Thursday night football in a remote operation. So we couldn't even watch play. We couldn't even do highlights, reviews. Uh, we couldn't watch replays because that's the- unbelievable that ESPN did that. Like they took like when it's a big Thursday night primetime game too. That that's the setup you had. Well, I don't think it was because it was primetime because the NFL. Once the NFL started doing Thursday night football, those thurs- so when I was in college at West Virginia, those Thursday night football games were like Monday night football, and we were playing on them a lot. I think we even had like plaques around our facility that was like. Uh, most viewed game for this month in ESPN's history or whatever. Like, we were running numbers because that was Pat, Steve, Darius Renaud, Owen Schmidt, that entire crew. We were like a Thursday night, like, almost, I don't want to say staple, but it felt like we were playing on Thursday more than a lot of other people. And that game was huge. And then once the NFL got into it, I think it became like, uh, you know, like, ain't nobody. Yeah. You know, even if that Thursday night football game stinks over at the NFL, like, I don't know if anybody's signing up for this particular. I, I, that was kind of how it felt, at least while we were going through it. And that might have been a good business decision because as we were calling some of the games, uh, there was a lot of like, hey, what's going on in that? What's going on in that, folks? Yeah. Mm-hmm. While we're sitting there because uh-huh. the games were, you know, great people, great kids. You know, we had a couple elect- electrifying finishes. Oh, yeah. But there was three in a booth. We couldn't do any replay. It was a remote operation, and there was pretty good talent in there. Where the power went out? Power went out in East Carolina. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. awesome. You guys just analyzed the crowd awesome, for 30 man. minutes. I was trying to cut cameras for that. That was the only time I ever tried to like cut cameras, like in my entire life. Like, uh, were you in the were you in the truck? 
My wife is FaceTiming me. I don't know what that's all about. I'll call her in three minutes. She might have got Val. I hope. Or she might have got some news. You guys take this home, huh? I'll be back. Yep, you got it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. What's up, Connor? Hey, what's up, AJ? Good to see you. Uh, how are you doing today? <laughs> hey, where, are the boys hanging out outside? or where? No, are they? they went to... Uh, Will actually just posted a picture of them, uh, I believe, walking into St. Elmo's. Ooh. Ooh. Steaks for the boys. Making the rounds. Taylor, Taylor, it seemed like Taylor needed his beef. I have to. Really? AJ, do you know any uh, stories about old Indianapolis? This is actually where all the GMs, you know, meet and hang out. Do I know any stories like where they, where their their places are? That they like to to get together with Shregs? Well, I didn't know when you were with the Packers, maybe. Or you know, when he was Mike. here at the combine. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. True. What'd you do that week? Yeah. What'd you do? Oh, what'd you do? So much Tell fun. Us. So much fun there at the combine. I was. Uh, it was the old school dome. It was probably the last year in the old school dome. RCA. Was it the RCA dome? Mm-hmm. Oh, you yep. did the old Tyson Fury warm up before your workouts. Mm-hmm. Seven What's that? Oh, you're you're jerk, seven jerk sending jerks off, off seven yeah. times a day uh, before the week before he fights. Not rookie numbers. That's impressive. <laughs> if I actually heard him say that, did he say that today on the show? Oh, I, yeah. I've heard that in the past. Yeah, he did yeah, say he, it on the yeah, show. Yeah. 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 He's, oh, so he's still sticking with that protocol? Yeah, that's why yeah. he's undefeated. He said basically. him and Big Bad. Mm-hmm. Also, he why did his opponent game. not show up to the thing? I didn't get to watch the interview. Head games. Yeah, f- head Allegedly. games, which he doesn't even believe in, so I, I have no he idea. He killed it, though. He, he made him even more of the star of the show. Like, he stood up. I saw him do like a face-off and have the guy standing between him and the no you know, no opponent. I, I don't I don't really understand what they're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's a best. showman. Yeah. He, yeah, he understands. He's the man. Tyson Fury is the man. The, the fact that he can sit there and not only sing a little bit of a song, sing a whole song. What's up, Pat? Hey, Val's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I might have to stay another night. I might have to stay another night, but uh, current update is good. Thanks for that. Tyson Fury is awesome. the fucking man, dude. What a great yeah. conversation that was, wasn't it? Electrifying. Yeah. Yes. He needs to be on a microphone every day. Like, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I know he wants to drink and play golf. Well, you can do get both. on a microphone. Robo does it. Yeah, we can still. I mean, let's not get crazy. I feel like we could potentially. And listen, if I have to strap it up some night. You know, I will. Yeah. Too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If I have to, to earn the Gypsy King's respect to potentially, you know, say like, hey, maybe you do get on a microphone every once in a while. I will do that for the good of the world. Mm-hmm. Take them for the team. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you no problem. I will go do that. I think it'll end up terribly for me, though. No. He's six foot nine, dude. He's bigger than everybody. He's so quick and he throws. He's like the perfect boxer. 34 years old. Been doing it since birth, basically. What a weapon that guy He's got is. great feet, man. The people, like, they look at him, they see how big he is and everything that Dude has unbelievable feet, and he's also very like unorthodox. You don't, you couldn't like teach somebody to box that way. When I was watching him, like it was almost like he was twitching or whatever. I'm like, yeah. that he is... doesn't get tired either, though, man. Like, yes. first, his head is a rock. He, he can get knocked out cold, and he'll get up. He'll get up and still finish the fight and win the round. Yeah, and he did that actually against yeah, I think the, uh, Wilder. Alabama Ham or whatever. Yeah. But like, you know how exhausting that would be just to flail around, basically. Like that is as ex- you're getting hit too. It, that that is very. Core, by the way, everybody sees how he, yeah. his core, the amount of movement, the amount of cardio that has to be. I mean, it's just a he's, a, he's a weapon. I'm very thankful he came on the show. Same with the boys and B.A. We'll see you manana. Nice. Nailed it. I paused the music. That's on me. But then I couldn't hit the. I should switch these computers, but I think this one. Has what a, did Rappaport do yesterday? Got boozed up. Probably. What? No, he Why? came into the studio like after the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He got oh, into okay. town like, uh, I think, two something. Because I texted him in the morning because he had the um, the Kyler stuff, right? No, he had the. Uh, like the wrap up with. Didn't he have the. Kyler Rogers? was self. Or is that what it was? He had something. He, I thought he had something yesterday. I, I, I texted him in the morning, though. Because I wanted, oh, I think I wanted to ask him about the Kyler stuff because I know Ooh. that he has the. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I know that he, I forget what it was. So I texted him. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Any chance you can stop by today? Obviously, a lot going on in your world. And uh, I try to keep it as professional as possible all the time with rap sheet and those like text messages or whatever. And he was like, oh, I'm traveling to Indianapolis. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. We'll see you whenever you get out here or whatever. And he goes, but I'm landing like. You know, 2.30 if you want to squeeze. I'm like, thanks for knowing our show time, first of all. Yeah. Thanks for wanting to come on. Uh, we got Dana White. In front of mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, sorry about it. Uh, but that actually was quick because the guy got COVID, which I wish, God damn, we should have got his response to that. 
co-main event this weekend got yeah. COVID. They're going to yeah. have to figure that out. And Dana, by the way, we just talked to him yesterday. He'll think of something. That'll mm -hmm. become a, oh, yeah. you know, he, that'll Last become week's main event. Uh, the guy fought on 10 days, so. Yeah, so there's he'll do something. Maybe the BMF title's up for grabs, too. Oh, maybe. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's a little something, something, something. Who knows? But that was all happening. But then he landed, I think, a little later than he thought. And then we chit chatted. He stopped by. He just came through. He was in a suit, though, because he was getting ready to go to a meeting and then the TV and all this. He was... Uh, he was actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was on an information finding mission, and when he found out that we weren't giving up any information, he quickly had a meeting to go to. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that meeting's time moved up. Yeah. What, what, wait, what kind of info was he trying to get? Anything and everything. You know, stuff what? on the Colts. I think that's all he does, by the way. He's just look. He says, you got one of these? I do. <laughs> He's trying to use us. Because I look for information at all times. All times. What a fascinating life he gets. Yeah. Every text message he gets, he has to see right now. Yeah. And he has to, like respond with quite yeah like i that's once you get in that life too how do you ever get out yeah you can't and and once you get out you probably have to go to like there like legit get away from your phone get away from, granted we're gonna have to do that as well i was, I was gonna, gonna say i don't know what we're even thinking about like <laughs> i can't judge him at all but he has to be his on is not just on uh camera obviously but he has to respond in a in a kosher fashion in a a positive fashion to everybody. Yeah. He has to network all day, every day. All day. Everything has to be like, oh, thank you so much. Hope everything's good. Let me know if you need anything. Bah, bah, bah. To bah, everybody that even tells him any piece of information. That's, that's a lot. I couldn't do it. I'd immediately go, I don't fucking care whenever something comes through. That'd be tough to do. That's a whole lifestyle. And shout out, by the way, to his entire family. Yeah. yeah. And him talking about like the anxiety he gets when he can't like look at his phone at any point. It's like, oh shit, that sucks even more. He told us a story off air that we don't have to dive into, but he went, he just went and did life one time. Like he just went to like dinner yeah. with his, uh, you know, with his wife and was just going to like be invested you know, in the time and not working. No or, phones. No, whatever, no phones. And then he got one, he said he heard the thing vibrate one time before he got into the dinner. And then his entire, the entire time, the seat was just, <laughs> bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang. and he was like, ah, oh, the biggest news of the off season just so happened to happen at the exact time I went to dinner. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole, that's a whole, I would assume he was like, oh my God, how did I miss yeah. this? I'm so terrible. I got to catch up. He said, by the time I got it, I had to catch up to like five different things or whatever. It's like, he has to be ahead of everything. We appreciate the insiders. Yeah. That appreciate Rap Sheet a lot though, too. Rap Sheet. He, he grinds, man. He's, He's a man. grinder. Three sport athlete in high school. Yeah. yeah. People found need that, to know that. Found that out yesterday. And then what sports? Well, I don't want to be Fo the one that bears the bad news of what he is and what he didn't do, sure. but it, it was the one, football, wrestling, football, and baseball. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And then light That's crew great. in college. And yeah, he did, he did yeah. crew. Mm -hmm. Or light crew. crew. Which I really I think he did have a big back. Yeah, whenever you see that sport coat, you say that guy once had a big jacket because it is kind of yeah. yeah, massive. Did he get upset when we all had the same, you know, we're all, we all looked very similar when he came in? Man, I was... I didn't know how long he was going to fix that. I headphone. couldn't do it. I, w I was starting to lose it. Like, I, I mean, I, I stuck with whatever he was doing, but like, I kept looking, trying to get you to look at me. Yeah. I, and I, I didn't know when he was going to notice. Yeah. I, I literally, I asked him two, three questions while we were doing that. Yeah. yeah. I had some of my finest work. I didn't crack. I didn't crack in there until immediately afterwards. I had to say, mm -hmm. hey, listen, I just want to let you know what just happened. I don't want you to find this out later because we're friends. You've done very good for our show. He is a great give and take. Yeah. Right? Oh, He's yeah. Man. He posted that photo. He posted a photo on Instagram of like us all doing that at one point during it when he was on there. And then the photo he posted yesterday of him behind that desk was hilarious. Yeah, everybody, you know, he take a look at that desk. So whenever you see me standing, you know. Yeah. Because Ian, I mean, I don't want to. No, no, well, you no. Can, you can, you can, I didn't see it. What, what did he do? I mean, it was. Yeah, it was one of these situations. No, no, no. He's crew. He's crew. Remember, he's got big legs. He looked yeah. like a sixth grader on a field trip. That's, yeah, okay. He, he was small. Jeez Louise. All right, he did. Frank. Like running around a museum, like Gosh. for giant people. All right, let's get to the phones. We, uh, we, I teased what? it like 10. Running around a museum for giant people. Yeah, like if they were, if there was a museum. He doesn't look as, He looks normal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Keep for sure. Out. Yeah, zoom out. He zoomed in. He does. Come I mean, on. That's. See, Connor, you're wrong, dude. No, nah, he posted one on his. Look uh, where Pat's hat is. Bingo. On the monitor for All scale. Right. Well, there you go. Well, it's just, hey, I'm a little larger person. Ian's a good guy. He's a great guy. Hey, How like you guys crew. doing? Like crew. The, why is this show becoming this? I don't like it. Not becoming one bit. Rap Sheet is a great guy. And plus, he has been in the office. He is clearly Jesus. a friend of the show. And you know that he can take it because he's one of the guys. 
He is. You're right. I mean, you guys call him a booze bag alcoholic every time. Well, exactly. that's different. That's We're just on, the that's truth. honest reporting. I don't know how to say one this. One thing he can help, one's his decision. Well, yeah, exactly. But this is also one thing he can help. Yeah, one, one thing he can't help. Yeah. <laughs> I was making sure that you were, that was a good line by you. You're 100% right. One is a decision. I'm not scared to be the friend that goes like, hey, maybe we, uh, you know, maybe we stay off uh, or whatever, you know, and by doing that, you just openly start talking about it. <laughs> you know, hey, this guy's a fucking booze bag. Yeah. Hey, this guy's getting a little soft. Hey, you're getting a little soft out there, a little mm-hmm. soft. You know, it's like, hey, maybe you're whining a little bit too much. You know, like there is, yeah. there's, a, I think Ian, you know, I'm okay with being that, you know, person. It is troubling how much that guy drinks. Yeah, you yes. to, you you legitimately asked him what are you doing tonight, and uh, I, before he could answer, I said getting fucked up, and he said, "Yeah, probably." So Wiz Khalifa has a quote that says, "The more I smoke, the more money my business make." Okay, and that ain't never been more accurate because his business is booming. Yeah. Uh, the more Ian drinks, though, the more networking True. he gets, the more Bingo. information True. he gets. The more. So that little else. thing has to really pump through. Necessary evil. It's it. It's a gig. Yeah. Gig. He's crushing it, though. We appreciate him, don't we, AJ? Yeah, we do. Are you trying to like have an intervention with him or something? No, nah, no I'm not past yet. those. I, had, I, I, I was part of a couple of those. Those are no fun at all. How'd it go? I really don't. They seem like none of them worked. I don't think. But <laughs> boy, they are. They are bad. Those are tough. Those are tough things. Those are tough things to be a part of. Very real things that have to happen. And but I think what I experience is that the person had like I'm not going to be able to. I've led it. I've led one, and I've also like been a part of another one. And I think each time I've come out, like it has to be a two-way dance every single time. Yeah, you can lead a horse to water. Yeah, it has to be a two-way dance. So there's other ways to do it. Like, hey, maybe don't be boozing nine fucking a.m., dude. You know, like that's yeah. a, that's just something you think about that he's gonna think about maybe whenever he's laying down. Like maybe a, a blue margarita immediately upon landing in Los Angeles. <laughs> no, he's awesome, dude. Yeah, he's, he's the best. a man. We shouldn't bury him as much as we do. No, that's but wow. Well. It's it's when they have to restock his mini bar in the hotel every single day, like that, that doesn't usually happen. Is you that know? boots on the ground? That's boots on the ground. Yeah. That's your source. Yeah, we got some some, some, some birdies out there. He saying, called me Jesus late. Christ. He called me late last night asking for an after hours spot. I yeah, said, go back to the hotel, rap sheet. Yeah, night's over. Told rap sheet that Gumpy's are uh, Gumpy and Connor are socialites around here. You yeah. guys need anything? <laughs> These are the two guys yeah. to go. Rap sheet reaching out to the Canadian sensation. That's right. What are we doing, man? Are we going to kill Rolls or? <laughs> no, we told him. What was that, what's that place called, Gumpy, by uh, Lucas no. Oil? Yeah, the Red Garden. Uh, yeah, you guys are White trying to set him Come on. You guys are trying to set him What up. is it? What kind of place? It's an adult ballet, okay? And these boys are trying to set up old Rap Sheet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure he'd be real pissed if he walked into the adult ballet. <laughs> All he asked for was man. the closest Jeez. place to Lucas Oil, and that is. I mean, that was an honest answer. Um, he was asking for a place to eat. Oh, yeah. I missed that boys, Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have food there. Hey, good wings in a lot of those places. Yeah. Yeah. Great after hours back at Jump tacos. Spot. Back in the day. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only Caucasian in a couple of adult ballets, and I will say, <sighs> Wings. Delicious. Unbelievable. Fire. <laughs> Bringing the best chef in town, I think, the best oil, whatever the case, it is unbelievable. Who there's, will? There's a couple times I've looked around and been like, this is hysterical. <laughs> you know, let me get those wings. All right, real quick. Let me go ahead and do that. Yeah. Very true. That is that thing. But that's not what you guys were trying to do for Rapport. You were trying to lead him astray and set him up. That is not what Indianapolis socialites are all about. It's what? supposed to be hospitable to that guy. That's not yeah. us. Why are you still in acting? Who are you? What's I going don't know. on? I got down here and it's kind of sweet, actually. You're just getting pinned to the desk right now. Yeah. a lot of work to get back. I up. don't even. Yeah, I don't even have to lean. I'm not. I can't lean back. I can't lean forward. I just get to sit here. All right, let's go to some phone calls. I would like to say that Ian Rapport should stop losing as much. All right, <laughs> let's go to the phones. Let's go to uh, Josiah in Ohio. Oh, Joe. Hey, what's up, boys? Lifelong Browns fan here. Um, I just right. wanted to ask y'all. Okay. Should the Browns keep waiting for Baker to take us on a run to the Super Bowl, or do we we need to go broke for Deshaun or Russell or even Aaron Rodgers if he doesn't sign with the Packers? Oh, oh man! Thank you, Josiah. Uh, this is—I mean, this conversation has been happening for the entirety of last season uh-huh. into this off season. Baker Mayfield's contract status is something that has been chatted about so much so that I think Baker was even playing through an immense amount of pain because a contract was potentially on the line for him because he was the first quarterback after a long, hey, 
Oh, yeah. That list of QBs that have stunk in Cleveland so long. Yeah. Diesel. Through the grind. Mm-hmm. Longer list than that malt right there, although that thing is becoming very, very beautiful. That's true. Tim Catch is on that list. Yeah, there's That's a like lot that. of names mm-hmm. on that list. Leadens on that list. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot Twin of names. Derek Anderson. There's Wall. Yeah. Like Baker. Mm-hmm. Detmers. AJ's brother in law, unfortunately, on unfortunately. that list. Tyrod Taylor. On That's that. right. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a lot of names lot. on that list quarterbacks that Cleveland Browns, I don't think it's quarterback's fault, by the way. No. Just have lost with. They finally get a quarterback they win with, go to the playoffs, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs without their head coach, I believe. They do that. To move on from that in all conversations about the NFL would be a little bit wild because of how hard it is to win in the NFL. The grass isn't always greener, right? The grass isn't always greener. Because what if they go out and search and somebody stinks? It would have to be a veteran that they know is going to be a plug-and-play, ready to go. Because how much money they've invested in that team, and allegedly they're going to invest even more in Njoku and potentially what's going to happen with Hooper. And then today Andrew Barry in his press conference said Jarvis Landry is a key pillar to the Cleveland Browns. So you would think that he's planning on keeping mm-hmm. Jarvis around. The defense is... You know, damn good. And that whole thing is interesting, but I just assume we're all at the P, uh, part of the discussion where Baker's coming back next year and it's another trial run, whether or not he's going to get the big deal or not, right? That's kind of what I thought we all kind of landed on. Whether Josiah likes it or not, I, I think that is what is going to happen, but maybe they'll come out of nowhere. Well, it felt like coming into this season, that's what it was. Like, okay, prove it to us, Baker, that you can be our franchise guy and maybe they'll extend him. But then obviously the injury – threw a big wrench in that and the fact that he probably was playing through a ton of pain. Yeah, now it's like, all right, now this is truly the year where you get to show us if you're going to be our guy moving forward. And I don't know if Browns fans are necessarily pumped about that. I'm sure he has some supporters out there in the Browns. He just has to light it up. He's got to come out of the gates quick and play very well and hopefully stay healthy. But the entire situation was fascinating because he had that terrible shoulder that everybody admitted, like, it's probably hurting Mm -hmm. his throwing, and they have two great backs, and then they would throw the ball 60 times in a game, and he would be terrible. Like, it would not be good. Like, he'd be missing wide-open throws. And it's like, well, obviously, when you tear your labrum and break your humerus Mm -hmm. up in the shoulder and you have a thing on, you're probably not going to be able to be as... we got you rolling out to the left, throwing across your body. Yeah, Yeah, there was... There was a lot of shit going on that was very confusing. Very, very confusing. Yeah. And then the conversation just landed on, now we're giving him another year. We didn't get a chance to properly judge him last year because how hurt he was. I, I don't I don't know. I guess I'm intrigued to see how that whole thing pans out as well. What's up, Tom? They they have to go with him because the chances of getting Rodgers or Wilson are slim to none. And if you don't want to go with Baker, then you have to take one of the last chance cues, which are they any better than Baker? Probably not. We all know. What about Marcus Mariota? Well, I did off camera say, hey, Taylor, what do you think about Marcus Mari- Mariota? If he gets a second chance, he goes, that guy, if he gets a second chance, is going to fucking ball out. So. Oh, he's coming to Indianapolis. So he's, so he's not available, Cleveland. Sorry about it. Wow. <laughs> Sorry about it, Marcus Mariota. Hey, welcome back to the AFC South, dude. Good job, Marcus. Welcome back. Welcome bro. home. Or Aaron. I mean, unless Aaron. Nah. Unless Aaron wants to come to Indianapolis. Carson Wentz might actually be. Good no. guy for Cleveland. Bro, that would that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but we're not. I don't know what you're thinking here, but no, he'll be back in Indy. Carson will be in Indy. I what if they trade? So uh, what if they trade Baker for Carson straight up? I That's what I was saying. I wasn't necessarily saying that. Okay, good. You're Something you should think about though, right? Maybe some picks because we don't have any picks Bingo. because of person. Carson would be great over there, right? Good hunting up there. Baker would be sweet here. Carson's coming back. Give Carson a second year yeah, in that system in Indy. Back. He's going to light more it up. Time. Listen, there is a chance that everything I'm saying right now is going to come back because the great. Carson mm-hmm. is so good. Very good. It is. I could see why people would be like, yup, let's, we can do that. But man, just the, the heart attack style mm-hmm. that he plays with, I'm not 100% sure you can win a Super Bowl with. Who Can't took this it. picture? Is he throwing in a North Face jacket? Somebody's uh, social person. I would assume. And it, what you notice, hey, Carson does not have a Colts helmet on. Or a mask. Well, did you practice with the helmet on the offseason? Never. Me neither. It's a new thing, though. Everybody does it. And I was like, because well, Tom, because Tom yeah. did it. Tom would wear shoulder pads and a helmet on the beach throwing routes. So, but he goes no chin strap. Oh, Brady, when he does it. Yeah, yeah, but the chin I get it though. As a receiver, I get it. Trying to catch when you catching balls, looking through your your face mask. Yeah, I get it. I probably should have the entire time because punting, you know, like. Yeah. 
Yeah, see the ball, catch the ball, kick the ball, dude. You got a big face mask, though. Look at that thing. That's yeah. good. Is he catching that ball or throwing it? He's well, that one's where he sprains both sprain. of his ankles. Yeah. That's the cardiac style that Carson Wentz plays with that I think Foxy just brought up on the screen to remind me. <laughs> it's a no look. Like, yeah. that happens. <laughs> you are right, though. I mean, he should have been way more injured than sprained Dude, ankles. He should have broken legs this year. He should. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking insanity. And I, I want to let everybody know, I respect the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely respect the hell out of it. The fact that he's just willing. We, we, we rattled him off earlier. Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O, Travis Pastrana. Mm -hmm. um, Wee Man. Super Hummin. Uh, Wee Man, Super, Super Hummin. Hummin. There we go. Jeff Hardy, Kevin Owens. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, Carson Wentz is one of those Shane guys. Mac. Yeah. Shane Mac. Shane Mac. Shane there you Mac. Go. Carson Wentz is one of those guys. Yeah. Like, if he wasn't so good at football... I think he'd be on the farm, jumping off the top of the barn, trying to land onto some hay things, filming sure. it, putting it on the internet, making so much money. Absolutely. That dude is willing to die. His body does not matter. Nothing. The next play, who gives a fuck? All we have is right now. He lives as if this breath is his last breath. Every single breath <laughs> on the football field. And that's the beginning of that tackle. That's the beginning of that tackle. Aaron Donald is clearly going to tackle you here. Yes. Yeah. Clearly. Then he gets to half spin. Carson Wentz goes, wait a minute. Then once Aaron Donald is fully around 360, I can get this thing. I can plant my feet and get this thing off. <laughs> what? I mean, I love it. It is incredible. I wish I was friends with him. Mm -hmm. I'd like to play, you know, sports alongside of this guy. Hey, this guy's going to give pickup, YMCA. Give me Carson Need. Wentz. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's taking charges, and he's fucking diving after balls. Yeah. He's doing everything I want. I love that about him. But also... It is tough to watch and think, oh, this will win a Super Bowl because it doesn't catch up to you until it catches up to you. And that is just something that is very, very real, I think, whenever you watch the teams that win and they don't win. But if he comes back and lights it up, I'm fucking here for it. I just don't know if my heart can take it. I had COVID, you know? Yeah, yeah true. I had COVID long, long bad. Of that. Jeez. Oh my He's God. He's trying to throw that hit. Flip side, if he if he completes that double sprain play, that's like the greatest completion in the history of the NFL. Yeah, you're yeah. right. That's the difference. Yeah, it's like golf. It's like game golf. Those plays that get you coming back for more. Man, exactly. especially with how long that play took to develop, you so think long. that's a gain of one or two, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's a fucking big time game. Yeah, going for six. That goes from third and long to third and medium. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's a that's a just. And the, the whole, I mean, this thing. Yeah. I mean, we don't even talk about it. We don't even talk about it because the two springs takes all the thing. Oh, yeah, I can. love that that's how he's playing. Like, I played ping pong the same way. Hey, if I, I, I'll just toss the paddle. Then, good, you want him back then. You keep saying how much you love how he plays, then obviously you want him back in Indy. I just want to no, win. No. Just want he's to coming. Win. He's staying. He is. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't think so, dude. Jim Ursa, you think Jim Ursa? He like, wants to stay. He got killed this game, by the way. Oh, not, yeah. yeah. Not his fault that he, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody talks about how good the offensive line is. Yeah. And then you see him just get Imagine – can you imagine if Carson played back when you could kill quarterbacks? He still plays that way. I think that's what he yeah. is. He's trying to run – every play, he's trying to run back to 1995. <laughs> so he's trying to set himself up to get hit as hard as possible. However, if I got to go out on the side here and jump a little bit for you guys to really be able to hit me helmet to helmet – and lower body, I'll do that for you. <laughs> if you need me to extend a play so I'm uncomfortable, no problem. I will put this fucking ball uh -huh. on the ground to keep mm -hmm. me up, and then I will, as I'm getting killed, uh, crow hop into a throw into triple coverage so we can get that highlight catch from Pittman, the guy he's playing with. I will do that. He's a throwback player. You're yeah. right. And he's searching for that moment every single time. He has to just have all the hits around the house like, I'm the toughest motherfucker of all time. Yeah. Bumping into walls and shit. Mm -hmm. Aside from Jimmy G, though, and Russell and Aaron Rodgers, do you, like, do you think Mariota gives you a better chance of winning than Wentz does? Well, I, would you rather deal with the one you don't know or the one you do know? Mm -hmm. Devil. Yeah, Plus, come back. I don't, don't want to call Carson a devil because I don't think he's a devil. I think he's very no, talented. Yeah. I think he's very nice. Euphemism. Apostle. It's but, the RPO issue. If he's constantly checking out a run, that's the issue. I don't think Mariota does that. Yeah, and that is also another conversation piece, you know, where. Well, it came out today also, you know, you mentioned Jimmy. He's got to have surgery. What? Oh. On what? Is the, how's the family? I didn't know that. On his throwing shoulder? I believe so. Why is it happening now? 
Boy, you mean. Adam Schefter is reporting 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to soon undergo shoulder surgery that would sideline him until this summer. Damn. Sources tell ESPN it is not expected to impact his trade status, and Garoppolo still is likely to be traded this month per sources. So this is probably a short Garoppolo injured his shoulder during the wild card win over Dallas per sources. He does not need thumb surgery for another injury he also played through. Surgery is expected to happen shortly. There is significant interest in Garoppolo from multiple teams Per sources. So those teams are probably all out there. We know all the quarterback needed teams. We'd assume that they would all like Jimmy Garoppolo. Because although the media and the internet and sometimes stats would like to say that Jimmy doesn't mean as much as he, you know, other quarterbacks, all his teammates, coaches, and his win-loss record to indicate that he was a winner and everybody loves him. So if you need a veteran that is not going to fuck up, that is going to put you in the right situations, and is going to be beloved by his teammates, Jimmy Garoppolo is one of those guys. So you'd assume the people are going to want in the Jimmy G game. Also, incredibly handsome. How's your family? How's your family? Mm-hmm. Probably very big, if I had to guess. Yeah. And they probably love the... Uh, oh, yeah. The mozzarella. In the... Pizza pie. Sure. What? In the spaghetti. What? In the chicken parmesan. <laughs> and the what? what? That, 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 that. If you've got a problem with Carson spraining both his ankles, you're going to love watching Jimmy G get ragdolled around the field. He's always hurt. What are you saying? How's your family? Come it's going to be just fine family. when Jimmy's a part Respect of it. Shoulder, family. though. You're right. Whenever he gets hurt, they stink. That's why they traded all the way up to number three or whatever, because they wanted another quarterback, and they actually said, yeah, we're going to pay Jimmy 20 some million dollars this year. He's going to be our quarterback. But whenever he's not our quarterback, we stink. So, like, we're going to get another quarterback for when Jimmy, if he gets hurt or how he gets hurt. You're right. He has missed some time. That is not indicative of his future, though. Might have been some unfortunate events. Played through a broken thumb, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Now he's got a shoulder surgery he has to take place. I, I, I'd assume he just wanted to enjoy his life. They didn't know if he needed a surgery. I yeah, guess, why'd we wait till March? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did he, that's, that's, that happens. Maybe Bravo. they thought they didn't have to do surgery, and then they, they waited as long as they could, and now they're like, okay, we need to clean it up. So this is just like Michael Thomas with that ankle, right? Yeah. They didn't think that. Let's do some rehab and recovery that is not, um, oh, what's that called? In... Something when they cut you open in something. Incision. Incision. Whatever. There's some sort of way to talk about that. Uh, Let's do a rehab that doesn't have to have surgery. Let's see if we get it. And then they powered through the time that they probably should have put in there for when we need to do surgery regardless if this isn't catching, if the rehab isn't working. That is probably what happened. Maybe. Maybe that is what happened. Maybe they were just trying to figure out if they could rehab it, it would grow back. Now as they can find out they didn't get the surgery, let's get this thing fixed, even though surgery sucks, and rehab from surgery sucks as well. Yeah, I mean, that's for him, thumb of your throwing arm and your shoulder of your throwing arm both hurt. I know this happened. the shoulder happened late in the wild card game, but still, if you're a quarterback in the NFL, it's not, not – if I want to have anything that's injured, it's probably not my throwing hand or my throwing shoulder. Yeah, a lot of punters say they would like to have a hurt big toe – and uh, hurt hip in their kicking legs all season. Oh. Yeah, that was Vinny's go-to. Right? What a nightmare. What a fucking nightmare that would be as a quarterback. The thumb is just such a little pain in the ass mm-hmm. for the quarterbacks, I bet. Because we've experienced, like, you know, bruised fingers or stove toes mm-hmm. or anything. Like, you've experienced how, like, annoyingly painful that is. Now imagine, like, just trying to – they have to get through it. I guess they get paid a lot of money to do so, like, fucking throw the ball. But also, it's, going to, it's going to affect multiple throws during each game. Yeah, you would assume, unless they're the mentally toughest people of all time. Yeah, Jared Goff in the playoffs against Seattle. They wear a glove, man. Yeah, well, hey, Kenny Pickett wears two gloves. Kurt Warner did as well. Peyton sure, Manning started right. too as sure. well. That's mm-hmm. right. Who cares? He ain't played in Pittsburgh. It's cold. It's sure. cold. Yeah, come Shit. on. Shit. <laughs> hey, they got a long road. Yeah. Tampa. Do you think B.A. really does like building a team, like he said? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe. Like, that probably is a cool part It'd of coaching. It would be cool to see if it works out, if you – end up you see like okay and then eventually maybe during the season okay here's all the work we put in all the moves we made now it's starting to come true that i'm seeing it happen in real time here's what i heard from bruce arians he's building a team of vets again he's looking for partners out here at the indianapolis combine hey because he said you can't just say hey i want your guy you gotta like make a deal hey hey we want we kind of want your well, guy take care you'll get to the game on sunday is what he said so any 
any good uh, vets out there, come on down. I'm not going to beat you up during the week. Pretty much. He said that. He said, I got to get a trading partner. You know, Shanahan was that way. You know that uh, Shanahan's dad was big in Denver, I know. Guys mm-hmm. like John Lynch went out to Denver. Like He would extend dudes' careers, I know. Yeah, well, that's like – I think that's what B.A. is potentially here for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. although we see a lot of open spots right now, he said our pillar guy is going to be there. That's Evans, right? Yeah, I assume it might be Godwin as Man. well. Mm-hmm. And then the three backers. They got three yeah. linebackers mm-hmm. that are kind of their pillar that have been around a long time. And then everybody else, they're going to be – what if they are trying to – all right, hey, you don't like – I got sunshine. I got no taxes. <laughs> yeah, money. We got a good setup. We got this whole thing. Come on down. What if that's what he's doing right now, like just kind of looking around for trade partners? That's crazy. That's what Indianapolis – that's what the combine is. He's by talking the way. to agents. That's the thing. Agents do all their work – a ton of work at the combine. That's when they can talk to everybody in one place. And you got to – like Shanahan's not coming to the combine. Sean McVay's not coming to the combine. And Bob Sala, mm-hmm. yeah. yep. Robert Sala, not coming to the combine. So when you hear that, you think, oh, the Rams head coach isn't coming because they got no picks. Niners head coach isn't coming because they got no first-round picks. They traded those things away uh, for Trey Lance last year. And Robert Sala's not coming because he's uh, he's on Jets. So they got how many <laughs> picks do they have? Four. Four picks in the first 38 picks or something like that they have. Now, I believe what this is, they're all very friendly, these three, right? Yes. I think yes. they're all friends with yes. each other. Mm-hmm. And I think they're trying to set a precedent for other coaches to be like, hey, we don't have to waste our time at the combine anymore. Unless you want to like do business and everything like that, this is for the scouting department. This is for general managers. This is, this is not for – I wonder if that's what they're trying to do because the immediate burial is, oh, Robert Sala thinks he's Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay. But also it might be them being friends and being like, are we sick of doing all the bullshit with the combine thing where we just go and get hammered in Indianapolis for five straight days and no, yeah, I think we are. But we will go next year maybe if it's in a, you know, because it's like a spring break. Yeah. Maybe that's what they're doing. I believe Bob Sala and his coaching staff also coach the Senior Bowl. So they've gotten some eyes mm-hmm. on some of the players already. And I like that they're doing this, by the way. Not that because the combine isn't amazing here. It is. And the NFL is always going to be here because owners are here. There's competition committee meetings here. Every GM is here. Every scouting department is here. The coaches, the only thing you hear about them doing is, uh, we have like a tight end coach's dinner on like Thursday or so. <laughs> it's like, would you get to ask any questions? Uh, yeah, like one question, but... Does it matter? Yeah. Everything's filmed for them, too. They can watch every interview that they have. They probably even live stream them to the coaches if they want when they're interviewing all these prospects. Combine will always be important. Combine will always be important. Not saying it's not. Indianapolis is the best place for it because everything's connected and it's uh-huh. been there for a long time. But I can see how some of the football coaches, after talking with some of the coaches and getting a chance to experience it, not as a player, I, I didn't get invited, but as somebody that's covered it media-wise because the NFL Network used to call me to go down there and I would just look around at what it was. And then I'll go talk to like some of the coaches before I went on air because they're all in their suites or whatever or the stadium. And I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> Linebackers are running, I guess. So we'll look at these guys, but we're not going to draft a linebacker. We got no chance to draft yeah. a linebacker. Uh, we already got, I don't know, man. We're just kind of waiting. And then you see the, the gifts of then they get gift when they're not paying attention. It's like everything is a potential setup for the coaches. Yeah. It's, uh, I, that would be interesting if the coaches start like not showing up unless they have to do business with people, which. I think this is also mm-hmm. a great place to do that. Because workouts don't start till Thursday night because they're prime time now, too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's oh, electric. Really? Bob Sala's like, hey, Joe Douglas, go do your fucking job in Indy and Scott's and no. Pipes, all right? I'm not doing this shit. No. <laughs> Shanahan, you think Shanahan said that to Lynch or no? Well, no, I think they both were just like, fuck it, we already put all our eggs in the Trey Lance basket, so it doesn't really matter what we do at this year's combine. And John Lynch was telling Shanahan, I'll go to the combine, but you, Amazon's going to pay me like $20 million. <laughs> yeah. All right, I won't let you know. Let's do it. Yeah, let's run it back. Let's go. Mm-hmm. But also, I'll go to Combine, but Kyle, could you imagine what they give Kyle Shanahan with how cool he is? Oh, man? shit. Imagine him with one of those flat bills in the booth. Oh, oh man. Oh. Suit, suit on flat bill. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. <laughs> it'd be awesome. His uh, play-by-play guy's wearing a, a matching flat bill, too. Yeah, it would be amazing. No, they could wear that like, when Troy and Joe get comfortable at one yeah, game, yeah. two games. They Bill have a dress-down casual game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'll be just Shanahan every time with the flat bill in there. That'd be sweet. Just like a CBS flat bill with a huge logo on there would be pretty sweet. <laughs> then he say something cool, and they say, no, you can't say that. Like they did to Bruce Arians. That's Bullshit. right. Bruce Arians said, wide ass open. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm done. All right, you see, draw here, draw here. <laughs> <laughs> this is just wide ass open. It's basic football, pretty much. Just pitch and catch here.
But you mentioned the booth too. Like they made, I think they made him button both his buttons on his sport coat. Like he just looks so uncomfortable in between those two. He, he was literally, <laughs> yeah, you know, and he had the Kangol hat on because I've never seen him not with it on. Yeah, I was interested to see how that goes with the headset. <laughs> Put him in a three-man booth with uh, Akib Talib. That would be awesome. I 1,000% agree, actually. I think, who was he and, with? And then Gus. Gus, Gus is the play-by-play. No, not Akib. Akib and Gus. Let's mm-hmm. go. But uh, Bruce was with Trent. Yeah, Trent Green. And I don't know. Was it the... Gumble? Might have been. Yeah, Might have been Gumble. The Gumbles, by the way. Yeah. Pretty powerful. Are they brothers? Mm-hmm. Very no. I don't know, dude. Get off my back. Come on. The only the one that uh the the <sighs> Greg, he calls games. Yeah, very talented. Both of them, by the way, very very talented. They hosted uh, Greg hosted the um, the like sponsorship lunch after training camp before the season. You know what I'm talking about? In Indy, he did. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like normally the day after the final game or the day of like before you travel to the final game. So there's still 90 people on the team so that all sponsors can get a player at their table, but also like very inconvenient and everybody hates it, but it's business. Yes. Okay. Everybody understands that you got these sponsorship luncheons almost. That's that, hey, that's that meeting where Aaron always dresses up. Like when he's wearing all denim or whatever, he would, he and the quarterbacks would always wear something stupid. Everybody's trying to make that a lot more entertaining than it is. Like a lot of players think they're getting cut. It depends on the day. They might've had a terrible game the night before, but they, it's a very interesting thing. The players and the coaches try to make it interesting, you know, and they have speakers and it's normally pretty like, actually the show isn't bad. It, it, like it's, it's made out to be much worse than this because everybody's tired. It's the end of training camp. Everybody's miserable. The team's about to get made. And there's, you know, now we have to go glad hand with all these people. But the show isn't that bad. G- Greg Gumble hosted it my second year. Or my first, I think it was my second year. Second year, this is just weeks before I get arrested, I guess. I went up there to speak. And, man, he made fun of athletes early in the thing. He said that he was talking to some NFL guy because he, he did like a set, you know. Pretty good. Pretty really? good set. Pretty good set. Had note cards. So, uh, so not uh, really. I mean, that's, by the way, uh, I assume this is what you do as well. Anytime somebody speaks, I am all in listening, seeing how they're doing. I enjoy, you know, like how people speak. I enjoy orators. Absolutely. So he had a great couple. I mean, he was killing. He was doing it. And he made this joke about how he interviewed a player and a player made some word up. And he just said, that's what you got to do with athletes, though. You just got to kind of, you know, let them live in their own world. And everybody got a good pop out of that. I forget what the word was, though, but I got a chance to go up there. You know what I mean? First question. That word was coming out in my answer and made it sound good, like made it actually made sense in that thing. And I believe Bill Polian at that moment, I uh, said, never fucking let this guy on a stage. <laughs> yeah. but I, like I was, I was, like, I was like, oh, here we go. I got a, I got a room full of humans. My teammates are all miserable out there. I'm getting a chance to speak. I have no idea why. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to go a little bit. And I was never invited back on a stage until like, I don't know, five years later or something like that. And. It was at that moment I told the Chuck Pagano making me a quarterback on a Tuesday uh, in a press conference story. Got a big hit. Ursay, oh, laughing, <laughs> Chuck laughing. I don't know if Grigson was. I don't think he was laughing. <laughs> never got invited back. But those are all, hey, I'm happy we don't have to do those anymore, man. Retire, you never talk about that. People say, you know, they don't want to do training camp anymore. They don't want to do all the other shit. They miss the games. They miss the camaraderie. All the, I forgot completely about those sponsorship luncheons. Yeah, those can be tough at times. It was always – we never had, like, someone from the outside come in and host. It was always the local Green Bay people that – whether the guys that do it on radio or whoever, they were always good. They'd have a couple players come up. They would talk a little bit. It was always pretty awful. Uh, luckily, <laughs> in Green Bay, people are super nice, so the table you get is a big part of that. They're going to be sitting with for an hour, and Green Bay people are super nice, so you didn't have any douches usually, so it was always fun. Yeah, the sponsors are the, – the people are always nice. It's, I think for me it was always just the anxiety of, okay, who am I sitting with? This and then we were always shuffling. We were, it would always be the day before our last preseason game, so we would usually be on the road for the last one. So straight from that meeting, we'd go straight to the team plane, so everyone's scrambling out trying to leave early. Like it's just – the. It's just a weird time. Yeah, it is not a it is not a desirable thing. I'm happy we don't have to do those anymore. We should do those for this place. I was gonna say, what we are we should. doing? We should do one tomorrow. We we should we you should get lunch with it. Uh, yeah, pretty good meal. Sure, I'm in. We had a guy drop a great joke one time. 
I forget which host it was. He said, hey, hey Jim, we saw the <laughs> we saw the menu for tonight. Uh, what is it, chicken or chicken again? <laughs> <laughs> because I guess the same meal every single year. So those like, of us oh, that banquet food, yeah, it's same like chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans, usually Ooh, something like that. Potatoes. So somebody made a pretty good pop. Got a couple of the people who've been around for a long time. A lot of the old boosters are our sponsors. <laughs> same thing every year, Jim. <laughs> but it's good food every time. Was that Romo? No, so it yeah, maybe. I, mean, I don't know. If, <laughs> he might have been there. If I got to be a random sponsor in crowd to get my Tony Romo impression, I'm pretty pumped up about that. I don't know if I can hit it again, though. I was pretty deep in there. Yeah, plus, if you're Tony Romo at a like, charity event, you're making fun of poor people. There's a much different story between you know, him it's and gotta watch. I got to watch fair. the clips of this. It's despicable. You really don't. You shouldn't. But he was trying to be funny, though, right? He was making Whoa. jokes? Yeah, I, maybe. I mean, Connor. Yes. He was obviously trying to. Live in the event, but boy, I don't know if it was the time nor the place for uh, whatever joke. No. Hey, when you're on mic, you know. what are you gonna do? Hey, shoot or shoot. Corona too. I mean, Corona in my. I mean, you know? yeah, yeah. The hotline. Tony, Tony has been judged differently by this office since said event. Oh yeah. I mean, that has been a. Well, I think we were on the downside before the event, and then the event didn't. Not happen. me, not me. I, I'm still a. Hey, when Tony's on a game, I, I look forward to learning. I met the scumbag we. Like the English week. Oh, uh, okay. You're talking about crew here, mm -hmm. partially back there, and definitely here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I am on, I am on Tony's side. You know that. It's not easy to call games. You know, it's not easy to call games. He is different, but... Especially when you're fucking blacked out. All right. Well, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> he was so... Like, when he called the Patriots Chiefs AFC Championship in 2018, he was unbelievable. Like, the slow, steady decline into where we are now Whoa. is the real problem. No, do you think maybe he's still still great? You've just gotten, like, uh, numb to Jaded? it? No, I think maybe he's still great, but he can't be drinking 15 Coronas before yeah. he gets oh, on Him showing up with, right. like, half his face shaved and stuff. Right. Just, we don't know. Wait, are you serious? Like, we don't oh, know. Yeah. Is that real? Oh, yeah. Oh, half, his that what, half his face? What do you mean? You go and look at him walking into the stadium. Dude. Easy, bro. Okay, Romo's just trying to live his life, be a professional golfer, and make 17 M's calling games. Right. Yeah. Well, he was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed when he first started yeah. doing it, and then, you know, you start hearing him on air saying, like, hey, Jim, you know, we can fucking drink during these games. <laughs> Jim, give me a fucking beer. Sorry. Oh, I didn't hear that. That is misinformation on this program, and I'm sorry for that. But it has been interesting to watch the Tony Romo thing. Set the bar for Troy. Yeah. 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 Business-wise, set the bar, change the He's game. He's on a 10-year deal. I think so. Troy? No, uh, Tony. Tony. Well, I don't know. I think it was. I don't know either. I think it was something know, like that Jim. long. I don't know, Jim. Need a couple more M's, though. 17 of them. Good for him, These dude. limes aren't cheap. <laughs> hey, what's... All right. True. What's that other thing I told you guys you put in that Corona tastes like Fruity Pebbles? Uh, uh, Bacardi Limon. Yeah. That's great. Mm. That is unbelievable. That's oh, really? My sources are confirming <laughs> in my right ear that is a 10-year... 17M per year Jesus deal Christ. that Tony Roma had signed with CBS. You do some quick math. That's $170 million over the next 10 years for Tony Roma to call games at 4 o'clock for CBS. Do some quick math. That's $85 million going to Uncle Sam. $85 million going to Tony Romo. He's, he lives in Texas, though, right? Oh, no state income, you're saying. Yeah, so at least he catches a break there. Yeah, but he's yeah. sponsored by Corona, so what's he spending money on? Well, you're right. And Skechers, too. He goes through the TSA and Skechers commercials. Hey, he's on those big boys, too. Oh, yeah. He was on those high rides. Remember, oh, he was in a monster dude. truck. Mm -hmm. Speaking of. I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I he's was, sitting in a monster truck right on those phones. Oh, yeah, yeah. To get that. that. But I, I was walking uh, during vacation in the airport. I saw uh, a pair of Hoka Mountain like hiking boots. I mean, this person was seven to eight inches off the fucking ground, dude. It was, they looked like the moon shoes that used to walk through, like yeah. Nickelodeon was selling. I'm getting them tonight. Dude, they were awesome. Robert I need them. I'm getting them tonight. You need them. Stink. Hey, AJ, wait until I'm like this to you, dude. What's up? Wait until I mean, with your, with your Seacrest Hoka's on? Like, why? Like, why? Because, what's why up? Why are you doing, are, we know. Are, you're, we're pretty much the same height, aren't we? I think I'm a little taller than you, I think. Are you really? How tall are you? I don't know, like 6'1". Yeah, I mean, I was 6'1". Exactly at the combine. I, I'm I'm not like uh, it's not something I fight with people about. But yeah. Well, hey, by the way, the combine is when you're at your absolute shortest, because yeah. they make. I did it at the Senior Bowl, and I assume the combine's the exact same. You have to stand with your heels together, 
Toes out, shoulders down. Enough with the games. You're stretching the neck. Put that thing down, and everybody is going to be judged at your absolute smallest. Where other leagues, they're like, hey, put your shoes yeah. on. Uh, we're going to have you stand in here. Go ahead, go ahead and get it. Straighten that back mm -hmm. up a little bit here. Oh, yeah, we got a guy who's seven foot 14. <laughs> Whoa. It's like, oh, shit. Okay. The NFL is the complete opposite. They're like, we want to know what you are at your absolute shortest. I think that is my experience through that entire thing. I was fascinated. I'm like, why are they drumming on my head? Like, why are you trying to make me, why are you trying to make me smaller? I've never, I've never done that before. And then they announced it to the entire room. And I was not prepared for that. I was not prepared for that whole moment. Nobody gave me a heads up that that was taking place at the senior bowl. I blame myself, I guess. I did zero research, but they told me what was happening. I was like, oh shit, what am I doing? I'm taking off all my clothes? Yeah, then you're gonna walk on that stage right there. And then they're gonna have a little thing for how tall you are, they're gonna announce it. I look like behind the curtain. I'm like, oh fuck, there's a lot of people back there. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Big and, meat market out there, huh? Yeah, it was wild. And they wanna make me my smallest. And I'm built like a spark plug. So I assume my butt, my belly just. Hung out right there while I was standing. Really. Get that fucking guy off. <laughs> oh, we heard, we've heard he's got a potential, you know, alcohol under age of 21 around Morgantown one or twice, once or twice. Oh, yeah. And he's got that little pop belly up on that stage. Kids will be kids. Bill Pullian took quite a shot on me. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> punter, like, does it really matter, though, when, if you're a punter kicker? Does what shape you look like, does that matter? I don't know. I think I was shorter than most people. Punters really? are normally really tall. Punters are normally tall. That's normally something that is normally pretty strong because you got to move the ball, you know. So the taller you are, the longer your legs are. Like Thomas Morstead's legs come up to here on me when I, <laughs> oh, when I go okay. talk to him. And it's like, oh, this guy can, you know what I mean? Like he can, it's like Bubba Watson, although he's skinny, like he creates a lot of power because he is so lanky. Yeah, I would assume golf, it's good to have long arms. Mm -hmm. you, can get, you can build up some torque, maybe. Pitching, it's probably good to have really long arms and be big, right? Yeah. That's cool. home, yeah, home run derby, you don't really see a lot of small guys, no. right? Lower bodies, huge in yeah. baseball. Yeah, normally guys are real tall, so I think whenever they announce that I'm short and pudgy. Uh, all right. Guy went to West Virginia too, Morgantown. He's fucking his liver's shot. <laughs> well, and kickers like Tucker, he's pretty lanky. No, yeah. so kickers are normally a little bit shorter. Jake, uh, kickers are normally shorter. Punters are normally taller. Who's Tennessee's kicker? Uh, Bullock. But there's been a few of them. Yeah, but yeah, Randy was, Bullock. was. Randy Bullock's awesome. Yeah, he was at Houston too. Mm -hmm. He was at Houston. And he was at Cleveland. Then he was at. Cincy, I think. Yeah, Cincy. Cincy, Cincy, Cincy for a bit, Cincy. two years. I think he was there like two years. Still going, makes your kicks. Yeah. yeah. I think he's still at Cincy right now, isn't he? No, like, no. no. Money no, Mac. No, okay, got Money Mac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, last year he was with the Titans. Evan McPherson, he's a game changer. Yeah. I would assume he's not that tall, but I don't know how he generates. So He bombs the ball, dude. He's so did good. he make everything in college, too? I'd assume. I think he got drafted. Didn't he? Yeah, when did he get drafted? Who? Was it like the fifth round? Fifth round for McPherson. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, he was great in club. Because the whole run uh, through the playoffs was this is why you draft a kicker. This is why mm -hmm. you draft a kicker because the narrative has always been why are you drafting a kicker? Because there's a chance he's going to make it. There's a chance he's not. Nobody has a clue why or how. It's just going to be, you know, individual to who it is. But I, I would assume when they interviewed him and watched his shit, he, he took that cap off the bottle. Yeah, trick yeah. shot. Trick shot as well. I mean, he sniped that thing. Yeah. So I assume, you know, Cincinnati. We should bring that back. What's that? The bottle cap challenge. You should you should put a video out. And I think I did one, didn't I? One you did, time. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I forget. I did one. It was pretty good. I think. Ah, no, it wasn't. It fucking broke the bottle. I think. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that much touch. Not a lot of delicacy to it. That was pretty impressive. Who was doing it? Jean Claude. Von Dom. Yeah. Von Dom. Mm -hmm. Then he do something where he did like a full. He did. A... He he did the uh, the semis were going. Oh, remember, yeah. and he did the splits like on top of the semis as they started like drifting apart. It was Jeez, a weapon. Weapon. Steve Weatherford did that as well. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah, on two benches, I think. For his, uh, he was in the NFL and he had a men's health um, cover, cover and spread while he was still in the NFL punting balls. And one of the photos, he had his right foot on a bench over here, and his, I think left foot on a bench over here, and he was just like sitting like this, and it was like, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't know how. How is he getting up from that? Like, is that a permanent position right there? <laughs> What's he up to these days? He's fucking. Yeah, yo, he's got a sweet a Barry Bonds boss. earring. Yes, he, he does. Does, does he? I yeah, think so, yeah. I've seen. I've seen. Uh, he's got new hair as well. I think he's, he's so big and so shredded, so strong, and works out so much. Yeah. I, I have no idea the energy of just. 
I don't know how people do it. You do it every morning for like an hour and a half, two hours. No, I'm not. I'm not like Steve. Steve is unbelievable. He's running these mi- like 10, 20 miles. This dude, while being this gigantic human. That's... Hey, good on you. Good luck out yeah. there. Good luck. Good luck, Steve. Good luck. Hey, that's the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Hammer Don starting at 4 p.m. Eastern at YouTube.com forward slash Hammer Don. Ah. Gonna have all the winners. I think we got a big show tomorrow too, don't we? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, huge. Like yeah. legit. Mm-hmm. And then Thursday, Vince fucking McMahon. Yeah, mm-hmm. hell yeah. Live and now we go. What if he just walks in and actually punches me in the face like the internet saying? Then I'm gonna have to drop his ass. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, he could do that. He ain't getting out. Yeah. Whoa. Bingo. Oh, because you hey, guys. Hey Pat, why don't? Hey, how about Thursday? Why don't I come on twelve to two and then I'll watch you and Vince? Are you I'll able to do that? Are you able to do that or no? What do you, uh, yeah, I think I can. Or I just, but either way, I'm not going to be on with Vince, and I don't want to do that to him while he's in studio looking at four different monitors. Okay, so I was trying to figure this out. You hate it, huh, when we have people in here and you're over there? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't hate it at all. I think it, it's hard sometimes for pe- there's certain people, like not certain people, but it's got to be hard to try to balance who's asking them questions. I don't want to make it weird. I agree. And whenever people are trying to get caught, we got to figure that out somehow, though, because I'm hoping that a lot more people will be in stew Yeah. whenever we do that. Oh, we're getting oh, it's good. good. Little plane. We're getting you a plane. That's what I forgot. You're oh, gonna be go. actually. You're oh, gonna be, he's gonna be. He's gonna be in stew. Little plane. You're hey, when we were in Indy, walking out to oh, the yeah, thing that, that we sweet. took went to LA, you were you pointed at like made a joke about some plane. I, what I tell you, I said, as Chopper says that that plane's the tits, Chop. Like that's the for a single engine <laughs> private pilot. That's what you want. Hell yeah, true. So you'd be the only one in there though. No, I mean I'd have to have somebody else in there early on, Imagine. especially. Man, that's so for me. Man, that just sounds, oh, I can't even imagine. Can't do it. It'd be awesome. It'd be such a yeah, every day I'd have to think about you up in the bird that I gave you. Yeah, a lot safer than driving. I guess for you. the way hey, you drive, yeah. yeah. For everybody, the way you drive. What a lot less you... traffic up there. Hold on, you're flying back after the show. What time's that? Oh, oh, right into the oh, sun. No. Oh, no. oh no, 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 no! Oh, you're flying the opposite auto... direction, which is good, I guess. But that golden hour up there in the clouds. You look in your rear view one time, you catch that sun. Damn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, I got to think about that every day. Huh? I'll wear my little ear buzzer. If my head drops, it'll wake me up. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Do you have one of those? Like one of those help buttons? I, t- I know. I've told you before. My wife, that's one of the first gifts she got me. <laughs> Shout out. I don't have it anymore, but yeah. She loved oh, you, man. She, yeah. Yeah, you're going to fucking die. <laughs> no, she was trying to save herself because we'd be driving and she'd look over and I would doze off. <laughs> so she's like, all right, I'll drive. I'm getting you one of those. I'm getting you one of those things that buzz whenever your head touch. That's awesome. <laughs> this is a gift for both of us. That's awesome. All right. I'm out of here. See you tomorrow, dude. Hey, Vince McMahon in studio. You're not going to be on. You're going to be on noon to two. Thursday he'll be on, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go I'll go noon to two, and then I want to watch. Tomorrow. Okay, well, that's awesome of you. I'm excited to see what happens as well. The um, Who we got tomorrow? Don't we have somebody in the studio tomorrow? I think we have somebody it's in. Gary V? Lovey? No. Uh, I don't think Gary V's on. Shregs? Lovey Smith, I think, is in here. I believe he is. In studio. That's what I thought. Yeah. In studio right there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think so, too. Really cool. I'm excited to talk to him about a lot. everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's been around, dude. Mm-hmm. He was head coaching. He was head coach Illinois. Illinois at one point. Yeah, I called one of the games there. His first year, I believe, I called one of his games. You think him and Paul will touch beards? Daniel Jeremiah tomorrow, also I believe. He's nice. Nice. He Max too? Crosby and Jorge Masvidal. Oh, oh all in studio. Well, is DJ in studio too? I have no idea. A lot of questions he's coming. He's here. He is. He's in town. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is BA. I don't think Jorge's here. No. Jorge's he's got, in Vegas. He's got a big time fight this week. He's I watched him riding a one wheel out in Vegas when he landed out there for the fights on uh, the embedded they put on YouTube, on YouTube for him. On a on, on a one wheel like this, like a unicycle. No, the one wheel, like the little skateboard looking thing, where it's got one wheel in the middle. Uh, I've never uh, tried it. Is it hard? Me neither. I I've seen it. it looks sweet. I've but, seen it. Hold on, it looks where, awesome. My wife and I were somewhere, and there was one for sale or something. I forget where You're it driving was. Driving down, down Pendleton and that like, sweet pawn shop. No, no. I, I haven't had that place up in a while. We walked we were at somewhere and there was a one wheel like entire set. Oh, it was at the uh it was at the boat and R V expo. Oh right? really? Nice. I think nice. so. Or not expo, the wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Show. show. Super show. Show. All the same. R V and boat super show. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. I think we saw one in there. They look very cool. I think they've um they've reached out to us. Has anybody rode one? No. 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 Do you have to have a background in skateboarding to be able to do it? That's what I'm wondering. It kind of I don't like think so. It's motorized, bit. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's like a, I think it's like a, uh, you know, the um, little, whatever you call it, the little scooters that you use your, you like lean into it. 
So that's a segue. segue. Or, like a segue type technology, isn't it? Oh, you're talking about the, um, the uh, what are those called? Where we all were on them in the NFL and then Tyson busted his hoverboard. head. Hoverboard. Oh, yeah. Hoverboard. Yeah. I still love those hoverboards, by the way. I, I enjoyed awesome. the hell out of the hoverboard. It was a shame they could never figure out how to charge those fucking things because those things are amazing. There it's, you go. It's a different stance, though. It's sideways, you know, because I got one of those power uh, skateboards. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, that looks tough. I, well, I could ride it, but I wasn't as good as I am on the hover. Confident. Yeah. Confident. Well, you're controlling that with your hand, right? Yeah, with the power. Yeah. So what's the one wheel? Like the Segway technology. I'm going to get one, man. So he, it looks like he's leaning forward. Yeah, he's he didn't have anything I would kill hands. myself on that. I think I'm going to order one. If, it, if you're not a sideways person, I'm, I, I've never, I've, growing up, I could never do the sideways. It's yeah, like, I, I haven't like either, but I, I, could, I taught myself how to wakeboard years ago, and that was weird being sideways. But once you're there, it's okay. You figure it out. How long did it take for you to learn how to wake? Did you get your ass kicked a lot or no? Not a lot. I mean, I just sat there, and my brother drove the boat, and I barreled myself into the water for about five straight hours, and I finally popped up, and I'm like, okay, here we go. I got it. I know how to get up. Okay, so once you get it, you got it. You hardest see. part is getting up. Yeah. Once you're up. You got to not fight it. That's why if you're light. Yeah, you got to be light. And then once you get up, being sideways for me was different. I've never, you know, I, I never skateboarded anything. Me neither. I was so terrible at skateboarding. There was a phase there where everybody was trying to skate too, and I just was so bad. It stuck. Those were, those were a rough couple of years there. Now, there was one summer everybody was skateboarding, and I just couldn't even fucking get on the thing. I mean, that was such a shame. Be an athlete, dude. Stand on the fucking board. Just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I'd do a lot of this. That yeah, looks awesome. Good trip. Okay, flip. You guys are killing. I was watching the X Games long before that thing came around. Throw me, mm -hmm. the, throw me the fucking sack instead, okay? What, the hack sack? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could do a little bit That's of that. Give me that. Give me that thing. I, I, Elementary school recess. We used to hacky sack all the time. Were you like this or were you inside a foot? Everywhere. Top. What do you mean? Okay, so you did top of foot as well? I doubt it. Oh, yeah, top of foot, back, heel, whatever it took to, to keep it alive. Well, what a hero, man. My God. God. Absolutely. We should get back into that, too. I think we should bring that back. I'll bring one next time I come to town. Maybe we should make hacky sacks. That should be our yeah, thing. Take some of the beads out. Feels like yeah. yeah, you got to take the beads out, mm -hmm. then sew it back up. Yeah, you got to make it soft. You mm -hmm. got to make it. Maybe we just make good hacky sack. Yeah. Why oh. wouldn't we? <laughs> Why wouldn't we just make a good hacky sack that people don't have to take apart and then sew That's back good together? Point. Do that That's a good easily. idea. Probably expensive. Probably Call open. Bezos. He's in space. Yeah. All right. Is he right now? So am I. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Same exact place. Big show tomorrow. Vince McMahon, 205 Thursday. The internet's saying he's coming in and punched me in the face. Look out. Hey, be on your guard. What Maybe if he home. does? What if, I hope he does. Man. What if he does? Like everybody says in the wrestling business, you know, there's some times in history of wrestling where things just, you know, some people just decide, what, hey, this is what's going to happen. What if he comes in here and crow hops and everybody on the internet is like, we tried to tell you, dude. Like, <laughs> we tried to tell you. He was gonna, that would be wild. It'd be fucking wild. I'm excited to talk to him. I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions for Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah. I think he's going to very much enjoy it. He never does interviews, ever. I know. Outside the network, it hasn't. In 2014, he did Stone Cold's podcast, but I think that was on WWE's network. Yep. He hasn't done anything out of the WWE universe in a long time. And there is some, if you look up Vince McMahon in interviews, there has been some interesting moments mm. with people where he is, you know, he's a self-made billionaire and a guy who has done a lot of business with a lot of places and he's an entertainment mogul. That motherfucker's been on the road for like three decades, four <laughs> decades. I mean, he is just, uh, I have a lot of questions for him. And now that I'm getting a chance to work within his universe, like I'm very excited for the chance to learn about Did it. Did Vince and Stone Cold fight? Because if they didn't fight, then there's no chance you guys are fighting. When he was on that podcast? Yeah. I think they got through the entire thing. Okay. Mm. And they had, you know, there his you go. Lot, lot. Oh. They also have a history of fighting, though, so. Yeah, He's going to take your it. desk. What if he makes you sit over in the chair? That'd be quite a move by Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope well, that's why now. I would let everybody know that from my research on Vince McMahon, which I've done for the last, I don't know, 24 years, probably, he goes to do that. You have to immediately tell him, no, nah, my desk. That's my spot. Yeah. yeah, this is my over desk. There. You're not the captain. Yeah, you have to. From what I've been told, because boy, if you do, if you do, you're dead. You, there's no relation. <laughs> there is, you know what I mean. There is that is a. That's just from my research. That might be wrong as well. True. I did do my research though that he is a. Uh, remember the handshake. The first handshake was a big thing, mm -hmm. because I had heard through the grapevine of like the dirt sheets and when people leave the WWE and they tell stories and stuff. I was always very incredibly interested in all that. Hey, when he comes in for the handshake, like hey, it's gonna be a. 
you give him a handshake now. Like this is uh like it's gonna be a handshake or whatever. So I prepared for that. The first time I met him, I Bang. I met him there, like full <laughs> thing in there. And Michael Cole told the story afterwards. He yeah. was like, exactly what you said was gonna happen. Have you one in there? <laughs> you he met you there right in there. It was like, yeah, it's good research. Like that's the type of thing that I think people should look into a little bit more whenever you're thinking about talking to somebody. It's like Hey, how do I get this human to not immediately write me out of his life? Yeah. <laughs> like that is, Good hint. That is something to think about. Well, you've practiced recently also with AP. So I mean. Yeah, bingo. He, he got, there's more research. Yeah. And I didn't know he was going to return that game against the Vikings. I had no idea. But whenever I see him across the field and we're going out for the captains, it's like, okay, I'm researched. I am prepared for this moment. Got to beat him in there. Mm -hmm. Got to beat him in there. Bang! He'll never forget it. I know it. Me neither. Because the next time he got me back, I almost couldn't drop the fucking ball on a punt. <laughs> almost took me out of the game. That guy's got good, good firm. He got in immediately after us talking to him, by the way. There was some crazy shit oh, on the yeah. plane. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's going on there. I think it all... Yeah. yeah. I think it all went away, but I... I believe. Yeah. Polar heads prevailed. I mean, it was so. a... Argument is what... We came, I don't know. No well, charges. He was, he was so fucking hot on the plane. He was because he had that jacket on. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's I saw a bunch of those tweets while we were on vacation, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, and then the story kind of unfolded. I have no idea what happened. If anybody was an asshole scumbag, I hope they are punished. Times a thousand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're back tomorrow. Hey, see you later, AJ. All right, we'll see you guys. All right, see you, AJ. See, so yeah, a hammer down's coming up at four, right? Yeah, probably four fifteen now. If I had to guess, four oh five. Yeah, somewhere. And I mean, you can only set it in fifteen minute increments, so we'll set it at four, and then we'll start four times whenever we're ready. Hey, big time, big time winners coming too. I big appreciate time. Huge. Oh, yeah. I've been rambling here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's get the hammer down. Cheers. See you tomorrow.